your mind, no maybes. Just yes, yo, release the stress. In the place to be, we rhyme. Getting down on the mic, no crime. Hip hop, everybody know it's time. Yeah, we're gonna rock like this.
they told me they wanna get down at the party, cause that's where I'll be.
Ain't nothing that can't be done. They told me I wouldn't be nothing. Came on now, I'm second and none. I need me a trophy, I need me a ring. I'm not with the bull, but keep it a beam. You know what it is, you know what I mean. Shit. All I do is win, 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 win. <laughs> Haters wanna hate, they ain't made top 10. <laughs> Double, triple team, what they need to defend. <laughs> I do left and I'm gone with the win. I'm gone with it. I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Feel like a champ, MVP status. Yeah, the win being guaranteed. Snow, let's see about it. You gon' speak about it, then be about it. If y'all don't bring that energy, no, I can't be around it. Nah, I'ma shoot my shot. I'ma stick it, watch. At the tippy top, I cannot take no loss. Two seconds on the clock, they gotta give me the rock. I got a game on what? Yeah, I got a game on lock. Yeah, I feel like a champion. Ch 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 a champion. There ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. Put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah, I feel like a champion. A champion. There ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah. I got big dreams, I'ma do big things Yeah, you see me on the big screen, looking so clean I don't move slow, I move fast right past Anybody taking life for granted, yeah, that's too bad I'd be grateful for everything that I have You only got this life, you don't get it back Make the most of it, become the best that I can Everybody look at me, I got a plan You gotta work hard, play hard, do it from the start Cause how you do anything is everything is hard Stay consistent and do it every day Don't let fatigue get in your way Cause 10% of something is better than nothing You better do something if you wanna be something I can feel my stomach rumbling, I'm hungry Big things coming, I ain't bluffing, yeah No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight every day and train, yeah It'll all be worth it One day it'll all be worth it So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah I've had enough I'm on the climb to the crown in my prime right now Hear me loud, I've been spitting for a while now I'll buy myself independent DIY now Don't need no help, I've been beating out labels and money and budgets It's funny, I do all the work, yeah, keep it 100 I fight for my dreams, I would die for these things I believe in myself, I refuse to be weak, I like to build things 
Empires out of buildings. I want to leave a legacy of helping others finally feel things. Of motivating and killing. Depression, exhaustion, we need some healing. I work through the pain. I like seeing gains. I keep my head down, buried, walk through the flames. Yeah, I do this every day, even when I feel drained. A true man pushes through. You don't hear complaints. No, I don't want to stay the same, yeah. So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah. That's the only way to make a change, yeah. So I fight every day and train, yeah. It'll all be worth it. One day it'll all be worth it. So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah. That's the only way to make a change, yeah. I've had enough. Feeling great now. A hater can't play with my day now. Get that negativity out of my face now. In my city, I'm the man of my state now. Yeah, I'm living life to the fullest. Baby girl, you're talking to the realest. Energy and joy, you can't steal it. Good vibes all around. Baby, tell me, can you feel it? I woke up, so I'm blessed. Just another chapter in the test. I know I'm doing better than the rest. Got a smile on my face, showing teeth for the crest. It's no sweat, I'm a vibe in my own right. Go time in the sun, yes, I'm gonna shine. So fine, got the Betty on my phone line. Feeling good, feeling great, chasing these good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. soul on that beat, I'm ready to feast, margaritas with some divas, I'm pouring the drinks, I'm living life to the fullest, the blessings in me, don't really care what you say, whatever you think, nah, unequivocal miracles with the lyrical, with the homies trying to pop like the cereal, lucky charms, got a model on my arm, go watch on my wrist, garlic parm, no alarm, fireworks, I can feel it in the sky, I got love in my eyes, with this money on my mind, I see passion and pride, I despise all the lies, I've been around the world, so I'm down for the ride, mm. good drinks, good people, and good times, fast cars, pretty women, on Facebook. Time, more money, more fun in my life. I'm just chasing my shots with good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Friday night putting them plays in, but it feel like a special occasion. So let's go out, go blazing, hit the dance flow, let go frustrations. I might have a hidden agenda, but my intention's pure. I'll give you all that I got, and I hope that you don't need more. 
It's okay, just take my hand now. Damn me and sweat in your hair out. You got me creasing my sneakers. That's usually something I care about. Couldn't see the path, but it's clear now. You was in my dreams, but you here now. And I just want a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me. With your hands in the air where I can see. Did you hear what? I called the ride cause I'm going up And there's something mixy going in my cup Don't say much cause they know what's up huh. You know it get cold on the late night We getting all close like it's day night You looking so fly, you can take flight Now I got this feeling that I can't fight Your courage got my urges flaring You got me by the collar and I'm not caring You see how the people can't stop staring I'm trying to make your mind and I'm not sharing Okay, let's bring it back a bit She said you can have whatever if you ask for it well, I just want to have a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me with your hands in the air where I can see. I don't know if we'll get another chance you'll see. So I hope that you'll just come dance with me. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Dolor de Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm going to walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're going to be able to fight this.
surrounded by predators. It's critical, they got me in my element. It's dirty, how you trying to keep it elegant? Keep my eyes open wide when everyone around me is an enemy. Playoffs of VCT EMEA kickoffs coming to you live from the Riot Games Arena here in Berlin, Germany. Today, we will find out which two teams will be representing EMEA at Masters Madrid. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I've got Kakuka and Lothar back here with me. There was no way we were going to do a Spanish team potentially qualifying uh, for Madrid without you. So That's welcome. That's the only reason that I'm actually here. But no, I'm very <laughs> excited, especially because of the stories that we have today. The two titans versus versus these new rookies that we have and anything can happen. I am incredibly excited for this day today because this is my favorite day. And the qualifi qualifiers for a big event are the most exciting, have the most pressure, even bigger, in my eyes, than the Grand Finals tomorrow. Yeah, it could also be the day we get the two biggest upsets too, uh, right? But uh, of course, the two teams that win Game 1 and Game 2 will be heading to Masters Madrid. But let's take a look at some of the other regions because uh, Gen G and Paper X Lothar have the luxury of starting to do the anti-strat already because they have already secured their spots. Well, th they do. Also, who will thought that Paper X is going to lose in the Finals 1-3, right? I mean, sure, the expectations were for Paper X to go forward. People were expecting some other teams also perform, but mm -hmm. Genji, I, mean, I feel like they're like the new guard of the mm. Pacific region. I'm very excited to see them perform. Yeah, exactly. What was the last time that we saw DRX missing on an international event? You know, with everything I that I can tell you that. Change it. I said, I said, <laughs> yeah. I said 2021. 2021. Yeah. It's not yeah. like 2022. Mm -hmm. So it's been a very, very long time. Really excited for all the stories that we're bringing into Masters. Yeah, it's the Alma party debuff. Like he <laughs> leaves Genji and then they win. But, <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but over at America's, uh, after our show today, of course, they're going to be having their uh, uh, qualifiers as well for Masters Madrid and. Kukuka, some yes. big, big names out here. Who are you backing? 
I mean, uh, it's complicated because uh, a loud fan for a very long time, but I'm a bigger Potter fan, I feel like. So Based. EG and Sentinels, I feel like they have to go back into the international stage. I think that everybody's, you know, back in them. But, you know, energy, the roster, everything's so strong. I don't know, anyone can make it. I, I, I'm thinking Evil Geniuses because I would really love to see the core of the identity of that team to perform well. You which want is the basically uh, that's also another thing. It, well, it has 100% win rate so far, right? So that's something. That's but I would lot. like to see uh, the coaching team of Evil Genius is actually just Porter just proving that she's incredibly good at building lineups, right? And then the second one, I would go with Energy because I just would like to see this roster of superstars perform. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for Potter. Uh, EG to Madrid. I, I'm sold. I'm sold. Uh, but today, obviously, going to be very, very serious. We have a lot of big games coming up. So let's play a big game of our own oh. here. Uh, just to set the tone of the day, I know this is your favorite thing. Yes, yes, I love preparing this because, of course, we can use it as a little bit of a recap. And, of course, you from home can be playing with us. Uh, take the D, fuse, or get the L. So um, it's very simple. We're going to be showing a clip. And you guys, and obviously you guys at home can play with us, are going to see, just because of the minimap after the spike has been planted, if the defending team is going to be getting the defuse or taking the L. Anything can happen. So please, can we get the first minimap? Okay. When you combine this, this is deadlock. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so this is the first one. This is Team Liquid versus Koi here on Icebox. Remember that Koi were uh, running the harbor, everything. Okay, where's your money? Do they get the diffuse? You see that, you know, Koi was actually struggling a lot getting the spike down, but this is one of the rounds where they actually managed to do it. Uh, on the other side. I, I think, wait, this is... I can't, re I actually cannot remember. This was a day where we were here for like 12 hours. Yep. Um, so I'm going to say they get the defuse. Okay. I'm going to say the same. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I think this was the defuse from behind the wall or the edge of the corner. Okay. I can't remember. Let's roll the clip. Yeah, are we right about this? what happens. Because oh, nope. you have to remember that um, this was a very intense match, as we say, it was mm. a very, very long day. And it's also the day that uh, we broke our first record here. Um, and even though the plant is very complicated and Koi start getting the first kills, uh. they forget about the final boss, and that is Kiko. One before, I think he managed to uh, go across. He gets the first one. Look, because Shadow Star. Oh, I remember oh, that's this. this. I remember this. One. I remember this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 This was really silly. Not even shaking. Yeah. This Not was a shaking. silly one. That. He tanks one. Yeah. He knows that Shadow has to run. But also, oh, that, why but did he get off? Where, where he did get off here, he I was like, back. he is gonna lose this because of it, you know. Hear but me then out. he wins. Hear me the out. Wall. Hear me out. Okay. Perfect Valorant is boring. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect Valorant is yeah. boring. I'm it so was sorry. onto something yep. on Icebox. So we're excited to get this one. Uh, I wonder, I, I know that Sleeky's um, uh, watch partying from here. So I hope that you're getting it right, Sleeky. Let's look at the second clip for now. I'm ready. 1-1. One, one. OK, so let's look at the minimap. This is BVL versus Navi. Did I rewatch every game to get this clip? Yes, I did. Um, Wait, this is Navi versus... This is Bind, as you can see, because of the TP. I think this is I remember Navi. this. You still remember as an I think they take the... I think this is where the util dump for like five days. Okay. Yes. Is this I already can see Brimstone in the post-plant position. Mm -hmm. So this is like when he Still misses the molly. Huh? Yeah, he misses the molly. There was, there was a bind uh, defuse where they just dumped like eight mollies mm -hmm. and they won. I think it's this one. I can't remember. I, I'm almost so certain that it's this one because the aftershock comes from lamps, I think. Well, let's, well, take, a let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay. Yeah. Who else? Okay. Let's roll the clip. And I am amazed that you guys have this big of memory. We were talking about Para maybe being a little bit too early on his ult, but everything falls into place as uh, the round uh, it keeps happening. He's going to be, as I said, the utility comes from the side of Navi. He ults very fast and as you say, utility dump time and time again. Yeah, that that's the one. Trying their best. <laughs> literally, I that's remember the aftershock I <laughs> remember from lamps. But then he misses the the molly that lands on top of the cactuses mm -hmm. on the map, from what I remember. Exactly. This takes me back. Little. I miss BBL. Oh, they will be I back. Miss they will be them. back. Third uh, of April, I think. That would, that's where we started the, the split. Oh yeah, so this is the thing exciting. where they just util yeah. dump like crazy, and then they all died Almost in a right. Almost literally. Yeah. Which yeah, is, yeah, yeah. This last kill. Yeah. All right, we are, we are pressed okay. for time, so okay. I think we just go straight. Intuition, next one. Let's take okay. mini-map. Intuition. Just All right. tell us the teams. Lotus, we love some Lotus. 5v5, okay. look at what the is going to be planted. I think they get the D. Okay. 
I'm they gonna, get the D. To just not they get the D. To have a chance of losing or winning between us. I'm okay, yeah. let's rest the clip. It. Are the defenders going to win or are they going to lose? This is Team Heretics versus Foot. A lot of games oh have been so, so long ago. <laughs> I feel like I, I don't it's even remember where I was. <laughs> it was it eight like days ago, no? Yeah, yeah, I think it's because we've had a lot of uh, three game days. I feel like I've aged. that we've been here forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kax is going to use his ultimate here. And we know how things work once you get that plant onto C. You can just go on to main and just spam for them and that's probably what we see everyone from Heretics playing there seen it with his Yoru and the decision that they're going to make here is start the fuse and then everybody is going to crossfire they're just going to keep pushing yes, yes. Going to keep get the D get the D actually Woo. get the D so congratulations I'm lucky. Sue. I literally got I the win L. today I win today I'll take it I'll take it uh, but speaking of winning and uh, losing we do have four teams fighting it out today for a spot at Madrid but also uh, to become the best team in EMEA as well let's not forget that but I wonder how they're gonna do on the new patch in case you guys haven't uh, been informed of this we have had a patch update recently and we are officially in the IGL fragging meta. Um, as you guys can see, there's been a massive buff to the IGLs in the league, up in ACS, up in ADR, and Kukuka up in KPR as well. We're living the dream. I think it's amazing what we're seeing. I think Boo from last year to this year, now that he also has the brother buff, it's been amazing. Angel alive at the, re at the uh, end of the round. It's something that we barely saw last year. And overall, I feel like, it, you know, we're, we're, we're I love it, this meta. I, I think Angel might be still loading to the client to update the patch because it still has <laughs> very similar performance <laughs> to the last year. No PC. Magnum had a, a little bit of a stumble with a 0 15 one game, but other than that, he's actually performing very well. I'm incredibly proud to see Bosa yep. put up numbers. Like, it was actually insane. We've only seen one Fnatic match, but he had so many multi-kills. He had clutches. It was some insane performances from Bosa here. Yeah, I mean, I, I always said that my favorite meta is the Astro meta, but this actually <laughs> might be my favorite meta. I love yeah. uh, the fragging IGL meta because we're seeing it everywhere else in the world. Is what everybody seems to be uh, on point, but for some of our teams, they need to be uh, more than just on point because we have two huge titans of international events going up against two teams that have only ever been to lock in. They were invited to go to that one. It Kukuka. should be zero. Yeah, they, they've <laughs> never they've never been to a Masters. Let's put it that we're way. We're talking about the experience, right? And they yeah. were there. I think that it's also not the experience that you gain within the tournament, but actually getting to brag all these teams, right? And of course. We know the Fnatic situation and them being literally everywhere. Uh, for Navi, I feel like even though they did make it to events last year, it was very, very quiet. But in teams, in, in terms of names, and especially just looking at what happened in 2023, for Casey and Heretics, it's huge. It was, it was, it's it, huge. Yeah, but I mean, it's like last year yeah. was worse than bad. It was like we were suffering from them because it really looked like it was not going to get better. And that's why we were all so excited for this year, but even more excited to see them in playoffs. But let's also remember that the experience that we're talking about here, like both Natic and, and uh, Navi have that experience because they have the same rosters. When it comes to Heretics and k -Cop, they do not have the same rosters. Yeah, uh, but let's talk about Heretics because coming into this tournament, it does really feel like everybody was sleeping on them. Nobody yeah. uh, had them making playoffs, they were making it all the way to Madrid. Yeah, and I think that people might have lost a little bit of the excitement of the new names and yada yada because we've talked so much about KC. They're the ones that have played by far the most in the tournament and that's the reason why they made it out of play-ins. But for Heretics, after they signed Wood, I think everybody was very excited, but he cannot play until a split one because he's not old enough. And also, you know, Patadek is seven in. Rians is playing from home. And uh, I think that we need to remind people, this is the team that made it flawlessly out of their group. This is the thing, people weren't so excited about this team coming in, but Lothal, they've given people a reason to be excited. In fact, I, I will be surprised if most people are not supporting uh, Heretics today. Look, the people might have already right. forgot about how they're playing because they played over 70 days, days ago, but the team was exciting to watch. They had been playing sub, so their expectations were low, but yet they delivered. We have seen the rise of Mini Boo and Boo together performing incredibly well. Uh, we have seen like an overall well planned out team that would love to talk about how they have their preferences when it comes to defensive setups. They have good protocols and there might be a 
problem with that because Navi might counter them, but it's an exciting team to watch in general. They don't have a big sample though, even if they want to counter that, as we're saying, it's pretty flawless. Only four maps to make it to this position, so anything can happen on the server today. Yeah, and on the other side, it almost feels like Navi may be the villains because uh, they're standing in the way from everybody getting their wish uh, of Miniboo and Heretics moving on to Madrid. But of course, Miniboo, the numbers are crazy in itself. But I do want to talk about uh, Navi. Do you guys see them as the villains coming into this? Because they are expected to go. I mean, if they have to be on one of the sides, just because of how wholesome the story for Team Heretics and especially like Miniboo and how he's um, uh, developing here, I think that they should be the villains. And, and not only that, Navi was a team that made us, uh, you know, be really expectant of what they could do. Are they going to be able to be that FPX that won Copenhagen back in the day? Are they going to have all of us cheering for them again? Yeah, and on the other side, of course, and Artis is back now, uh, Lothar. We are having that uh, rerun of FPX once again. So how much of his value are you seeing right now? Can he stop Miniboo today? Well, first of all, <laughs> foremost, I think single-handedly Artis makes them the villains, you know, now because mm. of his character and, and nice. the charisma that he delivers here. Uh, but Artis is, uh, I would say, incredibly performing well, something that were, was a big question mark. And I feel like even though most of the teams are going forward with changes, with evolutions of the of the rosters, and Navi is going back, they're circling back to their old option, they're getting their old teammate back into the team. We were not expecting them to perform that well, and yet it's just completely rejuvenated Navi, I think. Yeah, exactly. So today the task, of course, is very important for both of the teams. But I feel like the pressure is a bit more on, on the side of Navi, because again, they are the ones that have to perform they have to be the Navi that we met. Heretics, everything would be a surprise. And of course, I think that, you know, they would be super happy to go to Madrid with all the support and the home crowd buff that they would get there. But still, it will be a surprise. It will be, as you said, an upset. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I do have though, some expectations that I feel like Team Heretics can do this upset. Like, they deliver incredible numbers. And I think when your team has nothing to lose, and that's Team Heretics right now, they are very dangerous. They're like this, not really coordinate animal, but they, they are like this ferocious animal that cannot be tamed, you know? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's going to be a lot of nerves. I want to see the mini boot that we've been seeing for uh, that we saw a week ago. Uh, just driving and, and, and taking in every single part of the competition, living round by round and actually achieving their dream. Oh, I can't wait to see this because it is one of EMEA's titans taking on the new kids on the block. This is for a spot for Masters Madrid. Give a warm welcome to Team Heretics and Navi. Welcome to VCT EMEA. Bienvenidos a la VCT EMEA. Bienvenue au VCT EMEA. VCT EMEA, hoş geldiniz. It's time to bring the teams out onto the EMEA stage. A place in the finals up for grabs. Welcome to the stage, Team Heretics. Leading the charge, it's Mini Boo. Reigns may not have made it, but he's still gonna make his mark. Boo leading the charge on the server and leading the team as well. Benji, Fishy, and Patatek rounding out the roster. And their opponents will be Navi. This squad is looking to book their sixth consecutive international event with Sagetsu, Artis, Angel, Xiao, and Zipan. A battle for the EMEA title just around the corner. For now, they gotta book their spot in Madrid. Of course, you can't complete the rosters without the coaching staff. Eric Dumbros and Neil Zinho rounding it out. That'll give us a fist bump and kick this match off.
Navi, they have been such a mainstay at international tournaments, but today they might be the dream killers. They could be the one that stops Team Heretics from making it to Madrid. But here's the thing, if we throw some copium, hopium, however you want to call it in there, Heretics have been flawless getting here, but Navi, they dropped a map for one map. They didn't look great, you know, against BBL uh, on Vine. Is that at all a concern here before we take a look at the map vetoes? I think we need to think about the fact that they were testing out stuff, that they're getting out of the comfort zone, and that is something that we'd like Aww. to see. Heretics is going back and probably keeping that Ascend Vito for now, and Navi decides no Lotus, no fun, even though Heretics was so good at it. Sunset will be the first one. Yeah, like. I'll be honest, I was hoping Navi will not ban Lotus because... I really wanted to see Lotus yeah, too. I really <laughs> wanted to see it because both Heretics and Navi are actually very decent at them and they have very different playstyles, so that would be an interesting clash, but not today. But we were gonna have Sunset, which is not played by like a any. single of those teams, so we have, we're in a full of surprise like agent select as well and then we're gonna see breeze which we didn't see from team heretics but we did see mm -hmm. from navi and navi with that yoro on artist was performing incredibly <laughs> well they had a flawless defense by the way on that map with almost 80 percent with no actually 80 percent win rate on defense so it's exciting yeah this is interesting they're playing mind games here you know this is yeah. for a spot in madrid and both teams are willing to just take this risk have sunset out there picked into it uh, so what does this say how, how you guys feel about this. I think that first the sunset. Oh, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. We're going to talk about the ages of light right here because we're right in and we're going to get a, a chamber. That is, a, for me, this is a very, very nice uh, indication of how they're going to play attack because yeah. they would single deal no. realist, very low on mobility. Actually, just the TP from the Omen, that's it. They're going to be standing playing defaults very slow. I know Mitch and Tom are looking forward to that. And probably we're not going to see the Lotus, but we're definitely going to see the Neon here and Mini Bow. And it's like night and day. We're talking about very stale, very, uh, you know, probably focused on the Lurks and the, and the most low place. And on the other side, we have our Heretics that is going to swamping utility, the KO, the Arrow and of course Mini Boo uh, with the walls and everything that you can do around the map. I think that they're going to surprise us. The the KO pushes combining that with paranoia and the oppressive stuns from Neon yes. at the tempo might be hard for Navi to get accustomed to if they never had the opportunity to play against this specific composition on this map. But one more thing I wanted to pay attention to, to for the viewers, pay to, uh, close attention where is Art is playing. If he's playing yes. on A side on behind the track in the corner, mm. this might be easily caught by the paranoia as well. We saw for example, Koi was struggling a lot with those uh, first deaths due to the operator, and I feel that Ardis can uh, uh, can be very successful at that. On the other side, if we get a mini boo that was as comfortable as he was last week, and he starts getting the kills and everything against them, I think that we're in for a very, very good treat. Yeah, it must be the first half we've seen with no jewelers right here in the NBA. No, uh, no, we have no. No, we hadn't um, um, seen it play chamber also. Oh, no, but they had a race too, didn't they? Did they run yeah, the race chamber? Nice box. Am I trolling? I feel because like... he played it in two maps. Oh, I maybe might, I troll, maybe I troll. Right, but, I, uh, but I mean, it's definitely, like we said, the risk taking, right? There's a really, really big day ahead of them today, so they need a good a start. But it's time for us to get into game and give a very warm welcome to your casters for this one. It's Mitchman and Tombez. Thank you so much to our wonderful analyst desk led by Yinsu as we're ready to kick this matchup off. You can see the players on the stage and the final hope for the Spanish in Madrid on the side of Heretics have a big task on their hand, Tom. Five events in a row. Navi have been able to hit. Angel just doesn't miss. Maybe this time he does. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. The, the hometown favorites may be trying to get things done, but it's already been one hell of a journey for them already. Also something I want to highlight straight away, we have seen a lot of rays on this map, and there isn't one on either team. So both going a little bit outside of the box. The Neon, the Semi, no, Duelist, I still don't want to say it. Chamber doesn't count. But uh, <laughs> it's definitely going to be interesting already, straight away a push down mid. That's going to be the, the plays out from Ardis, is putting that pressure on his opponents very early on. Yeah, we'll see that a lot as time is to come. Uh, an interesting battle later for Patatech, perhaps, as we've already seen the duel on the B site. As you can see, Team Heretics with a lot of control, and that's opened up the door for this later play by Patatech. He's making his way up. The door has been closed. He's just about missing his timing on getting around that, but he'll try to go for spawn. That means the players in B main 
need to hold on. The time now, much more valuable to them if they can delay Navi. And you can see they've got some stuff to work with already. A shock dart fired through to deter some spams as well. And a kill connected, but Patatex being found. Their flankers down. Now most of the round relies on these spams. Blindly firing through a smoke. Someone could be defusing, but there's no panic from Team Heretics. They feel like they've got this one under control. The kills are matching up. The tap again confirms that they're going for a classic out, but not in time. Mini Boos picked up a triple, and Team Heretics have picked up a pistol round. Yeah, a solid start for them off of the bat, just getting in on the after plant retake. Didn't really have too much legs to it either. I, I will say as well, obviously, we, we are playing on the patch now that has the changes with Chamber. Not massive, but the main thing is going to be that cost. Like having the ability to get more of those bullets in on the pistol round is one of the major things. And obviously, nice! the, op nice. the operator up, slightly, slightly better, I guess. Yeah, well, a we'll little, little bit, a little bit. She's a bit faster. I, I, I'll be honest. A tiny bit. I was, uh, we was, I was speaking with Lothar, and I was like, if, if teams, well, he said, if teams genuinely change because of the few changes that have been made, they probably shouldn't be playing chamber in the first place. <laughs> right? Like, you know, how often have we seen a chamber need that extra split second on the ult? That a tiny bit of a faster fire rate to save the day. It, it, yeah, the impact is, is going to be one in a million, if even. Maybe less. But uh, I don't know that it's worth picking up when you're only looking to play 26 rounds or so. For Team Heretics, round under the belt. Investment is decent. We've seen this a million times. In fact, we see it from Na'Vi most often. Three rifles and two pistols. Gives them a little bit of wiggle room. If they lose a player, maybe two, they can still reinvest and the economy will be okay. On the side of Na'Vi, that becomes the name of the game. Doing the damage, taking those weapons out of their hands. It is just hard to do when there's two players without rifles who are willing to save those over. They need a lot of kills without the weaponry that really allows them to do well, that. Like just looking at this composition from Na'Vi, it feels like it has to be a pretty good defensive side. Either that or you're going to need Angel to be entering. Oh, oh, wait. Seven he shots. always entries. He does. <laughs> One of the big advantages, though, is the fact that he can afford so many of those headhunter bullets now for artists. Seven in the back pocket. He only needs five at the best of times. Oh, he's in every shot. We'll see if it's the worst of times for him. He's got some backup as well, some bodies to distract. Good chance for damage. I think the main thing for them, though, is just going to be not having any sort of movement abilities to get them back in. The utility is going to have to be sublime. The stun to start with was pretty damn good. But even still, it's the same sort of after plant for heretics. Just happy to sit back and wait for them to push. No other choice needs to be made, but now you start to sweat a little bit. There's those two kills already in. Still a couple of shots left. The headhunter's out of bullets, though. And Artis is out of time, taken down quite quickly, leaving Sagetsu. Okay, nice shot. Damage is done. One rifle has been lost. Can he make it two? Can he pull them into the duel? Yes, they're trying to deny the defuse, and they've lost another. 19 HP in the difference. Sure, Navi didn't win the round, but realistically, we never really expected them to. Getting four kills, that's a lot more than Heretics ever should have let them away with. Yeah, it, it's definitely messy. And I think even just the bait towards the end shows that maybe they're a little bit worried on the other side. I will say, though, Mini Boo is one orb away from getting that overdrive. And, and it, it, it's one of those ultimates that it feels like it either does a lot or nothing. Like this, it, It's very little in terms of middle ground, but I do feel like he has been someone right at the top of the board in pretty much every single statistic. So I was talking about it earlier. Him and his brother top almost every chart in some manner or another. Yeah, it's actually unreal, especially for a debut from a player like Mini Boo. We talk a lot about nerves and, oh, you can do it at tier two. Doing it at this level is different. Well, he's been able to do it. Not this time, though. Shut down quickly. Two brothers, and they're both out of the server. Zipan makes sure of that. Four versus three. A good fight from Navi in this round. Team Heretics have lots to recover on, and even Padatek getting that kill. He's down to 11 HP. Benji, Fishy, and Rians are going to have to do a lot. Yeah, we actually have in this server right now the number one, two, three, and four in terms of ADR. So just the raw damage alone off the charts. Obviously, both these teams kind of skipped their way through by going 2-0 in their matches. So, oh, I mean, 2-0 overall, obviously, a map lost by Na'Vi. Rians has managed to sneak his way quite far up. The flash, solid to help him out as well. Paditek's position is known. The flash came from somewhere, and because of that, Sugetsu's going to be able to clear him. But even still, it's the same after plant again. A 2v2 scenario. Utility, shock darts available. A dart as well, just to give away positions. And on the other side of things, oh, a singular snake bite. It's not a lot to push them back. 
Fired into the corner as well. I did, didn't even fully clear the corner. That's got to be in the back of their mind. Could be someone there. Shock darts from Rienz, but he's not going to use them. It's the reveal instead. Fired out soon. It's given away his position, and you can see Sagetsu is trained in on that angle. Well done by Navit, and picked up the round one on the board for that defensive side now. Yeah, a decent bounce back, but still became a little bit dangerous, especially considering some of those opening battles seemed fairly favorable for them. Uh, getting rid of a couple almost immediately. Trade's not bad, though, from Heretics, and again, I, I like some of the interplay. You still have to bear in mind that Rian's is not here. Paditech's still a stand-in. But it does look like a team with a decent amount of synergy. For Na'Vi, financially in a good spot, but their opponents can still buy. That was a bonus. They played with a couple of weaker weapons in play, and now their overdrive is available if Mini Boo finds a spot to use it. Well, he's certainly speeding up, but the ultimate not popped just yet. Mini Boo. Looking to fight alongside Patatek, who's already lost his life. Unfortunate timing as the swing came out. Artis found one player and no one else ready on the trade. That's a quick pick and a fade back, obviously, because of his anchor. And no flashes. That, that, that's probably the bigger issue. Like, how are you now going to get back into this position? Paranoid. Okay. Yeah. You can have Mini Boo just try and blitz his way through, which I imagine is the plan. He's going to take the space and try and do some damage there, but. It still seems a little bit hesitant. I, th I think Heretics, even though they've got a man disadvantage, are still expecting Na'Vi to be a little bit aggressive here. Well, knowing the team, you're obviously going to have that expectation to play with. Sagetsu really feeding into it. He's right up against the Poison Orb, trying to take the fight. He's fallen back. He's now the focal point of this attack, but Artis is able to swing through, find heavy traffic, two quick kills, and then Zipan's on scene. Artis caught, changing weapon, as Rienz finds his double, a plant, a Hunter's Fury to work with, but the paranoia wasn't used by Navi. Now it's blinded, Rienz kept him trapped as he fights onto Angel. They know exactly where he is. They're seizing him in. He's low HP, trying to recover. He's got a little bit of time, a little bit of space, but he hasn't heard that TP close. He's not ready for a double swing. Not ready for Angel to hit the shot right away. Second found for Navi, Thank now you. tying it up neck and neck. And the problem is, Tom, you know, you mentioned the last round, Heretics had kept over money. They, they had yeah. that little bit of reserve. Now that's all gone. Yeah, I, I think you're also starting to see the dangers of what this defensive side First is going to be. You're, you're basically giving Ardis a free opening duel of whether he's quicker at the shot than you are. He is. And he is. <laughs> Most of the time, he's going to be. Oh, wow. Heretic's actually rivaling the, the Footwatch pie we saw the old cinemas, last year yeah. as well. I didn't think anybody would get even close to that, but that's a hell of a lot of people ready to watch their team play. Obviously, that's sort of the mountain of pressure that's put on Heretic. So you talk about this team, expectations of getting top four. I think people would have been happy with that. But now that they're one away, just a single match that decides everything. Oh, the Heretic's fans are out in full force. Well, that would be a lot of pressure regardless of the event, Tom, but considering the fact that it is in Madrid of all places yeah. for this squad, you can only imagine there's no more Spanish players within the running, but there's still one Spanish organization, one chance for the home fans to have someone to cheer for on that opening day. Navi looking to break those dreams here. and Perhaps they'll go in as the villains if they do. Eliminating them at such a late hurdle. I think they always kind of do. Bobby. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. True. <laughs> I, think, I think Angel's always going to be a little bit of a villain, but I also think he enjoys it. I think he's the only person I've ever seen to tweet to not follow him. Yeah, an <laughs> and unfollower and, giveaway. And, and he, he gained a lot of followers from that. So uh, the just Angel things. Speak of the man, he shall appear. Got no utility yet left, so he might as well go pushing. Already a decent trade for the side of Heretics, but Mini Boo is very low on HP. Stun does its job, but not really available to go in for the peek, and it leaves. Are oh, they actually going to peek Crazy. into the aftershock? Sagetsu really wanting that kill. And while Ardis using the. There you go. I knew you wanted to say it. Like, the first time, you know? It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, Ardis is having a lights out game. 7 to 3 right now. Already burned up his ultimate in that previous round. Gave him that little bit of an eco boost. I think for Heretics, and that lead slip out of their hands is expected. This is a round where they came in without a lot to play with. It was a scrappy fight, one with opportunities, but the utility ultimately just chopped them up a little bit too much. This is where they have a real fight, though, where they'll be able to get themselves back into it. 
Some ulties online, rifles in hand, and an early attempt to get aggressive. Xiao oh. under a lot of threat. Mini Boo took that one quick as can be, blink and you miss it. But there's still two players from Navi here, ready to defend. This is the value. You can already see Xiao. I, I, he never expected anybody to be there that fast. Nightfall thrown in, but it's going to miss at least a couple of the players. A marked four, she said. Yeah, I think it must have clipped one of the, the players that got around the corner. Even still, it, the ult will slow them down. It has given Na'Vi an opportunity to rotate in, potentially put Ardis into position. He's going to be there exactly with the operators. Are. Position will be revealed, but peeking into it would have some pretty big risks about it. And Angel goes wide and has support. Rolling Thunder used up as well. The retake of space. The players aren't stunned up. Benji Fishy good to take the fight with Zip and down. That ult was burned. Very early, very aggressively. You can see the idea, but they must have thought they were further up elbow than they actually were. The side of Heretics happy to take here. that kill onto a, a charging Zipan. And Artis, well, he has somewhere to retreat to at least, so he's going to be posted Ooh. up, and of course, he hits that shot, goes out for more. Left. This man will not be deterred. He won't be scared away. He's even Fight heard planted. that shrouded step, I think, by the looks of his, his crosshair placement. Seemed to expect another player to have crossed. A rotation from... So get to a little bit further away. Just looking to try and wrap back around, try and find some space. Benji in a position to fight him, but one this 1v1 one one could be everything. <laughs> well, oh, this is not going to miss another shot. Three kills for him. Off to a flyer of a start. And Na'Vi, well, they're going to double up on their lead. Four to two. Yeah, that's a strong scoreline on the other side. And I think this is where Heretics might start to get a little bit worried. We haven't seen it yet, but we could see a pause from this squad after such a great opening duel. And I think it's fair to say some advantages thrown away. Artis manages to cleave back that second kill to at least trade out Angel. But it's the fact that you see some of these players being being caught out, like Zipan, rolling thunder use, goes pushing, gets dropped. Add to, add to that the opening duel they had, I think they're going to be pretty upset to have let that one slip. And yeah, as predicted, they go for a pause. Team Heretics need to go back to the drawing board here because it started out well. Things have definitely slipped out of their hands. Yeah, well, ever since the guns came into play, it seems like Na'Vi have been pretty dominant and they haven't really had much of a response to Ardis's aggression. 10 and three at the top of the board. The mid control as well from Sagatsu has been pretty much spot on. And I, as you said, I feel like there were a couple of pieces of utility there from Na'Vi that maybe sh didn't have the impact that they should have done, but they still managed to convert yeah. the round anyway. Like, it, it made part. absolutely no difference. And I'm, I'm wondering what will be the adaptation to sort of shut this man down. Because again, we talk about the individuals on the Heretic side. Minibu has been sublime, and I, I think number one has said in a lot of stats, but Boo's also been up there as well. Like, he has been unbelievable. I think he is the number one rated player in the tournament so far. Currently one and five. It's early days, but you kind of hope for their sake that he's going to get back into that form again. Well, yeah, especially when you look at a team like Navi on the other side. This is a squad that will be coming in firing on all cylinders. Yeah. Artis is out for revenge. I don't even think they've done anything Careful to him. Here. He just he just <laughs> likes taking people down, ruining their hey, days. You know, he was on that, that roster for a bit. Heretics? How far back you want to go in history? Uh, you think we, he holds are, we, a are going, we, are, we are going back. He didn't do well on that team, so maybe he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. Well... Right now, Navi have been denied their early aggression. The pick hasn't come through as it has in the past. Something to work with for the side of Heretic still having that extra man and the ulti pop. Hunter's Fury caught one burst and even hit Zipan as well, but no kills to come off the back. Good trade to start it out. Zipan's got one. He's out for free. He's swinging through with his teammates and they're taking every fight they can. Navi going for a scrappy round and one that's led them ahead. Only one player still standing. Padatek needs a revive and Xiao and Angel will not let that happen. Rian's down to seven HP and there's nowhere to go. A minute on the clock, but two players right around that corner. He did well to at least isolate a 1v1 duel, but he didn't win it. And with 7 HP, I can't say I'm surprised. Out of the pause, no success is found. Yeah, and, and the thing is that, like, Heretics had a really cool idea. So one of the things they do is basically just TP into a spot that they're already in. And you can already see the sheer doubt. Like, I'm pretty sure every single member of Na'Vi, as they were running past spawn, checked if he was there. Yeah. Like, is he in spawn? Is he in spawn? Put a little bit of doubt in their mind, but it didn't seem to matter. Full rotation gambled the majority of their players over onto this site, and the fast-paced push just didn't work out. And what I want to give credit to Na'Vi for, which is no surprise, like, this is a team that's been around with a bit of a break for a very long time. The interplay from them so far has been perfect. Like, each time yep. it's been tradable fights, especially when they've got into 2v1s or even 2v2s, 
They've been winning every single one of those battles. One of the benefits of having your team together for so long is that you can start to focus on those things because you've already built everything else. You've built your strategies, your comms, and how you like to play the map, who fills what roles. Their comms. I think that changes every day. It, yeah, to be fair. <laughs> speaking about most teams, that's true. With Na'Vi... Yeah, I think it's the other way around. They have such good synergy that then they can do whatever they want <laughs> whatever with the, the comms. Whatever the hell we want to do. Yeah, but the protocols are one of the key things, like Not the identity of your team. And they've got that well and truly figured out at this stage. At least Angel does. I'm not sure anyone else gets to say. That's uh, one hell of a peek from Angel. And it's uh, all part of the plan, you know? Yeah. Peek in with utility, they'll panic, they'll peek you, and then Shao will spray right. two through the smoke. You know, if you don't if you didn't see this one coming from the very start of the round, then you just, you just don't know Valorant. I'm sorry, but this is a textbook play. Flawless. And the Lucia flawless, to be precise. Yeah, that was basically zero damage done. I did, this is, and that's the other thing for Heretics thus far throughout this tournament. We are looking at a team that has been able to basically just go through without actually having any real problems. Like they, they two owed KC, they two owed Foot. Like that's the spot that they found themselves in to get through to this stage. So I, we don't know what will happen if they lose a map. It, it, and I know it sounds ridiculous because they've made it to top four, but that's how the format has worked for them. So realistically, we're now looking to see, okay, can this team respond? Can they do it? Because they haven't really had to. And Na'Vi, well, we know they can. <laughs> They've had too many times. They lost the first map of the tournament to BBL. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it can be tough for this squad facing new challenges this late in the tournament with such high stakes. But that's what it's, what it's all about. Got to see those adaptations. And so far, Heretics have done well. In this round, already picking off Xiao. A big smoker removed. And with that controller out of play, it's Sagetsu that has a lot of, well, control on the map. He's gone for a Viper's Pit in B main. Has a wall going across middle as well. This can block a lot of vision for Team Heretics if they weren't already past it. The idea being the other place it will send them is towards this angle, straight into Artis, who's just locking down A all by himself. Yeah, that's the benefit of him being able to TP away. Still, decent trade. Mini Boo again. Being able to keep things in their favor for now. Time's starting to tick down. and Well, basically, A main and B main are completely locked off without their knowledge. Now, the push through from Benji could reveal quite a bit, but instead, they are going to end up pushing into this man, and he has been an utter menace exactly thus far. Finally, Ardis will be revealed. That will mean he has to fall back, and they're going to try and put the pressure on. He's faking the full fallback, though. Look, he immediately goes forward. They were wise to it. Paranoia used. No free kill for Artis this time. Instead, the punish as he attempts to re-enter the angle. Mini Boo was waiting. Zip Bans oh, walked dead. in and done so much damage. He was close to taking Boo as well. The bullet just below the head, but he'll survive. Ten seconds. Heretics with two players alive in a two versus one. Sigetsu already used his Viper's Pit right off rip at the start of the round, so that's no longer in play. The wall already Jackson's put down up. as well, and it's not really doing much for him. Blocking off one angle that he doesn't really need to be worried about, and coming through this smoke, that should be the end of it. Right into Boo. Team Heretics with another round found. They're closing the gap, but they've still only got half of what Na'Vi are putting on the board, with three left to fight for in the half. It's anyone's game, but Na'Vi certainly looking favored. Yeah, yeah, I, I think this was definitely a, a showcase of how, how good Miniboo has been in this tournament. Like, I, it, it, the fact is, we've spoken about how good Ardis is, but he just peeked into the angle and took him down. Like, that, that is how fast this guy is. And, and we saw him in the... I feel like he, like, doubles up, because he was in the Spanish League last year. He now joins this team as well. I feel like he's got to be a favorite for the fans. He's done his time. Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. I can tell you someone who's not going to be a favorite for the fans. <laughs> <laughs> got any more signs today? I've got a few. And a few to recycle as well. Well, we'll see. We'll see how things go. Maybe they need some tweaks to them, some Photoshop. Navi already picking up the opening on a mini boot, but the trade is instantaneous. Same angle again. They've got the control. They've got the space to work with. Door going to be closed, but it's to no effect. Team Heretics are all in. They've played for B main, and now they'll play back into it with three players going back, one staying close. And using the shrouded step to get out of there, avoiding the nightfall that was on its way, the nightmare that could have taken them, consumed them. As Boo will look to cause some nightmares of his own. 
A smoke close, allowing the spam, the rolling thunder, hard to connect on it, having to run through that smoke. Potential players unstunned, ready to fight. Benji Fishy was one. Spray is good. It's massive from Boo. Through his own smoke, he stopped the defuse and stopped Navi in their tracks. Four rounds for Team Heretics. It ain't over yet. Yeah, it, it's, it genuinely seems like the B main after the plant from them is just perfect. Like they've got so much utility to just place onto the spike and then just from that position, a firing squad. The only real blip was Xiao over the top and everything else, even with the ultimates again. That's another round where we've seen Nightfall and the Rolling Thunder wow. thrown in and not really having the effect that Na'Vi have wanted, which nice. in those sort of retake scenarios should be better effective. Now again, financially, no real problems for Na'Vi yet. You win six rounds in a row and relatively clean. You're gonna have those finances available to you. But even still, as said, I'm looking at this composition and other than basically Angel playing as a duelist, I, I do question where your sort of opening duels are gonna come from. Is it just gonna be these really slow, classic <laughs> Na'Vi defaulty rounds? Or is there going to be someone taking that initial aggression? Because that's why you play a raise. That's why you play the Neon. It, it gets you that extra opening jewel if you need it. They don't have anything. I've seen a lot of words coming from the coaching staff to start. And Angel putting the final polish on it on the side of Navi. Not happy with how things have gone. And I, I do think that's one of the things. You know, it's funny to highlight Zipan. The guy is top fragging on their squad. He's having a good game. I do think those rolling thunders could be better utilized, but it's not a Zipan thing necessarily. No. It's, it's when they're used and how the team responds to it. Uh, there is some polishing there, but that's something they're, they're working on, as you can see with that pause. Two rounds left to play for, and it could still be tied up at the half for Team Heretics. And we haven't seen these teams play this. We don't know how it's going to fair when we swap sides but i think it's fair to say with heretics having picked this it's a good chance navi have put some stock in their defense yeah i i but to be honest i think i was gonna say realistically this looks this should be both teams better side but we'll have to wait and see not a great start again it's just this aggression coming out from the defensive Whoa. side and well with a little bit of help from a stun that kills almost too easy for xiao after a pause, I, I don't know if these were mass changes that were made by the side of Na'Vi. I guess they just wanted to deny them B main control, and Ardis did that. And then Xiao just killed them the second they went mid. Yeah, I, I don't know if the full intention is to bait them into the mid play, but uh, Ardis? I, yeah, okay. For the barrel length, he swaps. And while the rate of fire didn't help him out all too much there, Boo dropping Ardis right off rip. Four versus two. Team Heretics blinded up. Great shot Five from Xiao. He's repositioning too. He just needs to hold the control. I he said his fight. HP isn't ideal to take a duel, but he's got teammates coming in. We've got all the health in the world. There they are. Zipan swinging with Angel to close that round out. Seven to four. One more round and a half. Yeah, I, I actually, like, Boo nearly gets that kill while completely blind. Like, it, it's so ridiculously close. But this is, again, just the value coming out of Ardis. Just taking half the map completely away from them. And you see the reaction from the side of Heretics is to try and put pressure in onto mid. Some decent supportive utility, but more importantly, just the Xiao Show returns. Able to move himself up the board. And for Na'Vi, as said, seven rounds. Already looking like a, a solid defensive side. I, I think the majority of teams have definitely had their favor on the attack. Or I think the only exception, at least from EMEA, is Carmichael. They had their rougher share of things. Mm, not what well, their defense was just insane. That's what it was. I think it was eight plus rounds every defense Carmichael have had. On this oh, one. I didn't even track that, yeah. Okay. We've seen them later up against Fnatic. That's uh, that was a see if they can keep it up. That was in, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or if Fnatic that's gonna be the real the test. Do, do Fnatic continue to just ban the new map? Maybe, maybe. I mean, up against KC, they've been a, a squad that upsets everybody. But uh, well, I, I was surprised to see that the the predictions are quite so off kilter, shall we say? <laughs> KC fans know how to make their way to the Twitter polls. Let's say that the EMEA channel is flooded with them. I think it's like 70 plus percent in favor of KC closing it out. I respect it. I don't know if our team. analyst desk will give them the same odds, but uh, well, we'd all love to see them go all the way to Madrid. 35 seconds though. This has been a much slower round. No, so nasty. Oh, no, Artis again. Always catching them off guard. They're going to use the space taken to try and get into the side but Xiao for a second round in a row. This is going to mow them down and what can Rians do from this position? 
20 seconds left. Spike on the site. Five players to find. I wish you the best of luck, but I don't think anything's going to be coming from this one. Chow even making his move in towards the spawn. He wants a, another frag. And well, the fact is, this round is already done. It's just about padding those stats. And he's done exactly that. A fourth kill for Shao. Navi closing this one out with a pretty strong statement. They've given two rounds, kicking it off. The pistol loss in the follow-up, and that was half of what Heretics found. Artis is a menace. So his lurks have been so annoying to deal with. This guy is going to be playing slow pushes into your spawn, running it down on A, grabbing the off angle, and just holding that control. Control that should be utility and possibly two players holding it. Instead, it's one guy with a sniper who has an instant retreat after he takes a shot. And he has an insane hit rate on those shots as well. Closing the half, 13 and seven. Xiao did exactly the same. Uh, this is tough. When Navi come out firing on all cylinders like this, there's almost no way to put them back, to quiet them down. Team Heretics now on their defense. We'll have to slow this push from Navi. And Look, on the attack side, I think at least Artis will be a little bit less irritating. He won't be locking down the angles in quite the same way. He might find a new way to cause the hair loss. It, is, it, it genuinely does, at least initially, look like it's going to be Angel leading the charge. And some of these fights, Shao just goes running into the cage. Just sheer disrespect. So what's on the defensive side? And in the meantime, Artis has just gone walking through. Now, I feel like this should be known, especially once the second player goes, but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll know that somebody could be as far forward as Ardis is. Quite planted. It's a later rotation with Boo, everybody splitting up into their own angles. Mini Boo though, he's crept by a PC utility. That spot was being watched by Angel incrementally. It's gonna be a matter of timing as to whether he wins it out or not. And indeed, Mini Boo falls. So too does Rian, so Boo is alone. And having picked up Ardis, they know where he is. Again, we'll see the same thing that plagued Navi on their defensive side. It's this tight plant, a very narrow angle that you can defuse on, and they've got utility to reveal you, to spam you down. They know at this point he's probably not defusing. Now he's tapped it again. Stun comes through. Good luck to you. 49 HP already. And then Zipan steps in to close it out. It was almost no way, short of him running in and hitting the two quickest headshots you've ever seen. That's nine rounds for Navi, edging closer to the close of this map. And Tom, again, you know, <laughs> I feel like this has happened in most of our series. This is the map pick of Heretics, and it's gotten off to a terrible start. Yeah, I, I think just how good we saw Navi on the defense. Artists catching them every time they would go for some of these pacier hits and just shutting down so much map control, and now, Losing the second pistol gives them one apiece, but they now need to try and find a response. They've gone for a few sheriffs, a little bit extra to try and play with for this round, but ultimately not a whole lot in comparison to the three rifles that are on the other side. But we saw what damage can be done with these kind of weapons. In fact, Navi had less to work with in terms of pistols bought. In terms of bullets bought, Artis did invest a little bit more, obviously, having his headhunter to work with. He had a Guardian, basically. Oh. Yeah, essentially. And he did some serious damage wow. with it. Benji Fishy, though, he'll do it with a classic. That's his full kill on Angel. And he's back over now, picking up a Sheriff for the upgrade. Keeping the numbers even in a round like this is already impressive. It's forcing Navi to group up and play this one together. It's already cost them a rifle with a clean kill from Mini Boo, and they know Benji is still around here. The only unknown quantity is Boo. But with Artis down, there's no trap to cover their back. Boo can creep his way on through. The only question is if Navi are going to leave this open, if they're going to be checking it. Oh, I like it. I love it. The smoke. This is, this is a clear sell from Heretics. They're telling Navi, left. we're both in spawn. We're both in market. Just, we're not in main. Why would we smoke it off? I'm trying to block an angle for you. And that might just open the door for Boo. He's creeping his way through. It's being watched by Angel. It's a matter of timing. And it looks like he swung at just the wrong moment. Gunnier. Those players not Last quite player in his down. vision. And when they are, Xiao is trained in on him. Unlucky. Really nice try, though. Yeah, leaves it on to Benji. Sheriff in hand. But still so much to try and do. To try and turn back into their favor. And they're doubled up. He'd need to hit some crazy shots to get that one out of there. And it's going to be another triple kill for Xiao. He is coming to today, padding those stats.
As they now hit double digits, this is looking bleak for the side of Heretics and Na'Vi. They might just be speed running their way to Madrid. Yeah, with their map pick up next, and it's not, I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in Breeze for Heretics just because of how Navi are already yeah. lights out on this and how they've played so far. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Breeze, it's been a pretty strong map for this squad. Yeah, no, Navi, uh, they're 2-0, 13-7, 13-6, mm. Liquid and BBL, and their defensive sides have been 7-1 and 9-3 and and yeah. with, with a Yoru comp. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's really tough to play against them. I know, and you never know coming into this game, they might even have other ideas up their sleeve. This sure. is the game where you'd pull them out. But with 10 to four in the lead, it doesn't look like there's much flair needed to the Navi side right now. They are just winning this game outright. Every single avenue they approach, victory is at the other end. See if Heretics can put up that roadblock already, being forced out of position. Navi are not being caught off guard, and they have the utility to constantly clear these angles and push Heretics onto the back foot. All the while, by the way, just hoping that maybe they get aggressive on A, and someone like Sagetsu can grab that Lurk kill that you know he's capable of. Now as they shift direction, it's going to be Artis that's trying to pick him off. Yeah, Panatech knifed just a second ago, and it didn't reveal anything, and now <laughs> that's actually where... Na'Vi have just slowly maneuvered their way towards it. it. means that he's basically alone. He has some support from the utility of his teammate. There is a cam available for Benji to potentially spot. But I don't know if he's going to be there to help soon enough to really do too much. And in the meantime, Ardis has been selling left. this ruse. Now Paditek has to go big on the site. Benji's close, but what can he do with that util? Like you said, it's all on the pad attack to at least put up a good hold, buy them some time, get some kills. Benji spamming through his picked up shout. And now the flash is going to go in. Here comes the peek on the back of it. Great play from Heretics. A crunch that's crushed Navi's momentum and left Artis in a 1v5 that he has no business winning. Barely any seconds left on the clock in the time. <laughs> what was that shot? That was precise and it was quick. But it's not clean enough. He'd need four more of those in a second or so. Ten to five, we go. Half of the rounds for Heretics again. <laughs> that's a man that's doing his aim training. That was so quick to just hit that final headshot. I love the setup, though. The setup here is really cool because it basically involves Benji using his utility from outside of the site so that, like, if a straight bullet hits him, it, it wouldn't have mattered. Well, if he was on the side and it hits him, all of his util goes down. Instead, he's outside. Palatek's fighting with flashes, and he's putting up utility around him to keep him safe. Just a nice little idea. Also means he couldn't be hit by anything that could potentially deny that utility in general. Nice round from Heretics, but as you said, they need a lot more of those if they're going to be winning this map. Cover going up. Bring them down. Well, Trap already dealt with. Some util to slow reveal as well. Benji wasn't spotted initially, and they can't deal with him. One by one, they fall on the side of Navi. And with Market truly locked down, there's nowhere else to look. Benji's even trained in to find Artis. Zipban alone. The same spot Artis was in the last game. Last round, rather. One versus five. A rifle in his hands. An entire platoon of enemies to take down. They're posted up, ready to go. Wonder where he is. They're just going to wait for him to step out of main or step back <laughs> into the waiting arms of Boo. I like that. Boo's trying to get himself to kill. He's, he's put the smoke down. He's like, yes, come back. <laughs> In the other direction. 40 seconds. He can just wait it out. The fact is, the Zipan saving the gun wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing financially. His team aren't exactly in the greatest of spots going into the next round. Although, I don't left. know if Ardis will have Tour de Force available. It might give them something to play with. And he knows at this stage that if there's that many players and they're putting a smoke, there has to be someone behind him. Not going to be able to retreat onto the A site, but it is all about just holding onto that gun, having something remaining for the next round, and oh, he wins wow. the duel. Boo is literally waiting there for about a minute, but it doesn't matter. It looks like Zippen's going to be able to hold onto the gun. Yes, patience didn't pay off there, I suppose. It's Zipan taking the knife out, that little bit of extra movement speed. It makes all the difference, I suppose. 10 to 6, four rounds between them. It doesn't seem like a lot, but Navi are so close to pushing this over the line. It has to be a near flawless set of rounds from Team Heretics to fight their way back through. And Navi 
Well, they'll at least experience some difficulties here, some weaknesses. Good to see Benji activated in a round like that as well. Hasn't had a bad game. We talk a lot about Mini Boo in this map. Benji's been matching his performance. And I think that's certainly something to write home about. That Sentinel being able to lock down control. But the challenge will not be towards Ooh. Benji this time. Instead, it's Mini Boo, and he's not losing this challenge! What? The damage is massive. Only three of those kills are for him, but... That's three more than I'd give him credit for, swinging into the full force of Navi. They even suspect where Artis is, smelling the blood in the water. Mini Boo tried to spam the box to get the fourth kill. <laughs> I love that. Paddy Tech's like, I'll set up the flash, I'll peek my kill. Mini Boo's like, if I hit the last bullet, maybe I'll just steal this one. <laughs> but it is. Great round from there. I, I like the trap setups that they're having. Andalusia are flawless as well. It's, it's just cool ideas. Like you can see that Na'Vi on the other side didn't have a mass amount of weaponry to play with. I think it was just a hero rifle coming in for Ardis. But they had a little trap set up ready to shut them down. And that's the thing. When Heretics have got moving, when that momentum has been in their favor, this is where this team has truly obliterated a lot of their opponents. That's not the best start, though. Same thing attempted again. Miniboo looking to try and take over the game. And Ardis silences him within seconds. Well, this is it. When you've got a player that's winning rounds off the back of getting aggressive, you're likely to get aggressive with him. So, yeah. have he make the play to just Especially pump the brakes? Especially if they're on Neon. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, you're not going to find the value by holding an angle till they peek you. So, this is somewhere that Navi make the right read. This guy's going to get aggro, stack up A. He might do it there again. Leave Ardis to lurk on mid. And if he pushes B main, we'll just play it for the information. It is what it is. They've certainly cast out their net and caught a fair amount of fish. A good haul for the side of Na'Vi with a five versus four. A team Heretics not having a ton of ultimates to fall back on. At least a null command for Patatech, but as we can see, he's on the wrong side of the map. Some aggression taking place up towards a main and even a third player on that side from Heretics. Meanwhile, the man that we've praised just a little bit earlier on, Benji Fishy, is having some trouble. You can see he's fallen back towards the spawn to try and cover that back angle, leaving his traps to play the site. The camera has been destroyed, and that's drawing some rotations. Grace, but Sagetsu's got himself into a perfect position for this. Both players with their backs turned, and Artis might be a little peeved to die like that. But his teammate got the trade nice and clean. And with that, there seems to be no way this falls awry. They haven't cleared Benji. Last they haven't even down. seen him, but they're watching Spike for him. Planted. And they have found the kill just in time. That's a crispy aim all the way through. And while after what was a, a really clean round in the last for Heretics, just moments later, Na'Vi bounced back with four players surviving. Again, I think it was just expecting a lot of what they were going to do and then just a sneaky little play coming through the back for Sagetsu. Heretic's going to take themselves a pause, a, a chance for the Brits to have a little bit of chat with the guys. Well, you know, it's, it's an old strategy to make that much noise when you're running at your opponents. A, a matter of honor sometimes. The only problem is it gives away the fact that you're there. Maybe the sheer tempo can cause them to be stunned or the fault line as well. That could help out. But if it misses, that's where the trouble comes through. I love Rian's locks, you know, looking good these days. I wonder if that was someone from production who did that or one of his teammates. <laughs> that, that's, that's the question There's I have. No it's, it's changed him. We'll never know. It was we'll Casso. It was Casso with the big laments. But yeah, this is a huge moment for Heretics. They've started to like gain some momentum, quickly shut down. Tour de Force available as well for artists if they need it. And they have a couple of ults of their own. Potential to remove some utility and send Mini Boo in flying. But the question is, what is going to be the plan? Because as we've sort of witnessed, a lot of what you're going to get from that Neon on this defensive side is aggressive pushes with some cool utility combos. That's only going to work so many times. Like you have to try and catch Na'Vi off guard. They are very happy to play these slower pace rounds and try and sort of weave their way through the gaps in your defense. Because especially on a map like Sunset, there always seems to be somewhere with a gap. If you want to play, let's play. Well, you're not going to be not going to be canceling out the fun times happening on the other side of the map. Team Heretic seeing nothing on A. There is one player sitting outside of it, as per usual. Sugetsu left on the lurk, but the real danger in this round is the man with the big golden gun in hand. It's Artis having popped his ult, and he'll be left to cause havoc. Now we've seen this a number of rounds from Artis sitting around this position. He'll 
grab a pistol or something to shoot up towards where the camera usually is in the window, make some noise, and hope that somebody goes swinging into him. If they don't, well, the slow contact towards A usually works late in the round. I like how Navi have been playing this because so far, it's not like Heretics have had an answer outside of their trap plays, their quick responses to map control being seized. Doesn't look like they've got one set up necessarily either. This is somewhere that heretics are going to have to take individual duels. And I think the first might be Rienz. He's already walking down towards mid. And it looks like heretics have the idea to crunch two players in market, two to top mid. Postured on the angles, ready for a fight. Stun was good. Ult is pop. Mini boost good for more. And he's out. He's bought himself some time. Yeah, and, and that's decent as well. That gets rid of Angel. That's a lot of your information setups. Now, they do have a roll in Thunder. I assume if you were ever going to use it, this would be it. Minibu able to quickly get into position. And now, well, with the Null Command, it's actually not going to be that ultimate available. That's going to be a big problem for Na'Vi. 15 seconds coming up on the clock for them to try and make their move. A fragment to delay them. A smoke in the way. If they are going to go for this, it has to be now, but they get the entry onto Minibu. Panatech holding strong, though. And that might just be enough to spam. Has dropped that spike. Leaving just two players remaining, and they can just hide out for the remainder of the round. Ardis will take one with him. But the fact is, Heretics have managed to bounce back, and a lot of it is off the back of Padatech. Well, two kills before the timer went out, and he cleaned the house afterwards. 8 to 11. You know, when we were looking at a much wider gap between these teams, even just at 10 6, it felt like Navi might gain control of this and turn it into their favor. Now, though, we're seeing these responses from the side of Heretics. The mid control idea was nice. Four players looking nice. to crunch. Navi go, threw a lot Let's of utility go, back at them. They were throwing their smokes, using their stuns, and forcing them off angles, particularly in market. I don't think that went the way Heretics wanted off rip. Good stun though. Oh, this is fantastic. Early aggression could get a lot of space for the side of Navi, but they've just forced them back instead. And I think what they're missing is Mini boot. Someone on a Neon to quickly <laughs> seize that space after the stun and, and punish the kills. They don't have that, so not able to quite force those mistakes the same. And then they go walking into these angles. Mini boot just doesn't A. miss. Yeah, th this is, is basically what I was saying in the first half. Is like, is it just going to be Angel basically just taking firefights? And it's like, I, I don't know. Especially versus Mini boot, you ain't going to be winning it. Now they rely on artists doing the same thing, just walking up mid. It's where the holes really sort of lie within this attack side is they just don't have a space taker on one by one by one. It's individual fights. And Heretics have won all of them. And it was what you said starting it out, right? Because you're saying about the space taker and the first point you made when we saw these uh, compositions come through is the fact that Raze has been so popular and yeah. you don't have that on either team. Now, we can understand why Heretics on the attack Last side are replacing Raze, how they're doing it, Spike because Mini Boo is the space taker. He's the guy around the corner, quick as can be. We saw it, especially towards Elbow, like Xiao getting cut off in some of the rounds. And I, I, I want to believe, I really do. There's so many players, so little time spiked down, but he's already picked up two. Got a rolling thunder to work with as well. Two flashes. But 20 seconds on the clock, he's got to run and he's got to do it now. There's players watching the cross and simply no way. I would call it here, 10 seconds Ten on the seconds clock. Left. They will just run the clock down till he goes for the plant, take the swing together or on their own and finish it out. Nicely done. But yeah, back to that point, it's Navi. They don't have that solution. And I think in these rounds, in the last couple in particular, we're seeing how that they struggle to yeah. not take the map control, but to actually take a kill to punish any uh, map control that was taken by Heretics. I think also we've seen the last couple of rounds at least that Miniboo has right. gone for positions where he can take a fight, but he can get out of there. And I, I think that's the, the main thing that I want to be focusing on is the round where he ran down mid, that for me is too much because that's in a position where there's no escape. Yeah. If you go down, you give them the advantage. Navi can trade very effectively. The composition doesn't really harp them too much there. The problem is, is if no one gives them that fight and you're just chilling, and then it's like, okay, Angel's going to swing into Miniboo. Who's winning that fight? Miniboo. <laughs> a bold statement, Tom, but one that I struggle to disagree with. I, I, I do think that's some of the problem here. The, the old Angel space taking up against Mini Boo. Those opening duels have been convincingly in favor of Team Heretics. They're back on the board. They've got, what, five out of the last six rounds? If you're on the side of Na'Vi for the first time, you're starting to get worried. This could slip out of your hands. And like people have been saying, like, this matchup, it's favored to Na'Vi. They're definitely the, the favorites on paper. 
but it's not going to be the biggest surprise in the world. Our jaws will not be permanently stuck on the floor if heretics do it because the signs have been there. Me two weeks ago. 100%. Honey, you even tell me heretics are in this position two weeks ago? I'm sending you to get a lobotomy. But this is where we are. This is reality. And I think heretics have earned it every step of the way. That's the key thing. They, they have taken everybody's perceptions and changed it. Benji, move. Okay, all good. All good. Oh, okay. This is a much faster pace looking. Angel's out. Angel is out with the spike on his own, but nobody has managed to stop him. Ardis has been caught. Trade back for Benji. He just goes swinging. Keeps things even for now, and they may not even know the Panic is still in this corner. They have absolutely no idea. Just the snake in the grass hiding, and they're doubling up to try and put the pressure on Sugetsu, looking to try and trade things back. Rians will do just that. And now on is oh! Ooh. <laughs> and there's the close up for the dub. Rians with a big play. Two kills, closing out that round, shutting down Art, embarrassing Artis on the wide swing, I'd say. <laughs> I don't know. I think Artis may have embarrassed himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It was a little bit of a little uh, bit whiffy, but I don't, I don't think that was intentional by his opponent. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's slow that one down. Let's Got that one in the replay. 11 to 10, and we saw the Heretics fans on their feet in the cinema back home. Now it's got to be getting loud in that cinema. I'll, I'll be surprised if you can hear gunshots go off when Heretics are taking fights, because they are looking so good. Picked it back to a one round gap, and the momentum is in their favor. Xiao's dead. Uh, oh, okay. hello? Somehow he's done. still alive. There the thing is, the rest of the team are not even remotely close. Like, they are just making their way through Elbow. Sagetsu uh, has managed to find one, though, onto Miniboo. For a smoke. Just blind and, fire. Okay, Angel's got another one. This is starting to get interesting. They've had to use the Hunter's Fury. There's chance for real damage here. A second player, low, almost connects onto Zipan. Spike in the way. <laughs> but it is going to be the plan. Somehow, this looks doable. Unlikely, but doable. Well, we had two spams through the, the smoke, essentially the yin and yang trading each other out. But then the Hunter's Fury, it's pulled it back in favor. Zipan's so low, damage is done. Information is there to play with as well. Benji's just locked them in, put him in a box, and it's only Zipan left. 45 HP, 25 HP, and a Sheriff. A dream. No, oh, down, and he's got two. The collapse. Benji's on it, right under his nose. Zipan has no idea. He's made the play of his life, but Benji shut him down anyways. 11 to 11, not even breaking a smirk as they equalize. Heretics are locked in to close out map one. Oh my God. Can we get, I think, about 5,000 new pairs of trousers to the Heretics watch party? Because everybody must have just clenched at the same time. Like, that is absurd. They just managed to collapse. Headshot while on 25. Just utter oh, no. filth. And while, yeah, Benji balls of steel, just to stick that all the way, like, I think everybody was terrified. Can you imagine if he sticks that, gets swung, dies, it's all over Twitter, Reddit, he's, he's yeah. gone. He's out of the scene. There's no coming back. It would be probably the second most embarrassing thing after what he said about that <laughs> Koi game. <laughs> yeah, last year press conference, he still hasn't lived that down, but... You know what? It might be egg on our face. We can't make fun of him anymore if he makes no, it all the no, way to Madrid. Fair, fair play. Fair I think play. already, already he's earned that respect back. But wow, 11 to 11. I didn't think we were getting here. Navi looked like they were running away with things, but impressive defensive that, side from Heretics the last so far. Eight rounds, I think. Yes, yes. We are seeing the holes in that Navi comp. Looking to try and build up in towards this B site once again. And look at the rotation already. You, you can see once the information is not had on the other side, once the aggressive push has come through from Boo, they're already going to catch the Ardis is here. Although that kind of sells a little bit of a ruse because he normally lurks. He's normally playing mid. He's normally hiding behind. Again, Nightfall going to be going through. Might have caught Benji, and it's not going to catch Padatek. So, yeah, no, they got absolutely... No, they just got Benji. That doesn't help them much at all. No, no, it doesn't. I mean, I like the idea to at least wait it out. But for Heretics now, no they've, they've even popped in the Null Command, slowed down this push from Navi. No utility, like you said, Tom. No Vipers pit to save the day. Navi need to do it with rifles. And they found Padatek. But the double man blitz coming in from Mark at any second now as the smoke fades. Benji on the first. He's been so good in these fights and he needs to be better because Rianz has fallen. 
Out goes the paranoia. They tried to deny the defuse. The time is low, but it's done. It's being planted. It's being found. Zipan still putting up a fight. And with Benji down, the numbers are even. But Mini Boo so desperately low. Boo needs to make a big play. The brothers trying to clutch it out, but only one stands. Full HP on Boo. But he doesn't know there's a player right up beside him. Zipan shutting down the hopes of Team Heretics in regulation. Overtime. Now the last lifeline for the Spanish fans on map number one. It's just, but they haven't managed to streak rounds together other than the pistol in second. So, although the pressure now sits with Heretics, the fact is they've been good for it so far in the defensive side. I think the main thing that's going to come down is whether or not Na'Vi have an idea and whether or not they may have a blunder. I think that's the only thing that can really stop them at this stage. 12 to 11. No problems in terms of having their utility available, the credits. Very much. In their hands, Miniboo again is going to go for this aggressive play. But just look at the positions currently being held by Na'Vi. They are sat back waiting for the first sort of 10, 15 seconds of the round because they know that this guy is coming again. It's been so impressive, this defensive side. I think a big factor of it has been Benji Fishy for me. He's a player that a lot of people Patty's talk been about. been insane as well. patty has been nuts. But I think Patty played at top level before. Benji, I'd heard... And I'd read these rumors, these, oh, he's not ready for the top level yet. He's not there yet. Well, it certainly looks like it here. And no better team than Na'Vi. As I said, five times in a row, this squad has been to international events. When they had artists, they were winning them. And now they're back with him. Team Heretics, a huge line in the sand, already drawn a great start. A tough start to the series, actually. And then they bounce back into it. One away with 45 seconds on the clock. This defense is going to be tested one more time, and it looks like Navi have their eyes set on B. Yeah, they spotted Angel a while ago. 35 seconds on the clock as they do now look to make their move. Mini Boo has rotated into position left. in order to try and support. Aftershock actually sent through just to destroy the trip, but Mini Boo there, as said. They didn't have that expectation of him to just swing that. Now the cage is up, the smoke is up. Now we are going to have to go running straight through. This paranoia does help them a little bit, but it is a slaughter on the site, leaving oh, just no. Sugetsu standing. 10 seconds left. Well, he'll take one for his troubles, but planting this should be impossible as he is lasered down through the pit, and Heretics have brought it to overtime. Well, I'll, I'll give it to them. Uh, one of the questions we had about this Heretics roster coming into today, how do they handle it when th and times get yeah. tough? When they lose a map, well, I'll tell you what, going to an overtime, it's almost as bad as losing the map. Stress here going to be higher than ever. One mistake, and this series you've just fought the last hour to win. The map, at least, it slips out of your hand. That's the thing. I, I think there's pressure when losing a map, but there's also pressure being 10-4 down. That, that's the scenario they found themselves in. Literally 15 minutes ago, they have risen to the occasion. They have shown they could go toe to toe with a great within EMEA. Like the, the core of this team of what? Angel, Xiao. They've been around for a while. Zipan. Going back to the very beginning of Valorant, they've been competing at the very top level. A lot of these players, you're talking about people just last year coming through the VCL system. In fact, well. <laughs> Other than Paddy Tech, who, bear in mind, is not meant to be here. Yeah. You're looking at players like Boo, who are the ones with the most experience. Someone we talk about on Oglu in the past. Like, this is a long, long way from there. Yeah. Top four already within EMEA, competing with a giant. The question is, can Goliath take them down? And last time Paddy Tech was seen on these screens within this studio, this very same space in Berlin a long time ago in First Strike. And he found victory there. Now back on this, the same stage. Looks a little different. This team's not even in our region better. anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's true. how long ago that was. They, they're out of here. But <laughs> to be fair, neither is the, the, the FPX. True. True also. <laughs> we're, we're talking about days where the, the, half the teams have left and gone to other regions. We got the upgrades. To Navi be fair, one of them is like, yeah, Navi. Navi, yeah. The, the big boys. Are we trying to say about heretics? But they were there before. <laughs> like they're, they're not new. They were they were already here. <laughs> nice flash right off rip. I would expect artists to be coming back and well, they threw a few more pieces of utility in just to make sure they know how unhinged this guy can be. Playing against it never easy. Remember going back to that defensive side for Navi. It was opening pick after opening pick for artists on this rifle. It's why you see so much committed from Heretics to push him out of those easy angles. 
Heretics themselves have pumped the brakes, but there are four players now ready and waiting for Na'Vi. They have left Sagetsu on the other side of the map. The thing is, though, Heretics at this stage look committed. They look like they're set on going in this direction. Maybe the expectation is that someone's going to come a look and flash across. It's a bait to give Miniboo the space. But the fact is, Benji's gone down elsewhere. The advantage sitting with Na'Vi. Oh, wow. Chow's just peeked in. He saw them all, but the paranoia didn't catch Patatech. Able to respond quickly. Heretic still in with a chance until another kill is found by Angel, this time through the smoke. Three versus two. Another falling, though. That's Angel over committing. He was in no man's land taking a fight. They know where Zipan is. They've got him boxed in. Trails leading to him, but Patatech falls anyways as Navi come back from what looked like a little bit of a shaky situation in the end. 13 to 12. One more needed to put this to a close and move on to their own map pick. I swear to God, every time they use either Rolling Thunder or Nightfall, somehow they almost lose the round. <laughs> it's like, we're in a perfect position. I'll use my ultimate. Somehow that made things worse. But I, I guess it might just be them trying to make plays on the top of it. As you said, though, getting Na'Vi to overtime, it might be considered an achievement, but for Heretics, they don't want to be left in the footnotes of history. They need to turn this one around and while the success they had was mostly on this defense the fact is though the initial aggression didn't spot anything they are now looking to put that pressure in boo has been forced to fall back but he is still around this angle paranoia in hand is he about to set up mini boo to go for a swing it looks like it and he's found the kill as well oh it would have been massive but for that train back out Xiao maintains control and Na'Vi maintained course, looking for the A site. Plenty of players rotated in on the side of Heretics. This defensive side doesn't want to stand still and let Na'Vi make the next move, though. They're getting aggressive, pushing into the angles oh! and punishing right every peak. Na'Vi tried desperately to save Sagetsu from Mini Boo's grasp. Oh, wow. They didn't think there were two more guns standing ready to take that fight. Only Angel left. 1v3 in this angle, 1v4 in the round. And Oh, zero health remaining. That's a pretty clean conclusion. 13 to 13. Another overtime awaits us. And again, just impressed with the synergy that has somehow been built within this Heretics roster, even in a shaky climate. The support they had, the flashes, the stuns that they used alongside it. Mini Bushu Shaga. Pardon me, sir? Pardon me? I don't understand if, he, if they were calling narrate that, but uh, a bit more shaggy, I suppose. <laughs> wow, that's uh, definitely my favorite coach mic so far. <laughs> oh, that's going on the soundboard. Mini Boo already off to a, a poor start. Didn't take the advice to heart. He's out of the round. And we've got a four versus five for Navi. 13 to 13. Defense has been good. Opening picks by artists have been nasty, but they're going to avoid him for now taking things elsewhere. But without that star entry, without that space taker, they're going to struggle to get into a site. The Say on. that. The drone will give things away. That's where Sagetsu will immediately switch his gaze towards that B site, put a snake bite down, smoke on it as well. It looks like they're just going to disrespect it. Maybe a hard read coming through. They've obviously got to destroy the trap that was set up by Ardis, but it is just going to have to be a full retake. We already mentioned the post, but the fact that Xiao has already managed to find one, the close angle, he's not actually seen him, it doesn't matter. Benji wins the fight anyway. They should have the information either way. Advantage sits with Navi, stays there. Main is there, sight seems to be to Rian's. Oh, oh, he's hit the shot! Reset after the flash, but it's Angel to close the round. I was believing in that clutch. What a reset from him. But 14 will be ultimately in the hands of Navi. One more to push this across the line. And the worst thing is, you know, we talked about a team like Heretics. How will they manage a defeat? If they lo lose after such an extended map, those are the ones that sit with you, that sting the most. Well, this is where Navi are going to take themselves a pause give a chance to the coaching staff, Doom Bros and Latex to come up with something. 
Or even maybe just to let the youngsters stew in it a little bit. Leave them to try and think of what's going to come up next. How can they adapt to whatever Na'Vi is going to be throwing at them? Because that's it. It's been a defensive-sided match so far. 8-4 on both sides. Defensive rounds across the board when it comes to what we've seen so far in overtime. Obviously, still early days just yet. Again, so many players that we can highlight, but there hasn't really been a weak link within either side. And at this stage of the game, that doesn't really matter anymore. It's all about getting those rounds. Yeah, that's it. You can come in at OT, not pop a single kill, but you're taking the space. You're playing your role. All the pieces of the puzzle need to fit together. And for Heretics, now more than ever, this is their map pick. Breeze doesn't look fantastic. I think the favor more so towards Navi there. It is Navi's map pick as well. They've got the stats to work with. And for Heretics, I'd still be afraid of players like Miniboo there, for sure. But we don't want to see them go in one map down. Not like this. Navi 14 to 13. The timer started ticking away. We're about to see the barriers go up for what they could be one more. last time. There. Bring them down. Again, just this information set up. Miniboo not shying away from the fight. Is he really going to keep going? You have to feel like he's just going to sit back. He has support from Big Bro to try and deny anything more. One way is going to go up again. Be a little while before they have another smoke available to them. And actually, Na'Vi are going to try and play off the back of this stun. Is good. It's left onto Miniboo. And it's just going to be the trades. Both teams coming out even. A little bit of extra damage done onto Angel. And Paditek instead has to fall back, leaving what it will be is just Benji over on the other yeah, side of the map. Yeah. And it seems like that may have been the plan all along for Na'Vi. Definitely in one sense. I think the idea is for artists to try to find that space and take the pick, right? Like somebody's got to be peeking eventually, but Benji is steadfast. He is held. The camera just looking towards main or market, pardon me, while B main is covered off by these traps. He doesn't need a peek. He sits in the corner and waits. But once he's spotted, that's where trouble comes in. We're going to see Angel move through and probably destroy this camera. That's when the utility comes through from the rest of Navi. Calm down. Where does he go? Benji now knows there's enemies everywhere. Good first to start onto Artist. Reposition around onto the site. And Angel's even left the market angle, grouping up with his teammate. It's Zipan and himself. 45 on Angel. It should be an easy fight. And with the headshot to Zipan, this round may just be tied up in a neat little bow. No need to peek for Benji. 12 seconds left. No time for Angel just yet. Good shot to start. Plant going to be attempted. Going to be stuck all the way. Oh, but the nade stopped it. Despite one kill, he can't quite correct in time. 14 to 14, Tom. We're going again, round number 29. I was scared for a second that that was going to be that push forward from him and just yeah. neither player would be ready for such an aggressive peak. But again, uh, you mentioned him already. On this defensive side, Benji has been a menace that Navi have really struggled to deal with. Still trying to catch up to Minibu. It's been a challenge throughout this match so far. Back to the attack. I feel like that is going to be the deciding factor. Who is the first to get that attack side round? Well, it's going to be that first attempt. Already go, go, go. stunned up, blinded, everything thrown at the side. Benji. Heretics, he's waited. Oh, oh he's giving it away. Lucky that Artist gets out of there. He sticks around for the fight. I don't know that Benji's chances are that good. <laughs> but luckily, he's gone. A reset on the anchor. Time now bought for this squad of Heretics. The space retaken. They're forced back off A. It's not bad really to trade out the paranoia considering navi don't have the control you know if artist was now pushed up on b main and had had that position as he did before benji's a uh, little bit of a challenge or if he was pushed up on a main fair enough you know worthwhile trade but now there's valuable utility missing from the side of navi utility that's had a lot of impact in late rounds through. i think that was an attempt to destroy the trap but it's failed so they'll now know that this angle is still going to be covered. And more importantly, they're walking into that operator. That has been such a devastating thing throughout the game so far, especially on defense. Good utility to force back artists, but he's not dealt with just yet. And it's looking like the retake. Now, every single round, Shao seems to be able to find a kill above these smokes. It's something that heretics seem aware of as they'll now get back into their afterplot. 
Viper Orb was up in market as well. Navi weren't able to keep the Viper Wall in play to block them out fully, but that's okay because they're recharging up those toxins for the retake. And Mini Boo tried to get ahead of it, but Artis finally gets that opening duel late into the round. The fight hadn't come through, and so there's still lots of utility nade down. That's going to buy some more time. Navi want to fight forward, want to take control over main. TP through by Xiao has not worked. And the defuse, they're attempting it right now. It's a brave attempt with a body block as well, but they have found their mark. Doubled up on it. And the lead now for Team Heretics. For the first time, a chance to close out their map pick. And Tom, they get to do it on their defense. This could be it. Yeah, uh, I, I think just being able to get into these sites and these B-side post plants have been sublime for the side of Heretics. It's not just a young squad blitzing their opponents with aim. They have ideas, they have plans. <laughs> and they definitely have fans. In the droves. <laughs> That's fantastic to see the Heretics community showing up and, well, the roster certainly What's living up to the hype that they themselves have created because when people saw this team list go out, there wasn't a lot of hype drummed I up. No one fun. said, oh, that's it. That's it, it's Madrid a, it's a down, team, baby. Team for the future. Team exactly, for the future. yeah. Maybe in a couple months, uh, maybe a year with some roster changes, add in someone else. It could be great. And definitely not with a stand-in. No, no one home was standing no. there going, yeah, you know what? Panatek's going to come back, and he's going to make it to Masters. That was not something that people had on the cards. It's still not done yet, though. They are a very long road. They haven't even taken that first map, but that is the goal. It's aggressive. A push forward. Oh, a react by it just started the beginning of the end, leaving just one man standing. Artis, he's been great so far in this game, but on the attack, there is little to be desired for this side of Navi. Spike recovered. Panatek, maybe a little bit overzealous, is going to give him a root, but already hit by that second pulse, leaving him on 70 HP, nowhere to go. Drone, he's gonna try and push it. The spam oh. actually dinks up, re-ends. But even still, I think it might be too little too late. He needs to do a whole lot, and he does manage a couple, but it's re-ends. The man sat at home looking to send Narby home as Heretics, after a huge comeback, take map one. Well, that was their map pick. It wasn't easy. That was a bit close, wasn't it? But they were 10-4 down at one point, Tom. This Look squad was looking moves. down and out. And they managed seven to come all the way ones. back. <laughs> for Mini Boot and seven for Artis. Well, he's been matching him pound for pound. Kills, <laughs> first buzz, <laughs> all the same. Been... What is that? He's mastered all the elements, and now they've mastered Sunset. On to Breeze. We'll see if their wind is under control. Off to a break. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Let's do something crazy.
get a bit wild today Cause we don't do this every day And we deserve it Life is so amazing Nothing is in our way Baby, let's fly away Do you feel it? Is your heart rushing The way my heart's rushing When you take it all in We're getting closer and closer. Only one more game. We are only one best of three away from the Masters. Now is the real deal. Let's go! Just one more game. Start that was for Team Heretics. I'm now joined by Harmi from Team Liquid in the streaming booth. First of all, Harmi, welcome back to the new venue. Uh, what do you think of the place and what did you think about that first map? Uh, I think this venue is way better than the last one, especially for the uh, watch parties. We have way more space, more monitors, so we can uh, invite more friends. Uh, I think Wright did a good job with it, and I think the fans also like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely love it as well. I can see what you mean by the space. Now, I want to talk about this match because you played against Na'Vi last year when you subbed in for Team Liquid, so you're familiar with this team in-game. Hey, you did all right. I remember. You did all right. Uh, so what's it like to play against Na'Vi? What are they like on the server? Um, it was actually pretty hard to play against them. We lost twice, 13-11. It was um, close. It was yeah. very close. Uh, I think we could have beat them with a bit more practice. But overall, I think they're a great team and they have uh, high potential. High potential enough to maybe come back on Breeze and uh, go to Madrid, you think? Maybe, but I mean, Heretics has Benji Fishy. 
Yeah, let's talk about Benji, because you know him way back, right, from the Fortnite days. So uh, what's he like and how proud are you to see him uh, out there? Uh, it's actually pretty cool to see Benji Fushi. I uh, know him from, from like four or five events in Fortnite. Uh, I saw him in San Diego. He <laughs> actually destroyed me in San Diego, unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, to I'm just brought up the two times that you lost once against Navi and uh, against Benji as well. But uh, where, where does your alliances lie? Are you rooting for Benji to go to Madrid? Or are you rooting for Navi to go to Madrid? Uh, I think I have to go with Benji Fishy, even Ooh. though I like Navi. Oh, any any Benji fans out there? Are you agree with him? Okay, there's at least one. There's at least one. Uh, thank you very much, Harmi, for joining me. Have fun with your watch party, and let's see if Benji indeed can make it to Madrid. Thank you very much, Yinsu. Harmi, it's a pleasure to have you back. Please feel welcome, and we need to jump into Breeze. Lothar, are you surprised at what you're seeing? Um, uh, there's a small change. I mean, first and foremost, incredibly excited to see Yoro and Yoro action. That's uh -huh. my jam right here. Also, there's a small change in Team Heretics from their last composition that they played already with Wooden Reigns in the team. They played the Chamber. Now mm -hmm. they go into Cypher, obviously, because Cypher is incredibly strong on this map. Uh, the B main trap is such a nuisance to deal with, but both teams have the servers to deal with that now when it comes to Na navido their yoru is we have seen it's incredibly like very defense based for navi because yep. they play him essentially like an operator uh agent to a very high degree with fast rotations with the tps and they have a lot of set plays uh, again with the omen as well on the defense something that we didn't see like a lot of variation when it comes to the attack Okay, now Heretics is only one map away from making history and getting to Madrid. Now for Navi, it's been since 2022 that they didn't miss a single event. What is it going to be? Only Tom and Mitch know the answer. Well, I know that you know the answer, Tom. Go ahead. Huh? Share it with the class, my friend. Uh, map three. Oh, yes. I'd be inclined to agree. <laughs> Based on what we saw so far, close map one, Navi, good stats on this map, good form coming into it, but we talked about Heretics. If they lost that last map, a 16-14, a long map, maybe it would affect them. Maybe you take yeah. the wind out of their sails, but for Navi, they're now in that boat. I know they're capable of bouncing back, Tom, but uh, see if they can control the wind. I'm they're used to this. They, they, they always lose the first round. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to Navi. Literally, they did it against BBL, right? Yeah, day one BBL, they get banged out and then win the next two maps, 13-6, I believe. So we'll see if that's the case. Benji leading the charge, already looking to get that plant down. Not the agent you'd normally be going for the plants on, but... I guess it's more important for them just getting the round over the line. I'm also just looking at where Miniboo is. I assume he's got some way of getting there a little bit faster because this is ridiculous how long of a rotation he has. And he's actually going to end up fighting Sagetsu in mid. This is such a weird round and he wins the fight as well. The gate crash was put out as you called it into question, Tom. It's been used successfully to pull him back over towards A main. And now he's going runabouts, walking his way up to middle. I mean, he's not afraid to run the clock down, that's for sure. Diffuse still not attempted. A Team Heretics funnel out of the choke point, and Miniboo grabs the last kill. His flank finally coming to fruition. A good round for him. Honestly, it just like looked like he was in a death match. He's running around his playground. So what I have just witnessed is a Cypher lead the charge yes. into the site. Uh -huh. as a Yoru hard lurked on the other side of the map. Yep. Questions? And, and by the way, when I pointed out, he had not put the TP down. He put it down as I said yep. it, which was when they had already had the plant down for what, like five seconds or something? Roughly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Questions? Problems? It worked, Tom. They won, so what do you say? Bit weird. <laughs> bit it weird. is strange. And we'll see what on Navi's attack that they have a little bit of a different idea on how to use that Yoru. Luckily, Mini Boo is able to get out of there on time because he was almost severely punished. <laughs> uh, you see the trick, but you don't quite know how it worked. Like, just about got away from that one. Or is that angel? Uh, that was aggression inside him in. Standing ahead. Yeah, that was the one sort of, like, I think they played the map really well, but that was the one criticism I had. Now, in this round, it doesn't matter so much, but Angel playing that controller super aggressively, even one round dropping the spike out onto the side. Now, bear in mind, they had basically won the map at that point, but even still. Believe us. Yeah, and if you recall back in the day when he was doing these things, it was always the brimstone that he would play, and for good reason. 
So I think realistically, you know, on that Brimmy, we interviewed him a ton of times. He would always say, you know, you, you just call down the smokes, throw your stim, and now you're a duelist who has got a Molotov. Uh, it makes sense. On Omen, though, refreshing utility. We saw, just think back to the last map, those one ways that Boo was putting out consistently, allowing them to keep control. I, I think that's the element you're missing. But you gain something special with Angel, which is even if your entry is dead, your entry is alive. Good chance for Zipan, but yeah, swinging through the wall, it was being watched. Unlucky. Two versus Spike five planted. and damage. Still the name of the game, but uh, well, they're on hard difficulty with these weapons and here with heretics having all the control. No need to peek, ranged angles, and numbers to play with. That's how it should go. Oh, they've even guessed where Shao is. Well done. And the Lucia flawless in round number two. And it is, it's more of a golf clap round. You know, these are the, the ways that you should see these rounds go. You don't want to see Team Heretics losing too many players. You don't want to see sloppy plays or massive advantages cleaved out of a player hiding in a corner. This is just patience from that attacking side. Oh, after that flawless, it, it did perfect for the side of Heretics because now they get to buy back in with those rifles. So that's normally what we kind of expect to see saving over a few weapons, but it means that this purchase is going to be a pretty hefty one. Oh, an early aggressive push, a bit of spam damage done. And Arda's already going to have to be rotating away here. Xiao is in a great position. Hasn't actually been checked, but eventually he will fall. I think maybe a little bit of a jump scare for Zagetsu. Instead, they're hightailing it back towards the B side. Well, Angels just found that out the hard way. A quick kill onto him. The B side is lost. The TP's in for easy cross. Okay, well, it's easy cross if you just take the players Five down, planted. I suppose. Navi left in a two versus four and a chance to possibly fight their way back through. Have a chance at putting around on the board. They're not going for it, though. You know, because it was a chance. It was a risk. It was a gamble if they were to, to commit. Instead, it will save those weapons, both rifles, to be carried through to the next as Team Heretics don't really seem to be hunting down. Great success already on this attack side. And we mentioned, like I said, Long game on the first map. You lose that out. But if you're Navi, you look at it through the lens. If this was Heretic's map pick, now we're going onto a map where we're extremely comfortable. 3-0 down. That comfort starts to be removed a little bit, but there's still plenty of time. Let's not fear monger just yet. For the side of Navi, we know that they can put those rounds up when the rifles come out. This is a hiccup, a bump in the road. But this road could get very bumpy very quickly if they let Heretic's continue on this path. Minibu four and zero, Rian's three and zero, two big players from the previous map. And to be honest, I can't really point to anyone that didn't show up. I think Boo didn't have the same sort of ACS as we've seen before. He wasn't as engaged. They won the map. I don't really care. Yeah, exactly. Like I also feel like for a, an Omen sort of controller player, you can't really That's expect sunset. them yeah. to uh, drop crazy kills, unless maybe you're like Vania over in Game Changers. She consistently does it, but other than that, unlikely. But a good start for Heretics. And as said, like a lot of what we've seen so far from the side of Na'Vi has been really impressive defensive sides of Breeze. For now, at least, that start for Heretics is a flyer. Mini Boo already looking to put the pressure on. Of course, the way our playoffs work, there is no lower bracket. There is no second chances for Na'Vi. They lose this map. They are out. Heretics head their way over to Madrid. I love the ideas early on. We've already seen a paranoia used up by Angel in the first couple seconds of the round. And this was the pressure that Miniboo put on inside of A main. They then delay, I and mean, you can see they had a recon as well as a flash yeah. set up from both Patatech with the flash and Rien's with the recon. But they decide to change direction, move towards the B site. Now, this is all great. They've burnt utility. What they haven't done is seen this man sneak his way down into a frankly ridiculous position. Gate crash timer's got to be running low, but he's made it. One kill, and he's out of there, just like on his chamber, but a little bit more ludicrous of an angle. The spray down's good as well. Rien's is low. The flash and the TP from Minibu gets him one. He's got to do so much more from this corner and surrounded nothing will be found navi with a quick response to team heretics three to one we go 
And I'm surprised that there's always, it seems like Ardis is at the heart of a lot of these scenarios, just being able to put up numbers where maybe he shouldn't be able to. And just left. the initial space taken, similar problems to what they had versus that chamber as well. Although I, I don't know if you can be too upset about that one other than that. Xiao with a couple of good trades and a little bit of an early response. Now the ults are starting to come online. Mini Boot is going to have that dimensional drift, a chance to really take space and look to combo a lot of what they have with it. He is using it immediately, straight in towards this site, already spotting out Angel. Trying to get the information on the rest of the players. Panatech has gone down, though. And that decoy was well and truly spotted with the numbers on the attack thinning out. And the flash is already burned up for Mini Boot. Someone needs to be the hero this squad desperately needs. Good flash, though. Or, well, lucky flash for Benji Fishy, I suppose, because it might have caught him, but it sent Angel backwards as well. Decoy on its way. Not going to be given any respect. Benji Fishy bypasses it, takes a fight deeper. Now there's a gate crash coming. He's seen it. He's heard it. He knows where it is, and it's destroyed. Swinging out for a fight. He knows there's a player close, but Zipan will still land the shots first. In all the meantime, Mini Boo has managed to jump up top, find himself an angle, harass them a little bit, cause problems for this side of the defense. And they're breaking through into a stacked up set of players, weapons drawn, aimed, ready. And the timer already ran fully down. Heretics done, have done an absolutely fantastic job of pushing and pulling this defensive squad on the way back through. They gave them no space for free and punished them every step of the way. Four to one. Let's see how Navi respond. That's looking like for a second. Maybe things would get a little bit shaky in the middle, but it, it's this man Minibu again. He just causes havoc pretty much all the way through just being behind them, being back on mid, even lurking. It, it doesn't necessarily play to the, the norm of what I expect to see from a Yoru, but I'm definitely enjoying it. And well, evidently on the other side of things, Na'Vi are not. They've had that one sort of blip round that they've managed to steal away from their opponents. And other than that, it has been all heretics. A great start across the board. And well, as we've already mentioned, this could quite easily be Na'Vi's last map within the tournament, unless they manage to turn things around. Now, okay, financially not the best position, but again, Ardis has got that dimensional drift combination as well possible with the Hunter's Fury. We've seen how deadly that can be if they get it in the right place at the right time. On the other side of things, Null Command and Hunter's Fury both won away. So even just playing the orbs in this early round could be enough. It's dangerous when the ult economy is that close to tipping over for the side of Heretics. You know, obviously there's a risk associated with going for any of those orbs uh, on that attack, but it's certainly a lot easier to get it done versus the defense. Now we've seen from Na'Vi aggressive A main control, particularly Angel throwing out his paranoia whenever he hears players close. That's not where Heretics want to fight. Instead, we can see they are ready to blitz into this B site. There's no going back. They've got traps to cover aggressive pushes, but for the most part, this is going to be a commitment towards the B site, a possible mid split. They're looking for it for now. But I like Navi's idea as well. The fact that they send these players down through middle to try to take this control, it could give them another spot. Oh, back. no. Well, <laughs> not when they're caught with a smoke in hand. That's definitely going to hamper the progress. Uh, they've already got the information on the other side as well. Zephan's going to try and pop this Hunter's Fury, but he's found absolutely nothing. And in the meantime, Minibu has taken that space in towards the site. After plant, seemingly inevitable. And for the side of Navi at this stage, okay, you've got Ardis with his ult. That might make things interesting. I was going to say there's a, a small chance of him using it, but now that Zephan's found a kill, it might just be worth the risk. He's retrieved a weapon as well. The rifle in his back pocket. That's going to spawn him, spur him for forward, I should say. Flash two in hand, ready to pop around the back. Decoy thrown out. The steps are being made. Flash is off the wall, and he's out. No, he's not. Another flash to play. And here he comes. Shorty in hand. One found over to the rifle. But the players on Heretics are not giving up control. We've been on board with Artis while the rest of the team was thinned out and dealt with. Mini Boo finding his third to close it. And five rounds now sit on the board. Navi have burned up a pause. This is their map pick. So even though Heretics get to decide what side they start on, and we could write home about this attack side, say, oh, it's the best attack we've ever seen. But Tom, if Navi had the choice, I think it's fair to say we might have seen them start on the defense anyways. 
Yeah, with how they've been playing, it, it really... I, I feel like compositionally, it would kind of make sense for them to go attack. And it would yep. also be a very Na'Vi thing to just yep. pick your less favorite for side sure. anyway, but... Nonetheless, five and one. And then the fact is they use one of their ults, the Dimensional Drift, because of how close that retake ended up coming, and they didn't really get much for it. Still three players survived. Financially, no problems for heretics. And they are just disrespecting a lot of the, their opponents, at least in terms of their map control. They've just walked right up mid. The same can be said for their pressure already put in towards that horse position. Utility taken away. That means the artist's escape plan no longer exists, and neither does Xiao. It's a little bit labor, but a mini boo is anything but another kill for him. Benji goes down being aggressive, though. It's a 3v3 scenario, but the time now ticking in Heretic's favor. If I'm not mistaken, mini boo just put out a gate crash there, is sitting 12 kills and one death. Not bad. Uh, for right. a start, let's see if we can double up those deaths. Well, he's coming close to doubling up the kills in just a matter of rounds. Ult already popped. Info for one, Careful info here. for two. And now what more is there to do? Sagetsu's already very low on HP. A clean shot out of Padatek. And well, Sagetsu doesn't know where to look. Minibu with a fourth kill of the round top. He came into this 10 kills and one death. Now 14 and one. This is genuinely outrageous behavior from this young gun. I, I think the thing is the 14 kills, impressive. But considering he's playing as like that entry and well, I would say about 80% of rounds. <laughs> That's the energy The fact that he's only say. died once is truly ridiculous. Absolutely demolishing the side of Na'Vi at the moment. And while still waiting to see what the response is, Angel's going to go for a hero rifle. We've always said that with these Euro comps, sometimes things can become a little bit more expected. But the fact is, it's the pace. That's what's coming up for Heretics. Straight through they go already. Leading the charge. Well, you guessed it. It's Miniboo once again up close. Just doing so much what? damage. Even a headshot up to Artis through the wall. Okay, his teammate's utility definitely helped a bit. But he's still got to land it. Yeah, it's just the fact that he looks so calm when he goes into a site. Every corner cleared, every fight he needs to win, he wins. Even fights he doesn't need to win, he wins. Miniboo is one of the most impressive talents we've seen now. debuting at this level. That's the crazy thing about it. For all the jitters and nerves that must be there, I don't know if having your brother on the other side helps out. I don't know what his secret is. <laughs> but teams need to study this guy. 23 HP on Angel. Zipan's got nothing to do. And it's Mini Boo. A third kill. You can actually count one. the rounds he doesn't get a multi kill <laughs> on one hand. It, it, just uh, how do you I feel stop like at this, this point, guy? it might be zero. It's 17 <laughs> and one, Tom. Of course it's zero. What? He's just unreal. He might have had a, a round. Look, he's had some rounds of three or four, so he must have had a round with one. Wow, one <laughs> round, kick him, get him out, put Weber back in. Tommy, you're fucking insane! <laughs> well, I don't think those were the coach mics, but... Uh... No, 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 what you don't know is Weber is an excellent ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> Great at accents, I gotta say, he's doing a fantastic job. Masking that UK accent from earlier. <laughs> another, he's a man of many talents. Another I'll talent to be way. studied, <laughs> oh, I'll tell you that. Wow, send him to Hollywood. Seven to one. I might as well make out. movies about Miniboo at this stage. I want to see more from this guy, and we've got many have. more it's rounds called coming. Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, with the abilities of a, of a predator as well, he's teleporting around. He's invisible at times. He even create clones of himself. Two Miniboos on one server. No. Does Time that just make jump. a boo? Maybe. Spike retreat. I don't know how many boos you have to divide to get a mini boo, but at the moment it's looking like a mini boo might be an ironic name, and he's actually much bigger because there's frags on the server. We were saying it's between them at the moment, one and two. I, I can tell you who's number one now, and I don't need to look at the stats. 45 seconds on the clock. Already the information being found. Artis is gone. His impact was paramount in the last two times they played this map. He has been silenced. A peek through is expected, but Angel, what? Win the first, and I don't even know how he's seen that second. Looking to try and take the game into his own hands with support from Xiao. Leaving things possible, but now Rien steps up. Turns out Miniboo might have just been stealing his frags all along, because now he's on for the ace. 
Xiao, if he can get close, that pick could go up. But it's a little late in the game to be worrying about that, especially with Xiao down. Sagetsu, one more to put it across the line to double Navi's round count. It has been a really tough game for this defensive side. It's not getting any easier. I thought Panatech had the kill. It's trigger discipline. It got the better of him. The Sagetsu's got it in the end. A second round for Navi, a lifeline extended their way. But they need many more. 7-5, the best score possible at the half. Well, they're a long way from it. Yeah, it's still a very real possibility of a resurgence. Both halves, 8-4 in the last map. 30 seconds. So left. it's Players definitely standing. not over. And I don't think Enemy. Na'Vi are a team to give up in any of these sort of scenarios. You don't have a man at Angel at the helm and never be in a position where you could lose the match. The fact is, though, I do think Na'Vi fans are going to be nervous. The, the other question is, can Minibu keep this up? Because he's 17 and 2 right now. If he goes and miss, maybe this game turns. Well, that's it. I mean, I think it's fair to say most of the rounds have been uh, found through his hands, through his plays. There's ridiculous success rate in finding control over these sides. They don't attempt to do it yet again. And the opening Where's is Angel yes. standing. I, they just, they, they've given up mid and he's just stood in one of the only angles he's open to everything with a smoke in hand. And now, well, they can just swarm onto the site. There's too many people to even aim at. Rians has now come up with a triple, but Navi look lost. I'm truly lost as to the game plan there. It's a, I want to say a small gap, but it's a pretty big gap to leave wide open. Even saving this weapon seems next to impossible. And there you go, Benji puts that final nail into the coffin for Navi. We talked about a chance with that previous round, a way back in, and they lose it to that, to just contacting up mid. And, and as well as that, add to it, they put the poison orb up. It's not like this was just dry contact, no util. You're, you're hearing that, you're seeing it with any mid control. With even a glance from Angel to the right, he'll see a poison yeah. orb and think, okay, we haven't got control but, there. I but just that blind side. They have done this multiple times. Like, it's not like they've been completely avoiding mid the entirety of the game, and then they've just gone, oh, that's a surprise. Like, this is something they've been doing throughout. We've even seen spam being put through the cage on mid or the yeah. orb on mid or whatever it is to do damage to those players. So the fact that Angel just seemed to be in complete no man's land, it is definitely a worry. And I, I think a good time for Na'Vi to take a pause. Because as I said, we've seen 8-4 already within this series for both halves of the first map. It's not a death sentence. But if they play like that, maybe it is. And I think you have to look to the fact that heretics are making Na'Vi uncomfortable, that you see those mistakes come through. Those are mistakes that are in existence in Na'Vi's defaults, right? That's not one of the plays they've practiced on a server. Yeah, guys, just leave mid open, honestly. 30 seconds, they, they barely even get up it. it. That is somewhere that they're trying to make the adaptations to play a little bit out of their comfort zone, a little bit out of their shell, trying new setups, and ultimately that leads to gaps. And you don't do those things unless you're on the back foot. 8-2 down, or 7-2 as it was. It's where you want to try something different, but that hasn't worked out. Navi now left with nothing, just a few pistols. As Heretics, their economy is sitting pretty. Ultis are coming online. And we're in the home stretch of this half. Two rounds left to compete for. Double digits still possible for Heretics before they even touch the defensive side. Uh, they haven't been sent much in towards the B site. It's mostly been this A site takes leading the charge. No surprise. Minibu already taking the space. There's a quick Spike flank planted. coming through. Now Angel is going to be able to bypass this trip, but it would leave his teammate out to dry. He's hoping that maybe... <laughs> Maybe someone gives him an aggro, never mind. So, that, that's the ultimate bait. You just walk straight into it. That's how you fool your opponents. Artis instead, he's yeah. looking to try and get his teammates' information, but the fact is they're losing every single battle, and he might just have to try and get out of there. Left alone, he's going to get absolutely nothing done. Angel is the only one to find the kill, make it a second. But his position is just not one where he could get any real value. It would have to be massive mistakes, and while well, flashes, fragments, you till being expended. A bit of an overface in the end, but the time had already ticked far too gone. Nine to two, Heretics making this one look easy. And well, at this point, I almost feel like Navi are relying on curses if they're going to make it to Madrid. It's not over yet. They're still alive, but they're barely breathing. 
This side of Navi on the defense has fallen to pieces. I don't know what I can realistically expect to change in this last Connect round. Nine down. to three. The building blocks will barely be forming the foundations. At least they have that Viper's Pit to play with. It will be activated just in time. At least locks down one angle for this squad. Again, Poison Dangerous off. being mini boot, capable of bypassing it. Capable also of popping his ultimate, the human recon dart, to reveal them. Rien's one away from finding himself the ultimate himself. The Hunter's Fury combined with Mini Boo. Well, Portal that could certainly cause a headache for Shao. My ult is ready. I think that's what they're going to do. Oh, they're stepping back. Maybe wanting to wait a second. Oh, is, they have definitely seen broke. that. Well, they're actually just going to destroy it, not try and play with it at all. Clearly having their own plans in mind. And to be honest, they, they don't need to rely on getting an entry kill on something like that. They've been fantastic at breaking their opponents apart. Viper's Pit's locking down an angle, but they are very much waiting around it. And the fact is, support is a minimum. The one thing that could get in their way is Zipan with that Hunter's Fury. But this bait has worked perfectly. Shoulder fake, move players away. They're hunting for where Xiao is going to be removing him from that pit completely. Already they've spotted out Zipan as well. He's getting picked up by utilities, being pushed by Minibu. It is sublime from the side of Heretics. They have thought of everything, even leaving Panatec behind to catch one on the rotate. And then the Viper's pit comes on as well. I mean, this is a textbook round for Team Heretics. The way they pulled the map, the lurk they left, the ultimate, the taking the orb into faking A, putting their Viper wall there, flashing out, and then catching these players completely unaware on the A side. There was no way that that was going to work out. Ten rounds for the side of Team Heretics. A roster that coming into VCT had the respect of almost no one. Expectations couldn't go any lower. Bottom of most tier lists, and here they are, showing that they might not only be able to go pound for pound, toe to toe with some of the best teams in the world. Remember, Navi, with or without artists, take your pick, five international events in a row. And now Heretics debuting with some young talent. One of them not even being able to make it here in person, and they are close to going all the way. In fact, it's unlikely Navi get anywhere close to a comeback. I, I think you have to look at it this way. A team like Foot, I would say, took one gamble on a youngster. It's arguable that Heretics, well, made four gambles. They, they made a gamble bringing Patatek back in. They made a gamble after last year with Boo. Uh, everything could be seen as a risk and... Well, it looks like they've hit green. Everything on point, but... Navi are never out. It may seem that way at this point. They've started off the pistol with an opening onto Minibu. This is where this composition could be a little bit more difficult. They've proven it in the last map that they can Boys still thrive with the likes of Benji really stepping up from that defensive side. But for now, at least, they sit at a disadvantage. There's only a minute left on the clock and there's no control to the side of Navi towards the safe side. It's been fully pushed up by Heretics. As the defense is going well to start with Patatek on one and an awkward fight. Boo is traded eventually and that removes most of the utility that they're worried about on their way through the site. Easy plant found and well that flank that came through earlier on to push through halls, it's at least found one. I actually thought Benji was going to be spotted. Zipbound was going back to check it, but a well won fight and a chance now for this squad of Heretics. This pistol round, I mean, it would surely seal the fate of Navi. Heretics would be just steps away. Three rounds from Madrid already. But Navi still have Xiao and Sagetsu. Sagetsu, though, might be caught off guard. Never mind. The fight taken first. Rienz is spotted and dra almost traded out. He didn't even get the first kill. Benji now surely doesn't stand a chance. The time too low with two players left. And a quick shot from Sagetsu seals it. Navi, they're not out of it. But they're certainly far behind. Yeah, I, I think for the most part, they're going to have to have a huge step up across the board. And I almost feel like on the other side of things, Heretics would have to just start feeling that pressure now. They, they didn't feel it when they were 10-4 down on the last map. They didn't feel it after they won the first map coming into map two. 
But maybe somehow, if it just came out of the blue, that might help out Na'Vi a little bit. But I wouldn't be holding my breath if I was a Na'Vi fan right now. Still, though, this round is not going to have much. In fact, it's not yeah. going to have anything. Just classics across the board for Heretics, just saving their money. They've got such a huge advantage here. I, I don't mind it at all. The idea to stack up a wise one. Numbers advantage on A for Heretics. Numbers advantage on B for Navi. Because they've chosen the right side, at least for now. Mid push. Blitz into B. Bypass the main choke point. The main utility, which is where a lot of the problems can be, right? Players tucked in on B with shorty, stuff like that. Well, this route up through mid and into the site, you completely avoid all of those close range angles. You're never really expecting someone to be at the wall taking a fight with a shorty or anything like that. And the wall gives them so much control. Decoy baiting in. Benji's done well to hide for now. Good kill! What? what? Two for Benji! Mini Boo's got another! The nade's forced him back! And it's actually killed Angel! Sagetsu's last alive and I cannot believe what I'm pistol. witnessing! They did nothing! They didn't invest! They thought they were playing for the next round and instead They've only got one kill between them. They can just hide. And an 11 to 3, 18 seconds, rifle for Benji. No need to peek. No need to give Sagetsu a chance. And with 45 HP, he barely stands a chance on his way in. I don't Eight there's seconds. Time. There's no time. Picked up a rifle. One kill. Close, but Benji. Too good from this position. He had a classic. And he killed three of them. For Navi, if you weren't feeling the pressure, if you weren't feeling out. You will now. That is ridiculous. It's, it's such a nasty setup. They, they just put Boo's screen down so that they run through it. They take some damage, wow. and he can just right-click both of them. It's a setup that relies almost purely around them doing exactly what they did. Of oh, well. What do we discuss, Tom? What do we discuss? Oh, look, they're going mid, Tom. They're avoiding the choke point, Tom. They're avoiding the corner <laughs> where the guy can sit with a pistol and kill you, Tom. But they didn't do that. They ran into the corner anyways. No. I mean, you had to clear it. I guess you had to clear it. Oh, that's tragic. Spike. That is absolutely tragic for the side of Navi for Heretics. Hey, two rounds from Madrid. The off the back of Classics. And now, well, Navi don't get to do the same trick, hide in the corner and let them push you because uh, they're on the attack. So these two rifles, Angel and Sagetsu, are going to hope that Artis can open some space up. Maybe remove some of these traps by putting a bullet in Benji's head, because he's been a real problem for this squad. Formation's there. Artis. Ooh, he takes the risk. He doesn't really get the space he was hoping for, and now getting spammed down. Now, Haditech has taken a lot of damage in response. Down to just 5 HP. And somehow this is a much better opportunity Banavi in this round. Xiao just going to try and expend some of those snake bites, try and delay as much as possible. Paranoia still available as well for Angel. Big paranoia. I mean, it's not being followed up on. Mini Boost still finding the kill, but a snake bite on Padata. Some kills coming their way, and look how quickly it falls out of their hands. Just to get to. With, oh, okay. I, I actually thought he killed the first guy. Mini Boost on five health. Everybody was low. But unfortunately, not low enough. 12 to 3. I, I can't believe I'm going to have to listen to Uli talk about this for the next three years. We are 12 to 3. Navi not losing this series like we accepted was a possibility. They are being shut out of this second just, map. They're my pick. Just to put it into perspective. Boo last year, the only man there for the whole year. The team finished right near the bottom in the regular season. They bring in Benji. They finish last in LCQ. Rub it in. They bring in Mini Boo, Rienz, and obviously Woot from the tier two. Woot not old enough to play, so Panatech comes from the tier two as well. Yeah. They play their first tournament, and they are one round from being in the top two with teams in the EMEA and making it to an international event with the majority of their players at 18 and 19 years old. This would be one of the most ridiculous things, one of the biggest upsets, and one of the biggest surprises I think we've ever had in EMEA history. For now, they need just one, and they come in with the better buy. They come in with matching ultimates to the other side. 
Boo's the first one to come under pressure. I say that, Angel is almost dead already. Oh, they changed direction, but they haven't caused the rotates they think they have, Tom. There's still three players here. We can see Mini Boo in position. They know about him with the decoy. And they know about him with the shot as well. Good connection by Artis. But an immediate response. Shot dart through from Zipan. Numbers stay to Navi. A fantastic recon that's cleared out. Nothing. Don't but me. on the upside, seconds left. he doesn't have to take a fight. He can take his time now. Let his teammates reroute. He'll have a recon up in a little bit if he can stay alive behind yellow. The retake attempt, Benji, Fishy, Patatech, and Rien, some utility, both flashes for Patatech. Still a nade to work with as well. And a nice opening shot. Zipan's down, numbers are even. Oh, he's gonna get tight. He's gotta be panicking right now. 45 HP on Sagetsu. And he's being revealed. They know exactly where he is, but he's still able to win one fight. Thinning out the numbers, the time now ticking away. Navi seem to have this one in the bag. A big play needed, and time is of the essence. Perhaps even needing to stick it to half already. Half it's going to be attempted. Standing. It's body blocked, but Panatech now alone. And Chow's just about to swing through to finish the round, keeping it alive for Navi. Eight in a row, one hell of a task. <laughs> if anyone could do it, it'd probably be them, but at the same time, we have not seen the same Navi that we have witnessed throughout the tournament. The FPX. They managed to win themselves a Masters. Seems like a, a long, long way away. And right now, the new blood of Valorant leading the charge. Rian's going to invest into the Outlaw, a judge for Boo. This is definitely not the best purchase, but at the same time, you can see he's playing close. You don't know what he'll get away with after what we've seen so far in this match. Angel's in trouble. That's the Outlaw looking at him. It has a gap around the smoke as well, and it's found its mark. Angel down to the new gun. The damage would have been enough, but the kill removes a very valuable piece of utility for Navi. They haven't put their Viper wall down yet, though. Still the potential to change how this map looks later on. And they're left. Navi don't have much space to play with. They are making their way up mid, but again, the cams from Benji just spotting out all of that information. A cage available to defend himself, but maybe he doesn't need defending. With the snake bite on him, he gets aggressive. Goes for the peak, the flash through. He's perfect. The shot's not so much, but he's done the damage anyway. No trade just yet on the shout, but even still, only one man standing. Sugetsu to try and save them. With 40 seconds left, the run through coming in. He's, he's actually committed a full spray in onto the fake out. The jitters, the nerves, as he has to try and do everything. The information there just to try and find anything. But the problem is 20 seconds left. He has to get onto that spike. And heretics, I they are not over committing. The they are not over facing. They are showing that resilience. They are showing that team play that we've seen throughout. Ten seconds and now left. they look to retake together. It's a formality, surely. They know exactly where he's planted. They've been boxed in. And fittingly, Mini Boo's the one to deal the final blow. This VCT rookie is going to have all eyes on him as they go all the way to Madrid. Fair play if you saw this coming, because this is a surprise to everyone in the Valorant scene. Heretics, the Spanish organization, will play in Spain. They started off as just two brothers coming into this tournament, and I can tell already there is a brotherhood being built. So many storylines, so many players that have come through with expectations are minimal. You talk about Benji being that guy from that other game. Well, he's just made it to a Masters before many other people will have expected. Boo coming back after a season of lows to the highest of highs with the first Masters under their belt with his little brother to boot. Panatech coming back from the tier two, a man who's been there and done that, but fallen back down into that tier two scene now makes it all the way back up and i'm sure other teams are going he's just a sub right i could i could maybe pick this guy up and rians may not be on the block right now but an 18 year old superstar that is rising to the occasion and yes mitch you're never gonna hear the end of it Uri's <laughs> a happy man but so am i benji and the boys boo and his brother panatech back on top what an absolutely wonderful squad, and there'll be no doubt now 
a fan favorite that's going to take the stage over in Madrid. And they've eliminated Navi. Five international events in a row. Yeah. Artists back at the helm as well. But they're not able to do it this time. The new blood best them. Well, that was the thing with this team. We were sort of looking at it going, OK, Artis is back. We can't really make the excuses anymore. This had to be a standout size, and it hasn't been. It has been heretics today. And now we're going to be heading off to the interview with Sue. Thank you very much, Mitch and Tom. I'm now joined by Paratech. Uh, congratulations, Paratech. It's been so nice to see you back in VCT MEA once again. This is like a homecoming, I feel like, uh, for you. So what's it been like to play this tournament and to uh, make it to Madrid? I mean, it's been insane. The support from everyone, like taking stage was always my dream and like qualifying to Madrid. First major tournament for me. I've always dreamt of it and we finally did it. Yeah, you did. You did it flawlessly. You didn't drop a single map, yeah. uh, which is really crazy. Now, there is a lot of uncertainty, you know, with visa issues and everything else. Are you able to uh, tell me anything about that? Will you be playing at Madrid? Yes, I will be playing in Madrid. Nice, Spinatech. Uh, how does that feel? Because it's been such a long time. You used to dominate EU. Nobody could beat you back there. And now you get to go to a big tournament like Madrid. Um, I've, as I said, I've always dreamed of it. I've worked really hard for the past four years. At the beginning, it was a different game. We are owning everyone, but meta changed. Everyone adapted. Everyone started to learning the game. But now, finally, I got the chance to prove myself, uh, to play on the big stage, and we just did it. How did you get back here? Because it would be very easy for somebody in your position to give up, maybe, and not getting those opportunities. So uh, what was it about this game and about your mentality that you feel like allowed you to come back to the top? Um, it's just hard work, like all I'm gonna say is just you need to work towards your goal and just be professional at top of it, like hard work and being professional just get, got me here. And uh, last question, a lot of people didn't respect you guys, you know, I've seen the tier list, I've seen the, the people saying that this roster wasn't gonna make it, so what would you like to say to those people that you proved them wrong? I mean you put us in the D tier list, I think we're S tier now, yeah? Yes, that's right, that's right, they are. Uh, thank you very much, Fanny Tech. Congratulations thank you, sir. once again. Thank I'm you. very, very happy. Good luck tomorrow, by the way. Grand final thank coming you. up thank uh, you. as well. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere because Fnatic will be taking on Carmine Core right after this. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this.
that with a vicious. Killing the odds, I'm leaving no remnants. They all in the tennis. Gotta go big, I ain't for the fences. It's mine, I sense it. Back in the scene, I'm back to the business. Back on the front line, gotta grind. It's time that you be the witness. At the time, turn a repeat to a 3P, yeah. Got the franchise on me, you more like G Lee, yeah. 21st century, you all the way BC, yeah. Old boys been washed up, I'm not stuck in TT, hey. Came out the room like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, I land on the moon. Who step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood, they up in the fuel, my land in the tomb. historical moment that was team heretics they pull off a huge upset and book themselves a place for madrid masters i'm your host Su, and i'm back here with kakuka and lothar kakuka 30 seconds glow go do your thing this is your stage this is amazing thank you for everybody that believed in in this happening what we saw today on stage was just a little bit of what is awaiting for us the rest of the year congratulations to such young players i mean mini boo has been fighting for this since 2021 in 2022 and throughout 2023 as well. He was top one in Casa and this means a lot. Are they winning Madrid Masters? I mean, with the crowd back, of course. <laughs> That's how it works always, yes. right? But uh, for know. me, this is the first upset of the day done. The second one, we'll see. But also Benji Fisher is an incredible storyline for me. When he started specifically for tier from tier two and went to this team and they are now in an international tournament. This is absolutely amazing storyline. The performance from the team was phenomenal. Some nice strategies and in general, just a pleasure to watch. But also, they're in the grand finals. We haven't seen Heretics in a grand final since like 2021, maybe? First since strike. then? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's what I mean. So it's going to be a really big moment for the organization as well. And I do I like that you mentioned Mini Boo because for me, best rookie in the world right now, hey, I'm going to put it out there. And I think teams should be scared to play against him in Madrid. It that was some awesome, nice Euro gameplay from him. I like the shoot me, shoot me tactic in the Viper Spit. He has incredible stats. Uh, but was it boring fair, at all? Yes, exactly. <laughs> that was perfect Valorant, but was not boring, right? And also before this map, he actually had less ADR than his brother. But after this maps, uh, those maps, I'm thinking he has way better performance than anyone right I now. I think he doesn't care about the numbers. He cares about the fact that he's in Heretics, he's with his brother, he's going to Madrid. He made it out throughout this tournament without dropping a single map so far. He qualified to Madrid with uh, with his new team. And the fact that he played throughout all these matches without being able to fist bump. Yeah. Somebody fist bump him, I beg, somebody. It was like a but phantom he was screaming fist bump, for all you know? of them. Oh, yeah, so and also, as you heard from Paratech, he will be playing Madrid. It has been confirmed. Uh, we like that? You think that's the right call from them? I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like, you went all this journey um, with Paditech, and of course, we know that the visa situation is not easy, and we don't know if Woods is going to be old enough, or if he even has, you know, his visa before he turns 18. So, I think it makes a lot of sense, and he's earned it. From an oh. organizational perspective, I feel like if you're not already 100% uh, certain if the player that should be playing is not playing, then you just go with what you had so just far. Just like the chamber. Right? If you didn't like him before the chamber, exactly. play it now. Exactly. It's a very I, good comparison. I mean, here we go the stats. This is to um, beat Na'Vi, by the way, to 2-0 uh, Na'Vi of all teams. Insane. 178 damage per round. Remember also, he was opening space for the team. So, and this is overall insane performance. 
Yeah, and I'm so, so, so excited to see how uh, Mini Boo is going to do in Madrid, also in the grand finals uh, tomorrow. But now it's time to talk about the second match of the day. As you guys heard from our analysts already, an upset again, potentially, because it's very much the same storyline. We have a team in Fnatic that always went to international events, and then a team, Kukuka, like Keiko, that only went to lock in because they were invited. They've never actually made it to a Masters. Yeah, exactly. We need to change that number to Heretic soon. Is at least going to be Yes! <laughs> Let's go! But exactly, for Fnatic, it's not only that they have that international event experience, they're also the winners of a couple of them. And they're like, you know, the golden child of EMEA. Everybody that is an EMEA fan is a fan of Fnatic. Fnatic, a Fnatic. Except for Keiko fans, because... <laughs> They're, they're, they're are very fans. vocal today, on the social today. media, <laughs> very vocal about their support for their team. And it's like a very, very big disparity when it comes to the, uh, let's say, how big the communities are. But Fnatic still is the, well, I would say most consistent, well-respected team on the planet, in, at least in my eyes. And I always expect them to perform well. And even though coming into this tournament, like we know that there might be an upset happening. I don't think anyone in their right mind will say, yeah, Fnatic is not taking this uh, one. Yeah, but this is uh, th this will be I mean? the upset, right? Yeah. To end. The one before, yeah, that was an upset, but this will be like the upset to end all upsets. And uh, we have a very interesting stat here, I believe, Bea, you gather, because if yes. you look at how many minutes both of these teams have played so far, what does this tell us about the potential anti stratting and mind games uh, both N and Elmer Putty could be playing with coming into this? Yes, exactly. You're seeing it in the, in the screens right now. I counted the, the minutes because I think it's very, very relevant right at the top with 652 minutes played just in kickoff is KC. Fnatic only need one only needed one game and in those two maps only a hundred minutes that is more than six times the gameplay from one team to the other. Now Fnatic is not only that you have very little tape on them they know everything that needs to be known about KC but they still have to see it on the server. You know what's funny is that Fnatic only has over 100 minutes on the server time because of the ridiculous Lotus like yeah, the overtime yeah. and that's about it. Otherwise it would have been mm -hmm. like around 80 minutes. Yeah. It's crazy when you compare the amount of experience that KC has right now on the stage. I mean when you think about it is that actually a good thing for KC because I think it is. Of course. There's, there's How is it a bad thing? Yeah just make a conversation here it's like the amount of Fnatic doesn't want to spend even a, a little bit of more time on the service as you said the counter trading it's something that Fnatic doesn't want to show on the other side KC with the, the new players they need to gather the experience but I think they're getting it you you see how they progress from map to map they get into more confident uh, more complicated strategies mm. and they do actually better executions of them specifically on like split there was a progress when it comes to how they play with the Yoru and the Astra combinations they were not clean on the first map. The second time they played it, much better. Yeah, I can't wait to see the mind games as well. It's going to be great with the coaches. Uh, and speaking of mind games, earlier I had a chance to speak to two former teammates, Magnum and Boaster. Take a look at this. Oh, what a time to be alive. I'm taking you guys down uh, a trip down memory lane with two former teammates. It's Boaster and Magnum. Uh, welcome back. Now, I'm going to stir the pot a little bit. Of course, you guys used to be on the same team together. Magnum, today you have the chance to do the funniest thing ever, to knock out the team uh, that ended up uh, kicking you uh, last <laughs> year. So what do you think about this? Uh, and also, how much of this opportunity are you going to take? I think it's cool, but to be honest, uh, I don't like think about this. It's another match for us, and uh, either way, it's a win for us because it's a lot of experience and we get to test ourselves. But it would be, I think your time is over. Like, you want to <laughs> let, let me play as well on the stage? So, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to do our best. Yeah, yeah, give it to him. Uh, what do you think about that? How do you respond to that? I think that's fair, you know. Um, it's a it's a win win for me too, you know. Keep the throne. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, I feel I should just leave and let you guys go back and forth and nah, have a I mean, battle. I mean, I'll wait for your next questions, I guess. Okay, well, I'll I'll make it a more of a wholesome one. Um, how nice is it to see one of your ex teammates like Magnum to be able to develop and make his way back into a VCTE and MEA and to make it this far as well? Uh, it's really nice. Uh, I think. Personally, from all my teammates that I've played in, with in the past, I think Magnum was the one where I thought he could come back from, obviously, and leaving our roster. Um, yeah, so I thought you were the one that would, had the most potential to come back just because of like how hard you worked and uh, how you thought about the game. So I think it was just, uh, obviously, situations happen. Uh, Alfie became free agent, and it was just, just unlucky timing. Uh, is this a wholesome rivalry, though? Do you guys still talk? Are you still friendly? Uh, what's going on? 
I mean, we talk sometimes, but it's not always like, like as much as we did. It's like there is no time to be honest. Like that's it. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched his games when he was in Apex, you know. So as, and I also watched the finals, but. But it doesn't matter anyway now because he's here and he's playing. And, you know, I thought Carmine Corp in scrims, they were probably one of the, the better teams in scrims that we played out of some of these VCT teams. So I always thought that they would actually do a decent run. And, you know, here they are today playing against us. So I'm just looking forward to playing against you. Oh, and, uh, you've, having a good you've one. scrimmed each other. Okay, Magnum. Yeah. Does that feel like an advantage? Maybe you know their secrets? No, not to, not, <laughs> not to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I think it's good for us because like the boys know uh, like uh, there are all five human and yeah. they know they do mistakes, but they play well as well. We just need to. It's uh, another opponent for us, so I think that's like good for us that we scream. Oh, thank you very much, boys. You want to give a handshake, hug, anything? Yeah, we want to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Best of luck uh, on the server today. And let's see which one is going to com come out on top. <laughs> oh, the mind games. We're in full mind game territory. Of course, they scrimmed against each other in Kukuka. Magnum yeah. saying that they are five humans. They do make mistakes. I feel like that's the kind of confidence you need against Fnatic. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think that this is probably one of the keys to Cake of Sussex, one of many of them, is the fact that if you have screened Fnatic and you've screened them a lot, you're getting the top of the notch here in EMEA. So if even Boaster is able to acknowledge, wow, they're actually doing everything very well. Plus on the other side, you have a Cake Corp saying that they are human, that they are beatable. Many teams do not look at Fnatic the same way. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they use our confidence. But of course, we talk about mind games, we got to talk about N. We also have to talk about maybe his former enemy as well in Mini because uh, Lothar, the one time they wanted to qualify for Iceland, Fnatic knocked N out. The second time they wanted to qualify for Iceland, we had that split game. And once again, uh, Gambit at the time, M uh, M3C were denied. So it does feel like at least Mini has something on N. Well, I, I would say that in general, Fnatic is a team that you would expect counters the opponents the best. And now, combining that with the information that we also know that they are screaming against each other, I feel like still Fnatic might be coming on top. But Aang, I would say he is just dreading the teams so well when it comes to personal performance. So even though Fnatic might counter them in the macro play, I feel like Aang's ability to drill those fundamentals into KC might be the most important aspect. They should probably just think about themselves instead of how to counter Fnatic instead. I think that also, uh, you know, and steering away a bit from that, we, we know the Eng versus Mini. I wanna, I still think that we need to see how Elma is going to be Fnatic uh, different, not mm -hmm. because you know he's going to make them lose, but because we need to see that next step for, for Fnatic. We already know them as a team that is able to go to internationals, to win the trophies. If Elma is bringing something new to the team, it's the moment to discover it. Yeah, especially considering they scrim each other, right? They have mm -hmm. tapes on each other. They know what they're doing. Uh, I agree with you. I think it'll be interesting to see anything new that is brought to the table. Because after the first game, Lothar, I feel like one of these like older teams, if they want to actually make it through competently this time, they need that depth. <laughs> Look, from Fnatic, we have seen Ascent and Lotus. Oh, like we didn't see that before from them, right? We have almost no information of how this Fnatic actually is going to play in this year. So for KC, having that scrim uh, experience probably gives them an insight on some maps that we probably have not seen so far publicly. Yeah, and also this man on your screen, a, a screen even right now, narrate. We saw what Mini Boo oh, no, could no, no, do. No, 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 no. Oh no. Uh, we saw what Mini Boo could do to Navi. So is it narrate's turn? Is he going to be the one to stop the uh, the, the dominance of Fnatic? You By the mean, way, great stats here. Le narrat. Because now he's playing in KC. Uh, they call him narrate. Narrate. Yeah. Narrate. Okay. yeah. This one's good. Anyway, he yeah, good. Exactly. He's good enough. In the stats, he's got the US pass for the total chaos. But more importantly, as we're seeing right now, the agent pool, the depth that we're seeing from this players, from this import, is amazing. And it tells, uh, it tells a different story within the server. He can not only play for himself, but I think that he's a brilliant support player because that's what you get when you have three duelists, right? You move them to one of the support roles, and he knows exactly how he would like to be supported as a duelist. I loved watching him when he was playing Reyna on Ascent, when he was actually like a part of the strategy he felt like he's exactly filling the gear that is needed to move the machine towards the success that they they needed on that map and i feel like also kc like they needed a player who feels that confidence when playing his uh, his own agent and he can propel that team forward and also i think he he is literally beloved by the kc fans right now 
Yeah, I mean, the, the Scooby-Doo memes, I'm so <laughs> here uh, for it. But do you guys think the offset? We're going to pull it off very quickly. I would like yes. to see at least one map. After after the more than 600 minutes, please give me one map. I I think it's going to be 2 zero for Fnatic. All right, we'll see indeed Boring. because Heretics have already secured their one spot one. at Madrid. And the grand finals tomorrow. It's time to see who will be joining them. It's Fnatic and Carmichael. They need no introduction, but we'll give them one anyways. The Kings of Valorant back on the EMEA stage. Welcome, Chronicle, Leo, Durka, Alpha Yair, and IGL Boaster. And now for the challengers from France. They started at the bottom, but now the whole team is here. The underdogs wanting our hearts. Shin, Tomasi, Nare, Martin, and IGL Magnum. And now bring out the coaches, the brains behind the brawn, Elma Putty for Fnatic, and Aang for Carmine Corp. Today could be a day of first here. It will be a first time in a very long time. Fnatic don't make it to an international tournament. The first time Magnum go head to head with his former IGL. And of course, the first time Chronicle going up against his former coach in N as well. We have so many stories, uh, but similarly to earlier, Na'Vi very much felt like the villains. Hey, let heretics just go to Madrid. That's what everybody <laughs> wants. And I feel the same way in this matchup. Everyone wants to see KC make it. Yeah, exactly. Because of the story, because of how they've grown in our hearts in the past weekend. And, and, and a bit. And also because I know that the KC fans would love to come to Madrid for a week. Oh, oh my God. Can you imagine that? That's going to be amazing. Uh, but let's have, take a look at the map vetoes here. Uh, Lothar, it seems like Sunset and Ascent will be off the table. Yeah, well, that makes me happy. I've seen a lot of Sunset in the past. And also, first one, Fnatic selecting Lotus. Not really a surprise here. KC peaks defense, which is surprising a little bit because mm -hmm. that map is still, I would say, attacking base. And now Split is being the map of um, uh, uh, for, for uh, KC here. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, Fnatic bans Icebox as well, Kakuka. I don't yeah. remember the last time they don't want to go towards Icebox. I was Icebox. literally going to say, I was come it's on, just a, just a little bit. Come on. Yeah. Okay. But, but you know what? I'm very happy that we're going to see this map. Uh, I think that the fact that Fnatic is picking Lotus again after the really, really close overtime that they had against Vitality, where they started a, a little bit cold for what Fnatic has been in the past, I think that they want to make a statement. Hey, we saw the issues, we're going to address them, and if we want to make it to Madrid, we have to be clean about it. But at the same time, talking about the reps, talking about being prepared for a tournament, maybe trying else, maybe trying something else could have been the edge, because obviously there's only two maps in which KC has tape on you. Lotus is one of them. Yeah, I mean, they also had a lot of reps from KC. We have seen KC play three times on Lotus. Those were ways. Yeah, Fnatic obviously only once, and they didn't change much from the from, from the past. And I'm still looking forward to the next map, because those two, we don't have any information mm. on Fnatic. But Lotus, I'm expecting right now Fnatic to fully understand how to play against uh, KC on, uh, they're going to be starting on attack, right? So attacking when they know Magnum typically likes to play an A with that is something that if not, might just completely expose. Yeah, nothing wacky either. Uh, Kaku, I feel like the only time we haven't seen anything too uh, crazy here. But what do you feel? How do you feel about Carmichael choosing to start on the defense? I mean, I think that it has to do uh, uh, with how comfortable they are in the mistakes that they have fixed already, and probably because they want to. If Fnatic has prepared something new, they would like to see it from the beginning. And, and if you're, it's going to take time for you to adapt onto it, it's better to do it from the defense. And then when you get to the attack, you're also warmed up. You can also think round to round. Also, they very play very confidently on C mount on defense. That's something that we've seen from Shim in the past. In the first 20 seconds, he likes to play the mount control with the Omen being very aggressive and then TPing out if there's something like massive happening there in that area. But with that map control and then Magnum playing on A, they set up pretty efficient rotations as well. 
Yeah, I mean, we talk about overtime. The last time we saw KC here and the Ray dropped 40 kills because that overtime was so long against Foot as well. Yeah, exactly. But now he's going head to head up against Leo. This is like the Titan. This is like the final boss of the region. So, of course, it's not going to be an easy one, but they are definitely prepared for it. Yeah, we got so many good games here today and also another treat for you guys at home as well because the one and only Pansy is back here in the Riot Games Arena. Take it away. Uh, also, Tom's here as well. Hey, Tom. Well, look, Tom never leaves. However, I am back. I'm I could now. not miss this matchup. Fnatic, by all rights, Tom, should have this in the bag, right? You, you think about it logically. They've shown so little. It's all been looking fantastic. This roster looks untouchable, but there's something about KC. There's something about this roster that makes me nervous. Yeah, I'd, I'd say first <laughs> off, the fact that we're starting off on this right, map, right? <laughs> it's like you're, you're going to their home turf. You're trying to beat them on their front doorstep. And well, KC don't look like they're shying away already going aggro. We'll see what happens with it. Again, it's, it's kind of, you know, testing the waters, getting the lay of the land here. Slow and steady to start with, cool the nerves, calm themselves down a touch. Again, it's very easy to fall foul to Fnatic's greatness, right? That idea of what you're playing against. But let's walk oh. towards Alpha. Proof pertinent. Fantastic start for Shin there. Can they make the most of the rest of this, though? Keep your eyes on that spike. Yeah, Fnatic don't realize right now the C site is completely under their control, Locking but here. maybe wanting an advantage back. They're going to fight everyone. Yeah, this is just going to be a brawl, right? Leo's here, though. Everyone's ready. That was a fantastic bit of utility work, though, to stem the bleed, to slow down this KC crunch. You can see them starting to drift back a little bit here. Tomasi watching that cross. Does he catch a glimpse? Oh, it's more than a glimpse for Shin. Another body added to the count, but still. Bolster puts the bow on it. And it should be fine in the end, joined by Chronicle there. This is Fnatic dealing with a very unorthodox start. Yeah, I, I think Fnatic, that's the thing about their attack sides, though. They've always been fantastic at quelling a storm. Like, the amount of successful sort of retakes of control, like, they are very happy to give up rubble, and then they'll take it back with utility. Like, they are very good at the push and pull of this map. I think that's why they are the best in the world at it. So for KC, they had success in the initial aggression, but then they lose it. And that's going to be the difficult thing for this game is knowing when to fall back, knowing when to retreat. And in this case, I think just knowing when to play retake and allow Fnatic that control. Yeah, it, it is going to be that test of time as well, because we, we know that Fnatic, no matter when you get that advantage, don't start. Don't start. Why are you laughing at me? I know. I can see it. I can see the Pause Technica. You, you made it through one round. Yeah, you, you disappear for a few days. Everything uh, runs smoothly. And then uh, what, you kick out a cable or something under the table. You don't know what I get up to. All right. I've got I to get my airtime in. You know what I mean? This is contractually obligated at this point. But yeah, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take a second or two. Oh, look. We wheeled Stevie back out. You know it's a bad one when Stevie's back out on stage. Oh, bloody hell. Stevie, how you doing, mate? Oh, there, he's doing the little warm-up routine with him. Mr. Motivator down there. Oh, you know. Can we can we show a little bit of Stevie as well? We should just have a camera on him at all times, to be honest. Stevie cam would be fantastic. Mm. Uh, we will get a little more serious. We can get Mitch to just walk around with it. There you go. He can he can do something. You know, I have to work both games, so why can't he? Are you saying it's hard work to work with me? Is that? That's quite. I'm gonna get beaten up. Can we get the camera on me for my own safety? Oh, the safety? audience are joining in too. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's magical. Nice work, guys. EMEA known for fantastic wrist action, apparently. <laughs> not touching that one. <laughs> Probably <laughs> best let, not to. Let, let, let Probably that one best hang. not to. Um, but yeah, let, let's kind of talk bigger picture as well. We can kind of be a little bit serious, tiny little bit for a second or two uh, while we wait for you know, updates as to what's going on. Um, in reality, the, the thing, the ability to beat Fnatic is a very small club, right? It's a very exclusive club of anyone yeah. who's been able to do it. Loud. Yeah, pretty much. There has been the occasional, you know, weird result, the liquid result last season, but call it what you want with that. Put it in context, it wasn't yeah. as much as you'd imagine. I, I, I don't know if Carmine Core are there yet. I think everyone's been really impressed with this roster. Sure. I think they're super dangerous. I think everyone's in love with what Narade's been doing, uh, Martin. Uh, so many of these names are just jumping out to you. I think everyone has you know, found a player. They're like, yeah, they're fantastic. That's my guy. That's your guy, exactly. Um, but, but getting it all to work together, at that same time is brutally hard because even at its worst, right? If Fnatic has the worst game possible, there's still the bailout factor, right? You still have take your pick of player, 
who could have that standout game. We even saw that versus Vitality. Like, yes. it, it, I don't think it was anywhere close to Fnatic's best game. Nope. But then you had an eco round where Boaster killed three people with the Sheriff. You had a round where, with the Stinger where Alpha at range manages to kill two people. <laughs> As You're you going to get, like in the last round, a Chronicle 2K while he's facing off against both people at once. Like, yeah. They have so much depth in talent and also in ability. Like, you've, you've got that coaching staff behind them. Maybe a, a newbie on the block, but Boaster a lot of the time doesn't even need them it seems like he has so yeah. many ideas of his own and then you also have to look on the other side okay sure you've got those young stars they've had the run of their life they've actually had losses and managed yeah. to come back from yeah. them that's the big thing but you have an IGL who used to be on the team that he's about to play against and yes. there's the argument of oh he knows how Boaster plays but I feel like a lot of people have claimed to know how Boaster plays and then still lost I, I mean that's still pretty well the biggest benefits is that yeah. the system is so robust that it can still work even while knowing what they're doing, right? Yep. I mean, but also I'd say last year and a little bit of this year is still the year of the coach, you know, the people behind the scenes. And we don't quite know the depth of that with Fnatic to an extent yet, right? We haven't yep. seen them push, we've barely seen them play. The desk was doing a fantastic job of showing literal minutes of playtime. And we just haven't seen what that looks like when called upon. Yeah, it looks okay for now, but who knows if that's, you know, a massive increase of capability. I mean, Mini was a godsend for them. I don't think anyone's yeah. going to dispute that. But we don't even know that layer yet to Fnatic. There's so much more to be seen with this squad. And as I said, with such little tape on them yet, it's all up in the air. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we did get a little bit of a nod earlier that this may take a second or two longer, so we might even be able to go back to the desk. I'm not going to say yet. You know, not yet, <laughs> but there's a chance, Tom, because, oh, okay. you know, you haven't you haven't done enough yet today. No, no, they, they don't want me to just solo a desk. Is what? that what you're trying to say? Or maybe they do. Maybe they do. Maybe that's... Okay. I don't mind giving it a go. I, I do think, again, the other thing that's truly terrifies me with Fnatic oh, is, is just the Sorry. fact that mm. Boaster has basically been given six months. <laughs> Yes. Like, this this is a guy who cooks up weird stuff when he has a week. Imagine I love imagine that you weird give him stuff. imagine you give him a few weeks. I How know. weird it must get when he I gets know. to like four months. It's like what new stuff can I even do anymore? But I, I miss the mad scientists of Fnatic as well, right? Because we, we what about Navi? Mm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but I do miss that era because they were so creative. You know, there was so much going on there. There was so their much they were coming up with. Was, oh, I love their fracture. Yeah? It was just like ridiculous after plants of just like, okay, I've got 16 lineups ready to go. And then you just sit there and watch them all land. You go, yeah, that's cool. Oh, <laughs> oh. It's, it's one of those things that obviously with the schedule we have, you know, this is just... Uh, kind of a battle of attrition sometimes for the yeah. top teams, right? Your event to event, back to back, it's very hard to be creative. But with that downtime, we actually have had a fair amount of maybe rebuilding here. However, that's enough from us. Uh, we're going to give you a little bit of respite from me, myself and I, and obviously Tom. We're going to head it back, back to the AD. Thank you very much. I am so happy Pansy is back. I was going to say so we missed happy. this. I yeah. What, took, what, did it, what did it take? One round? Honestly, yeah. It gives us more screen time. I love it. Thank yeah. you, Lauren. I appreciate this. Uh, but we've seen one round already. I feel like it set the tone a little bit. Bit of a weird pistol as well. Uh, Lothar, you and I were kind of looking at each other like, is it over? Have they won? Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at, at the pistol in case you guys missed it at home. Yeah, it was, uh, what I really like about this pistol round is showing that KC has a lot more flexibility than they showed. Sorry, they have a lot of flexibility from what they have been previously showing on Lotus. You see that they are very aggressive on two lanes, on the mid and on the A push at the same time, which will be their downfall, but it's something <laughs> that was not shown in the previous uh, matches. So Fnatic couldn't have like predicted fully that this is going to happen. So that's nice uh, to see. But overall, Fnatic is also very patient. They're just waiting for what's going to happen here, and they even like lose the first death here. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, I think that the Viper Wall is going to be so important knowing that there's two of them and how you use it on the defense and how you have uh, that control over Rubble and over A is going to make very, very difficult changes. But look at what's happening here with just Casey just going on to Fnatic, going on the hand as this if they're paranoia, the one attacking. Though. Yeah, this paranoia was, yeah. was huge, was huge. And the counter paranoia was a little bit late, late. so that... Because that, that, you don't expect it, right? Yeah, that counter spell there would have been just insane advantage if it would just been done a little bit earlier. But in general, I really like the way that the teams just completely read each other in the mid round. Like Fnatic goes to mount and they'll be like, wait, 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 there's no there's no signs of life on C. Be aware of potential pushes behind us. Then they are ready. Jake Boaster with the paranoia just you know him like that. It's okay. You yeah. can say Jake. Yeah, yeah we're close. Him. So we're, yeah, yeah. we're close. No? <laughs> so um, he, that's that paranoia single-handedly decides that moment in that round. That, that's the pivotal moment, and you can see how flexible both teams will apply the strategies against each other. Yeah, I feel like in moments like this, we can see that maybe Casey wanted to take the upper hand in this round to just dictate the pace of how the game is going to be. You're going up against the best. 
of the best in the region. So of course, maybe this is the way that you want to start the game, you know, just, just setting the rules on the table. But the way the Fnatic react, and maybe the way that Casey also overheats after getting that first kill, because they could have perfectly just gotten that first kill and get out of there. Get yeah. out of there and just play the rest of the map. But no, they decide to go all in uh, onto Fnatic. The problem is that Fnatic is the team that is going to react to that. Yeah, also the first pistol round Fnatic has won, you know. Uh, they didn't look well, great in the pistols at all the last time they played. They only played four pistols. And so they lost like... all four. Yeah. So 100% lost. That's rate. don't lie. Yes, that's don't lie. Um, I do have an update for you guys at home. We uh, loaded into the wrong server. The online server was uh, used during the Team Heretics game, of course. So League officials will remake to play on the offline line server and the score line will remain 1-0 to Fnatic as we get back into that. And for those of you that missed it here uh, on the pre-show, we talked about the, 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 the patch update, the new patch uh, that we're playing mm -hmm. on, of course, as, uh, as we'll that's reveal. The, that's the server that we're loading in. Yeah, uh, it's the, of course, the fragging IGL patch, the fragging IGL <laughs> meta. Uh, I think, uh, uh, unfortunately, we, we've had to park it for Angel. I don't think now. he loaded in the patch, you know, so that... <laughs> didn't update his PC. Yeah, I... Uh, mm, but, lucky. I mean, for, for our remaining IGLs, you know, Boo yeah. has been fragging out of his mind as well and we saw uh, from that pistol on the last time Fnatic play boasters doing well uh, Magnum also has been doing well yeah except for that one unfortunate <laughs> we, map. Fo we already forgot yeah. don't bring it up yeah yeah yeah, we did no but it's okay I think that it, you know the, the the good thing about Boo about feeling comfortable he led the team he led heretics uh, with the qualification to Madrid without dropping a map so you know it's definitely the buff is definitely there for, for him we have to focus on the other side I think that we you know, have a very small sample for for today. What we can see about the about the maps is that really uh, Fnatic needs to iron out mistakes. I love that they start like this because I know that against Vitality they were a bit shaky, they were a little bit out of place. And Fnatic is not the kind of team that is going to get nervous on stage because if anybody has experience, it's them. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back a little bit from to Magnum as well because even though he had that one very unfortunate map of going 0-15, he still has decent stats. Why like, did you bring it up? I'm not bringing it up because <laughs> it actually looks pretty decent apart from that one map he has 100 Wait, which one which part from what for, for, we already <laughs> forgot about that one. <laughs> so the, yeah. he has 137 ADR on average, including that one map mm -hmm. when he went 0 15. That showcases. Wait, which, what, what happened on that map? We, we, Wait, we don't know. We don't know. Oh, what okay. Happened. Yeah, carry on. 30 ADR. <laughs> Why do we keep bringing it up? Poor Magnum. Carry on. Carry on. Sorry. So in it's general. It's happened to all of us, okay? I, I think the patch is actually like really, really boosting his performance in general. I'm yeah, pretty impressed with Magnum so far. He's doing well. And of course, as we saw in that interview, he was given it. He wasn't like, oh, this is uh, my former IGL, mm. bit of but he was like, your time is over, it's my time to shine. And it could well be uh, if he has a good performance uh, for today. But quickly as well, let's talk about Alpha year, because I think uh, when last, uh, at the end of last year, I think he was probably in contention. Uh, if, if not the best player in the world, definitely top three on everyone's list. Uh, what do you think about him coming into this season? He's washed. I'm just I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Clip. Yeah, no, I think clip. I think he's 18 now. You know, like he's, he's too, old. 18, he's yeah, too, too old. old yeah. Too old. Too old. I mean, the younglings uh, and Team Heretics are coming for him. You know, so mm. that's that's how it is. Exactly. So he's too old for them. But uh, I think that is very um, easy and difficult at the same time to highlight players in Fnatic because they have best in slot for almost everything. Um, going back to uh, a boaster saying in the interview, oh my God, you know, Magnum, you were good, but Alpha became a free agent. I can't you believe know? he said that. I actually <laughs> to can't his believe face, he said that's that. the kind of thing that. You yeah. just, to a friend of a friend, or even to Alpha, like, you were so good. Is, that's I gonna got make, my form, my team That's for gonna you. pump up Magnum. I feel like if you say it to his face, he's gonna get really, like, uh, fired <laughs> up, no? Because he also says it with a smile, you know? Yeah. Luckily, he was not in an apple, probably saving that for the map, Vito. Uh, but also, another player, Chronicle. Again, it's very easy to talk about this players because Chronicle is the one to always deliver. I know that he had a couple of bad performances at the end of the year and he didn't feel like the Chronicle we all knew, but the performance that he had the other day, close enough, the clutches, close enough, the individual situations. In fact, one of the um, rounds that I had ready had actually Chronicle in there, but we didn't, we didn't play it in our marvelous game of take the defuse, no, get the defuse or take the L. Uh, all right, okay, we are experiencing, I feel like, a slightly longer tech pause than usual. I mean, Lauren hasn't been here in ages. I feel like it's only fair we give her a proper uh, welcome home. Now, uh, if you guys at home want to play along, I made a quiz, and I actually made this quiz for um, Steel when he was here, um, but I'm going to put you guys to the test because... <laughs> we have to honestly, cheap a copy here, right? 
Uh, yeah, honestly, when uh, when Josh was here, I wasn't quite sure how much of EMEA he really knew. You know, I wasn't quite sure how much of our region, he, he the history of our uh, region, the ins and outs of our region that he really knew. You know, so the I made a, like non-existent. Well, I made a quiz and I was like, maybe <laughs> if we have time, I'm going to test him. I'm going to see how much he does know. But you two are the experts of EMEA. So I'm if I put so you here. if I put you through a VCT EMEA quiz, I am expecting you to do pretty well. You have some whiteboards there. I no, feel like no, school again. No you know, cheating. No looking at each other's answers. Uh, you guys at home play along as well. Again, I'm fully expecting Sliggy. I know you're watching this to get full marks. So let's start um, with Don't a very easy question. This is super easy. I'm going to ease you in uh, now. <laughs> Who uh, was the first strike champion at EMEA? I'll give you a bonus point if you can name maybe the first strike champion of uh, Turkey and CIS as well. Just just in case uh, you were I really... I think it was... Just in case you were really on the, the and knowledge. And the last one was... Was it the, the obvious one or wasn't it? Hey, I'm it's, gonna... it's a quiz. It's a quiz. This market smells really <laughs> strong. Oh, don't show it yet. I don't think Lothar is ready. I don't think. Uh, no, I have two, two already written. Okay, well, I'll let me, we have time, so maybe I'll give you like ten more seconds to think about the bonus potentially. I Are you guys at home play along as well? Because I want to see uh, how well you guys really know um, EMEA as well. Okay. I can remember five, Turkey. Four, three, two. One. All right, let's see. Right, so well. the uh, first try EMEA winners, Team Heretics, correct. I said Heretics, mm -hmm. and I ma named Paura first because I thought we were going to have to name like the entire lineup. So oh, we feel free to name the entire lineup. That's the other. Uh... Oh, I can do it. Wait, can Go I? Go on. Uh, so it was Lowell, mm -hmm. Paura, Niso was there. Mm -hmm. uh... You want to help out? Can you help I can't you want to hop in and help out? I can't remember. Man, this was 2020, wasn't yeah, it? Was a, yeah, that was four that years ago. A very what else was there? well-known one. I'm so sorry, because... Tur no, Turka wasn't. No. Uh, All right, just just for the clarity of the other answers, it was BBR and it was Gambit. So. I had said Her <laughs> Heretics, Gambit and Supermassive, but I was like... Eh. There's Is this three points? Uh, yeah, but there's a. I, I'm going to give you five more seconds to think about the last two players. You're missing uh, some big hitters. Big hitters. Yes, Nuke one more. And Nuke. he plays Smokes. And he was great. Ah, Aboba. Yeah, there oh. we go. I love, how, <laughs> I love how a great smoker is. You said, yeah, you literally, because yeah. I love how you play Pine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah right. Okay, so you're in the lead. I'm going to, production, can we please keep score? Because I, um, I don't I think I have the brain capacity. So did uh, I get to zero points so or did I get two points? Kuku, uh, you can get two points. And Kuku gets three for uh, getting BBL okay. as well. Uh, question but number two. Question number two. Can uh, I wait? Wait a second, uh, Laura. Could you please? Because the, I, I, I use did your hand little. like I did. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! I don't think this thing smells like it's gonna kill me. Shout I'm out to Laura. To Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you very Laura. much, Laura. Uh, question number two. Only four EMEA teams have lifted an international trophy. Name those four teams, please. Uh, again, you guys down in chat. I want to see how well you're doing. No cheating. I know you guys have the power to just. Uh, do you reckon Google Sue, some of this stuff? That still would have been able to do this. I assume so because he was there for one of the tournaments. <laughs> he, like he yeah, played, watching. he played one of those tournaments. So I assume he would have got. Uh, yeah, still, if you're watching, let us know. Let us know as well. This quiz was meant for you. Uh, All right, okay, Lothar. Five. five more seconds. Five, four. I'm stuck. Three, this is embarrassing. Two, one. All right. Well, Time I is up. Literally got stuck. I just FPX said FPX and, and Fnatic. Fnatic. You forgot about Ascend and Gambit. Yeah, I was literally blanking the out. I don't know. Though, and I even though. said the Gambit in the I'm previous so question. So <laughs> when I could never forget Gambit. How yeah. could you? Yeah, that was could great. Uh, but so we're going to have to continue the saga of the quizzing. Let you guys have some time to study Thank up. Thank God, uh, I was saved by the bell. Game is ready, by the way. <laughs> and it's time to throw this back to Pansy and Tom because we're definitely not going to have another tech pause, are we, Pansy? You know, that sort of attitude, Yinzu, I don't appreciate, but I do understand. Yeah, no, I mean, it, fingers crossed, right, that we it's don't not counting yet. Shut up, Tom. Tom, I don't want to hear it, mate. It still says 30 seconds. I don't want to hear it. All the screens are still red. I don't want to hear it. Keep it to yourself. It's just building I'm anticipation. I'm so to see the rest of the quiz. I mean, it is an improvement <laughs> on Zesh, to be fair. Oh, <laughs> wow. It is. That's we just... might not get fired for it, which is a nice <laughs> bonus. But, I mean, you know what? <laughs> 
It's fine. Look, if I see headsets on, it's generally a good thing. If I see one headset off, do you see, do you see how up. low Alpha yeah, was when no, he said that? He sat that. up. He sat up. <laughs> it's game on. We're fine. I think. I don't know. It's, it's counting down. <laughs> We're okay now. It's okay. Thank you for your patience. I'm countering out your bad energy with my pessimism. What do you mean bad energy? I'm really excited. We went through to be an here. entire game and you got through one round. That's not on me. <laughs> no, that's not on me. Leave that one to Stevie. Alrighty, we're back underway. Round two. It took a little second there. to get there, but we're on it. If you missed the start, yeah. Fnatic handled Casey's rather unbridled aggression. Quite well. We come back in now. Round two, of course, Fnatic on that attacking side. KC gonna have to try and put up a defense with really a classic and ghost combination. Yeah, well, this can be as a gamble. They, they don't even have much utility to play with, no paranoia. Okay, there's a snake bite for Tamazi if they yeah. really are in the right place at the right time, but this is all just gonna be for Fnatic about damage control, especially with the fact that they have four rifles. You don't really wanna be losing anything. A lot of teams, as we mentioned, will go for the three, keep two pistols, so they at least have a bit of wiggle room. And actually, they've already given one of those rifles back over to Durka. I guess not finding anything early, mm. he's gonna be sent in. But I, I kind of, I'm kind of impressed that Magnum's three shots with the classic were enough that they've now gone. Mm, let's, let's let's go to the other side now. Fortunately for KC, they haven't really dismantled this either, right? They've they've stuck around. They didn't uh, bite the bait that was put towards C. Now hearing all these shots though, it's gonna solidify these positions. Thirty seconds left. Can they do much damage though? You can get a rifle away, not bad. But uh, Fnatic quite clinical normally on approach. Not going to be making too much of a mess. Let's see if KC can make any naughtiness happen. That paint shell could be a problem. They made it away, but all that information is there. Tomasi yeah. going to find one. Let's see if any more mayhem can be made. I think even just a single kill here <laughs> do so much. And Tomasi's found another. They're making it costly. Luckily, Dirk is there, but Narate's found another somehow and a gun. He's got a bit of time to play with. Not many bullets this time around, though, and it is. The deadly duo themselves, Leo and Durka, not who you'd want to be facing in this. Normally ice cold, yeah. Pain shell, gonna ward him off that. Has to respect it, four bullets down to one. And time is his biggest enemy currently. Yeah, done for. Fnatic, steady the ship, but it got a little dangerous there. Yeah, that wasn't even a round where you saved a couple either. That was nope. one marshal and four rifles. So that's really costly for them. Mm -hmm. We're now going to see whether or not they just purchase into it, which they may do because yeah, it's Fnatic. They might be feeling a little bit cocky coming up sure. against a, an okay. underdog team, but not a bad round whatsoever. Earning up to some of those ultimates for mm. uh, maybe a round or so time. And on the side of Fnatic, okay, Dirk is getting kind of close, but they haven't really farmed up many orbs at all. No, it's uh, it, it's it's not been all the ticks in the boxes for Fnatic. They'll no. be they'll be happy enough. You got two rounds. You're not going to sit there and be upset by any means. But if you're talking about the flawless game, it's not been that just yet. Casey okay, so probably quite happy about that last round, but this is the one that means it, right? That Here. is uh, Durka now pushed back down Here. quite some way. Nine HP walking away from that. See, I love this spot, not only for the spams, but if you have the snake bites available, you can place them at the door, and if anybody runs through there, they're getting absolutely shredded. It really isolates the angles that can be taken. Also, quite an early rotation. Look Four players this. on this side of the map already. And it's a lot of faith in Shin, though, because he's yeah, he's on his own. He was Never isolated mind. and further ahead. That's a really dangerous position to be in, maybe feeling he was up to the task, but... I mean, yes, Fnatic have taken bits of damage, but, but they have a completely down. free sight, and they are drifting that way again. Yeah, I almost wonder if at this point, it, it seems early in the round, but if Casey would just have to decide, okay, we didn't down. get a kill, we didn't find any damage. If they go towards the seaside, we save. And, and the funny yeah. thing is, it's unconfirmed damage. Exactly they, they've that. done so much, like probably about 200, 250 damage yes. across the board, but it's irrelevant because they don't know yet. Exactly. And Fnatic are going to be cautious, obviously, considering they do have the walking wounded on their side. but. Left. Should be able to make that C site there it's pretty comfortably, but still going to go through the execution, taking no corner unchecked. And I want to see how far KC commit to this. I doubt they're going to push too far now. I doubt. I'm going to come in. They'll need a quick kill if they do fancy trying to get anywhere near close. Looks like they're trying to at least pressure a little bit here, and it does look like a bit of a goer. Yeah, but look at that one way. That's horrific. There's no getting past Boaster there. 
gonna have to bide the time or, tr or do that apparently. And the raid gonna fuck. Hold on, KC finding two quick kills. That opens up a chance for now. Dealing with the plan and dealing with the players are two different things. Crykel's still alive, but the only one still alive is Fawn! KC! Run back that site! Well, I didn't think they were even gonna go for it! Oh, no, no, absolutely no shot at that point of the round, because as I said, like, we look at it from our perspective, yeah. you see those players low HP and you go, okay, well, maybe they give it a go, but at the same time, all of that was wall bangs. That yeah, was they had no idea on Durka, right? They yeah. had no idea on half of these kills. Maybe they got a little bit of from, I think it was maybe Alpha's fight up against Shin, but... Barely, yeah. barely, that's I, I, still I don't a think Alpha would have given him much. No. Probably popped his head within a second, so... Yeah, a, a bit of a gamble, a bit of a risk, but also it, it, just that sheer KC confidence. I think that's yes. been one of the hugest factors of them being successful is when they take a risk, they all commit to it. Oh, yeah. There's a, they, they fight as one. It is... It's quite impressive to watch, and it's shattered a little bit of the money here for Fnatic. So let's see if now KC can build, right? It's first step done. Can they continue this trajectory, though? Already getting confident enough to take the challenge over by Rubble. Boaster... He's only got a classic, but maybe going to get the chance to use it. Mm, not, not what he wanted there, no. KC holding the line very diligently. That is lovely for them. A clean round is exactly what the Doctor would have ordered. Yeah, just demolishing them on the entry. You could even see Durka investing into an outlaw as well. An attempt to try and do some damage will leave him a little bit low on economy, and well, it will be retrieved by Alpha. But these spams coming through have just caused havoc. Like we, we talk about Fnatic and their Odin play. They love to throw, or have loved to throw that weapon in in the past. Yeah. Tomasi doesn't care. <laughs> he just doesn't care. I mean, they are non-believers, right? If you want to look at it that way. If they keep this confidence up, if they can keep this round clean, you know, don't allow Alpha any wiggle room. Don't let him get a little bit naughty. Do some damage. If they can keep this up, there is a window. It's a, it's, it's a very small window of chance. And that's when the question of... And, and again, this is very early for me to discuss this. So, Fnatic fans, relax. Don't worry. It is just, you know, uh, the kind of discussion point of... We don't know how well they test under pressure yet. Because they haven't been yeah. pressured. There has been no test left. sample, really. Yeah, their game that they played... The, the one game they pretty much played up against Vitality wasn't the cleanest, but it was fine. Yeah. Job done. You're not too fussed. This is a different ordeal altogether. This is Madrid on the line. This is... Yeah, this is a big, big deal. So... We'll see well, how it bears for them. Talk about the goals of Fnatic. Like we, we've heard it from the horse's mouth after yeah. the Andalusia flawless. They literally said they want to win all the trophies this year. Like yes. that, that is the goal. The goal isn't just, oh, we want to try and get one, yeah, we want to try and know, get two. You've taken a roster from last year, kept it exactly the same, a star-studded team that was built in the past. Yeah. Everybody else has made some sort of change. And now you're coming back in with the same. You've had plenty of time to prepare. New coach, kept your old coach's assistant, so he's still, yep, still pitching around. in ideas. So there aren't really any excuses for Fnatic coming into this tournament other than, oh, they're a little bit rusty. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't cut it at this point. Let's see. Again, it's just that spam allows so much more freedom over by Rubble, right? They can take so much of that space away. But the pendulum swing then puts a lot of pressure on the rest of the map, right? That's just how it goes. That's just yeah. Valorant 101. But Magnum does need to be very careful to not overextend. He's going to feel that first bit of pressure, right? That's a very deep committed bit of utility. Does he call for rotations? Yes. Already narrates on the way. And narrates got his ult here. So this could be a nice way to slow the roll. If they're feeling that pressure, they know Durka's ult is there. And they're going to be already hitting that side. Yeah, I, I think the thing for KC, though, is they've been very, very happy to play retake. We saw sure. it already in a 4v5, and with Nightfall online, I don't blame them for it. Yep. A single kill for Tomazi will get the Viper's Pit online as well, which could be used to section off their C site, and they do very well to sort of get that chip damage in early. Ooh, Durka. Chronicle already low. Yeah, but look at Durka trying to just battle for this space. If Narek goes down here, that is an issue. Oh my what? god, he's just run him down! That's ridiculous from Narek! Sheer disrespect! Pops the off the back, it's game on, it's go time. They are pressuring Fnatic here. They want in their faces. Deep smoke gonna come through. Force Fnatic to just stand back, stand further away. Clearing through the utility, clearing through the site. They don't know when that spike's being tapped. They've had to invest this utility early now. Paranoia through, it's gonna leave a couple close. Looking to try and do some damage on their way back in, but now that defusal finally oh, begins. The, the, the switch up of both of them being there is huge. The TP over! Martin is ridiculous! <laughs> KC! They're the real deal! They are absolutely the real deal. That was unbelievable. Narrate, I, I, I don't know what that man is doing, but it's working real good. The fact that he just. He took does zero this. damage, by the way. <laughs> like, zero damage. He just walks straight through. I clearly felt confident in his own ability and Ooh. well. Ooh. Nice. 
I don't know how they get away with as much as they did, but Fnatic have got to be feeling the burn a little bit because again, yep. they, it wasn't like they invested nothing. That was a yeah. showstopper. They actually threw their own Nightfall in as well while yes. that retake was yes. going on. And they basically got nothing for it. Now they sit with Darko, okay, having a, a hero rifle to try and play with. But other than that, empty pockets. Yeah. Uh, if there's anyone you want on that rifle, I, you know, Dirk is a name up there for me. But still, this is... Oh. Those Alphia and Chronicle. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Leo, I put up that. Alpha's fantastic. But again, when I think of Durka, everyone does kind of talk about his, his capabilities, right? And you, you look at some of the other superstars out there. Maybe his name doesn't shine as bright. He looks like a system player. Oh, that's interesting. But the way he can create impactful kills is almost like no other. And, and I'll hear no bad words about Durka, but let's see if the proof's in the pudding here. Casey already know, no one's gotten that close yet. Two of them nearby, Shin. Could potentially play in Martin again. Waiting for it, he's gonna hear all this. Boaster is in, he's very close by, and Martin sends him out of there. Evaporates Boaster, but again, the rifle still stays. Oh, look at this rap though, the timing on this one. They're completely trapped. They're boxed in. They have nowhere to go. Tomasi could just mince them down, murder them here. This is rough. And there's the wrap. There's the flank. It's not pretty in the end. That's a rifle, but it doesn't matter. Across the line again, KC. They're turning up here. This is 4 to 2. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see an early timeout from Fnatic just to keep them in line. You do not want this roster getting nervous. Yeah, I, I think more so on the Casey side, you also don't want them building momentum. True. Like you look at them versus Heretics, True. they got bodied. When they were shut down early, they were shut out of the game. Yes. When they were able to get things rolling like this, well, they beat, they beat like Giant, for example, 13-4 yes. on this map. So you have to be careful not to allow these young players to get out of control. And with a four round streak and retakes, they probably shouldn't be winning. I think that's where you call a pause. Because you start to see some of those heavy hitters warming up, right? You're seeing Martin looking real nice with it. We haven't even, like, Narrate look good. Okay, a couple of rounds, really nice yeah. impact. But again, he's not the one lighting up the kill feed, but you know he's waiting, right? That is just, that's, that is scary to me. Now I look on the other side, again, it feels like Casey have come, one, prepared. They look very prepared for this. They look very robust in what they're doing. Maybe not in you know, a, a counter strat way, but just even those retakes are so well drilled. The way they're moving around the map is just exceptional. They played 38 rounds of this versus foot. <laughs> just versus foot. Like yeah. not, not even including the other matches that they played on this map. Yeah. So I, I feel like you've given Eng more data than he could ever need on what they need to be doing, what they need to be fixing. And that, that's what we always talk about with him as a coach. He, he went away for a while, came back to EMEA, but he came back a legend already. Like, we exactly. know what this man can do. You get to a Champions Final and win a Masters, you're quite at the, to the oh, top yeah, of the tree. Top priority pick these days, it feels like, considering the impact you can have from the back of a coach. But speaking of coaching, this is time now to see Fnatic's changes. There was very few in the roster, near on, uh, there was none, but it was behind the scenes. This is yeah. the first time we're starting to see Fnatic getting tested here. Maybe you're going to take some of that Momentum away from KC. While well, I say that, you can already see what Martin's yeah, up to. No he's he's off and about, and they haven't seen this look before. Maybe feeling a little bit of something switching up here. But you think about the protocols that KC have already set. There's always going to be that aggression over towards Rob. They've been challenging that. There's the spam going to be coming out. They haven't seen this yet. So does this check? This, this is the horn. Will, they should clear this and the back box. So he has to be careful. Yep. Yep, he's going to get pinged immediately. Paranoia. They're trying to keep him alive here. They're trying to play for him. Narrate's going to come out and actually brawl with him. He can't make it out of there, though. A nice attempt, but it is an opportunity. Our team down. That is a step in the right direction. Do Fnatic follow that, or do they adjust? The thing is, with a lockdown and a Viper's oh, pit, they, they don't even really need to. Yeah. If, if they get towards either of these sites, they can take it and lock their opponents down. out. Tomazi still... A slightly more risky angle, because he can be insta-killed from that point. So he may just go back to the classic. And actually, Ooh. Viper's Pit to just shut them out of tree. Interesting. It's still got the utility there, so that I, I don't mind it. It plays in Magnum's kit a little more. 30 seconds And left. you can see them bolstering the numbers by B. Oh. This isn't a bad response yet. Narrate, can you slow it, though? Durka good for one, but the trade's there for Magnum. He is on the site and he is ready for this one. Paranoia's not going to land, but there's the Overwhelm. Two swing on the corner and they've done well here. Shin's position could standing. be something, but now losing out to Massey, it kind of removes planted. it from the equation. They will be considering this at some point now. So Fnatic answering back very nicely. I, I mean, off the back a little bit 
of that attempt of aggression, but I don't mind that Casey tried it. No, I, I think, again, if you look at the ultimates that were there for Fnatic, yeah. if you allow them to get outside C, put a lockdown, and then Viper's Pit, like you're Side really says. gambling on a fantastic post-plant for your team on the retake. So I, I, I don't mind yeah. the idea. Fnatic, though, are diligent. And that's always the thing with this team is even if you manage to take mound control or rubble control, they have the utility. That's why they play that fade, because Leo is so good at just having these little ratty angles yep. where you're not going to spot that haunt or that prowler or whatever utility he throws. No, he is uh, exceptional in his work. And again, it's, it's the thing about Leo is that it doesn't always transfer through to that scoreboard, right? It, it, he can be a scoreboard player, don't get yeah. me wrong. Like I've that. seen him 1v5 with the Sheriff. He yeah, definitely can. Yeah, absolutely can. <laughs> but it's like some of that work behind the scenes that doesn't necessarily show constantly is what makes him that step apart. Now, it's, it's a little bit of a touching of base here almost for Casey. Brought back to heal. But if that start didn't go the way it did, who knows how that could have ended up going. But again, we're not going to see sloppy rounds from Fnatic, I think. I don't think we're going to see that. So again, no. that, that sort of cheeky play, I don't mind it, but you've got to be able to step beyond it. And I'm seeing a stack up from KC here. Placing sentry. In a spot where I still have plenty to play with. I think just clearly wanting to deny that C control, but again, it's that same horn. They're ready for it this time, though. That corner being cleared already for Boaster. And actually, they're just going to fall back. That's probably just off the amount of utility they've just seen sent their way. Yeah, this. how quickly can KC mirror these steps almost? Trying to hit that rotate just right. So Massey's got to be so careful to not get caught out here. If he can buy time, that would be ideal, but still, it's a lot to ask. Yeah, you can see the pressure. He's, he's in a bit of trouble here. Players pouring through by trees. Lost that position, going to have to play from the back of sight. He does have support and a nice little bit of stall. Going to isolate Durka, but again, do you want a 1v1 against Durka? I don't know, but he's going to take the site, clear it for the Fnatic side. The spike's still got, not going to follow just yet. There is still stall here. Both teams with a lockdown could be one of the more interesting pieces, but with no plan, there hasn't really been anything just yet for Casey to execute on. No, they're going to hear this go down. There's the first lockdown being considered by Magnum. Yeah, going to go for the deeper side of it and counter lockdown. There it is. Dirk up, beautiful. That's what the position was there for, but he actually falls to Shin. By the time, they can't really deny this lockdown is still ticking for Fnatic, but it looks like they're gonna try! Oh my god, wait, what? What is going on? They are so cocky and confident in this. That's too detained. This force is supposed to, he has to get involved in this one. Can he get there in time? I don't think he could do much about this one, really. Yeah, absolutely not. Fantastic attempt there, but not to be. KC playing the clock to perfection, willing to challenge, backing themselves in that fight. That was, again, another brilliant retake. I, I feel like that's the sort of play that you make if you're the one with the advantage. Like if you're the person coming into a yep. match as the favorite, you go, they got a lockdown, I don't yeah. care. I'll push into it, I'll face them. The fact that they managed to take out both players and then both is just like, yeah, two players are detained. What can he do? What are you meant to do? It just push versus the other two who aren't. Like that, that's the risk that he had to take. So I love it from Casey. Outside of the box plays that even the best in the world aren't ready for. This is, this might be a game to watch. Five to three. If you aren't paying attention before, you certainly will be now. Because the buy ain't pretty coming out from Fnatic here. Yeah. Well, that rifle on Alpha this time. Everyone else working with a lot less, but... Such unique beginnings from KC2. They're, they're barely ever playing C. If they are, it's just One. Magnum playing yeah. there alone. And he just backs off. His whole goal is just to try and delay them. They are so happy to play in the retake. And it does just seem like they're almost playing two attack sides. They just work well off of each other. Yeah. Narrate's going to have that early spot, but they already know because the utility's been destroyed on the way through. Yeah. It is a long way to go, though, for Martin and Shin the spike. to try and get over here. Not in a particular hurry, though. Yeah. So the spike's going to go down. Spike planted. And that all is, is an issue. That is hard to clear. I'm kind of... Uh, this this makes me a little nervous that Casey are one so far away. This has to be near on pixel perfect. Is Chronicle going to try and do it for the branding? He's only got a classic in this round. Like, <laughs> he's just going to have to go for right clicks and almost play for the rest of his team. This is not a great buy from Fnatic, but with this pit, they actually have a chance. Yeah, but here we go. This is game time. Durk going to be up and overing it, but it's Alpha with a... Rifle in the back, going to take down Martina, remove a little bit of that frontline pressure. They've got to be able to clear this site, and Alpha still standing, gets found. Tomasi's going to drop him. Remaining. Chronicle can only do so much, right? It's all on Chronicle. can't do anymore. I don't think there's any diet. They should be fine on this one yet. Yeah. Diffuse yeah, yeah. is going to be there again. KC setting a standard 
on these retakes that is exceptional. Yet yeah, somehow Chronicle made that close just oh, by surviving long enough. If he's he's alive a few seconds longer, I think they win that. But it is just the retakes. I I, I love the way that. Firstly, I think Narrate is one of the best at just no fear pushes into yep. positions he should never be able to get yep. to. And he's one of the first in. Takes the opening kill onto Alpha, who's hiding around the corner on the box. That means no one saw him just full sprint in. And then he also, I think, gets the last kill onto Chronicle as well, there. who could have lost in the entire round. I, I'm a little stun locked here, right? This is this is a little bit, you know, we, we talk about the what ifs, maybes. It's very rare you see it happening like this, and it's certainly not there yet. Martin, though, already, oh my god, they are scrambling to try and get away. Decent damage, but they all still stand. Yeah, Shin's not giving it up, though. Nah, he's sticking around. They they want this side of the map as well. Yeah, and Thomas is re-aggressing in the meantime. They, they are not giving up any space. They want to fight Fnatic before they get anywhere close to the afterplants. And that's interesting because they've yeah. had amazing retakes. Yeah, absolutely. We haven't seen this yet from Tomasi to be this yeah, far forward, right? This With an Odin. Yeah, I mean, it's just obscene, isn't it? Feels that may not be the right option. Going to drift back. He does have support here. They still have decent map control, even though they are a player down. But you see... Still have all the information they need here. It's the last time they managed to push him back before he was able to use his here. snake bites. It's one of the hardest things to push through is the snake bite over towards that tree position. Mm -hmm. If he gets this right, two of these players are so low and he's going to get the timing spot on. Yeah, he is. Trying to burst off the back of the Prowler. Everything else going to come in. Paranoia Sen. Left. They've taken tree, yes, but again, look at the stall. Down to 25 seconds here. That spike is non-committal. It's sitting so deep. They're looking maybe for an adjust towards B, but there's two players waiting. Right again. Yeah, th this is this is absolutely on the money now. I don't know if they. Oh, oh <laughs> <Tomasi>. just <laughs> this is unreal to watch. Ten seconds now. Spike still in hand. That has to go down here. Nine seconds. They're gonna try and go for it. Leo just investing everything, pouring the util in, buying them some precious seconds in a three v three. Now look at the post plant here as well. Chronicle down a little low, and the timing on the back of Tomasi walking all the way around the world should be found out, should be handled. Yeah, that's the there information. This should be fine now. Chronicle gets the first narrate. What a time to step in, finding Chronicle, finding Leo, and another retake, another tick in the box. KC, this is, I've never seen a team so good at these sort of retakes. Yeah, and it, it's also just that every read that they have on Fnatic is spot on. Yeah. Like they denied their space over towards A. Okay, this was a little bit risky, but even still, it, it paid dividends in terms of damage. But then also just, okay, you've gone for this initial play towards A. We know that Bosa loves to have those leap back towards the B yeah. site. And they had two players waiting there, and they did enough damage that that gives Thomasy space. That yeah. gives Narrate time to get into position. It's never easy for Fnatic because but they can't get into post plants properly before their opponents are on them. We're, we're, we're going to take a moment here just to remember Fnatic have three rounds. Three mm. rounds. This is also their map choice. Now, I don't think there is a bad map pool for Fnatic, so I'm not that fussed. <laughs> We've only but seen we this one. <laughs> and we one don't other. really know. <laughs> but they've broken the buy here. KC have such a firm grip on this game. Shin this time. Again, we know that they will rescind away from that seaside if they feel too much pressure coming in. So don't stress it too much. But again, the fact they're winning out these retakes, yeah, you know, strategy and consideration executes, can get you the site, can get you the plant, but it's always the teamwork, the chemistry, the trading, the kind of play back through from a retake is, is normally the, the hardest part to work out. And it's blowing my mind we're seeing KC do this. So impressive. But on the other side, where do Fnatic look to try and find that little huh. entry point anywhere? They're finding nothing. Man, normally their attack is by far the better side. Mm. The only team to beat them on this map is Loud. No other team has ever been able to do it. Oh. And right now, KC are in the driver's seat on that defensive side as well. They're predicting this B hit again. And it's right. KC have the correct read once again. Chronicle is here early though, and that's an issue until then. Magnum's got the trade out, so kind of quelling that threat. Do they quickly adjust? Dirk has got them some oh. space, but still Magnum and Shin just fighting it out on the site. It's leaving it down to Alpha, basically. Only with a Sheriff. Yes, Bulldog and Leo to try and do some damage to the back lines. But again, look at the numbers, look at the timing here. Plant gonna come down. Ten seconds Shin closing left. in here. Spike planted. It's a little ahead of expectation. Leo not gonna be checking that just yet, but the utility's on the site. Alpha, gonna need something from this. Killed my bot. 
You can hear them stepping closer, Underneath noting the utility now starting to dwindle down. He knows he's under the gun. A shot could be great here, and it's not going to happen. Carmine Core once again stamping their authority on this matchup. Fnatic have no answers. No, and, and you could see how confident they are in every single one of these fights. Magnum swinging back in, the blast backs from Martin and to Angles. He knows there's players in. This is unrivaled confidence currently coming out from the KC side, and it's unusual that I've seen Fnatic ever shut down in this sort of way. Four retakes in a row as well. They, they have been able to get the plant down. They've been able to get into post situations. Okay, that round was a weak buy. We can sure. forgive yeah, them yeah, for yeah. that. But, but every other the round others. hasn't. <laughs> okay. There. Okay, we, we, we go again. You know, 8, 4, 9, 3 feels very different. Let's take it, take it a little easy here. KC out. Look at that. Wheeling. Able. A little bit of a deeper commitment this time from Shin on the A side of the map and an adjustment on the other. Let us Fnatic decide to try and test this time. But they have to be wary of everything. Because of the pushes that KC have been going for, it's even tentative on the other side from Alpha. You could just see yeah. him jiggling. Because there could be someone they right next to him right now. He has no idea. They don't know if they're pushing up B. They've got the turret watching for that. And you can see Chronicle, he's setting up utility to try and clear rubble because they know they're going to have to fight for it. And even with that kept in, the right is going to draw the attention. He knows they're around. And Shin's sitting safe still. They're drifting away. It's going to be Magnum. Look at where this alarm bot is. Mm -hmm. It's outside so of sea. Yeah. So once they actually get anywhere near it, there's going to be a call almost immediately. There's a player there. And straight away, you see Martin on the map start to move back towards that seaside. And Magnum out. buying some time as well. 30 seconds now. Fnatic aren't being given the left. luxury of timing on this one. Uh, oh, what? oh, come on! Magnum, that's gorgeous just takes away the tip of the spear. Dirk has been good, but not good enough to do much more. And now he can slip away. They've got the player advantage for the retake. Does Fnatic now try and fight deeper on this? That is the only option they haven't explored is try and get the plant. But look at the time again. Left. 10 more seconds. They're looking for a fight towards CT. Magnum on the chopping block and he falls. It's Chronicle holding the line here. That's better. Fnatic backing themselves to take those deeper fights. But now we're down to Tomasi. Martin Shin. Not going to happen that time for Martin. Put it in the hands of Shin and Tomasi, who are not finding the connections here. That's Fnatic finding a solution. It just took so long. The crowd's definitely on their side, that's for sure. Yeah. They haven't had much to cheer about, as it's been the first two rounds. And other than that, it's just been blips on the radar. Everything else going in the way of KC. And you're right, the real thing there was just a bit of aggression out from Chronicle. He also uses the Viper's Pit to just lock out any sort of retake position. And that was something that I think for the most part, KC had got for free throughout yep. the majority of the rounds. Yep. They were able to get close and then get into that Brawly style. This time, Fnatic didn't allow it. It's safe to say though, now going on to that defensive side, they kind of need a pistol. Just a little bit. I'm seeing two Sheriffs as it stands. I'm seeing Alpha and Chronicle both going for that. So wondering if they commit, and it looks like they are. So Fnatic, you're going to need this one. CIS aim, you yeah, know, it's why fair. Not? It's fair. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, back yourself sometimes. Um, and I feel like I'm walking into the unknown looking at KC. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know quite what to expect from these guys, and I think neither do Fnatic, but what a treat to watch. And stack towards a B site here. It's with Alpha at the floor. Oh, it's Chronicle. What? How many collats are we seeing today? Uh, is that the second we've seen? <laughs> yeah, Zipan had one earlier. <laughs> Bloody hell. Okay. KC making a quick run towards C after going, I just, I don't think B's for us, really. Yeah. CIS aim beats Turkish aim. That's what I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, they're willing to just brawl on this one, aren't they? Chronicle. Uh, gonna, gonna have to respect it now. Tomasi. Like a dog with a bone there. He was hunting that one down. He wasn't going to fall away from that. Bring them down. Can they isolate another? They're trying to. Most has been noted. Going to see how far back he fell, but that paranoia is good. Tomasi has to respect it. Gets chip damage on the way, but they're willing to stand. They're willing to fight, but they've got to be careful here. They're being wrapped on as well. You can see it already. Durka on the way in a rate. Good, but not good enough. First step in the second half if a Fnatic, but hey, they got the pistol on the first one too. Yeah, I know it was the buy rounds where we saw the majority of the success and those retakes from KC. I, I will say, like, 
we have seen a lot more changes in this map. Like obviously the updates, I think, helped out at least a little bit with the defense in terms of being able to control a little bit of extra ground and having opportunities to get back into those sites if they were to lose them. Yep. And you can see already the way KC were playing that pistol, they're going to do similarly to what we saw from Fnatic, playing these sort of slow-paced, patient rotations, trying to almost double back at points if they can. Okay. It's a long road back, though. Fnatic, going to have to be taking those steps together. Five rounds to the eight of KC. Where are you? You're going to have that buy in the first place. Remember that damage, though, from that first time around? Not going to be happening here. Fnatic just blitzing KC. Trying to reestablish some of that authority here. Remind them who they're playing against. And Shin, last one alive with limited options. Yeah, I think we had a very quiet first half from Durka, and this might just be his, his announcement into the server. Yeah. I, I don't think he really has too many quiet games. And Andaluthia, flawless as well for Fnatic, is going to be a huge boost in terms of the economy. I've noticed as well, like, a lot of other teams are going to go in for those, like, Vandals, mm -hmm. Phantoms. Fnatic actually leading quite heavily into the Bulldog in some of these bonus rounds, which is not something I thought I'd be saying. Like, I know that yeah. Mitch has been crying out for an outlaw, hasn't happened too much. It's happened here and there. But I didn't expect to be seeing a four Bulldog bonus round. I mean... <laughs> or wanted to. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it yet. <laughs> Proof's in the pudding, eh? And it looks all in from Fnatic, though, down here as well. <laughs> Got to be ready for this one. Shin trying to get in the challenge here. Durka is putting himself on the line, and it's working. Takes down Martin and tries to get away. Do they lose anyone? No. Barely damage done. Look how quickly they dismantle that. It's going to give at least a little bit of space to play with, but you know that at this point, Fnatic are just going to be looking to try and play that retake, maybe do a little bit of extra damage. Look at Shin already down on just 26 HP, but there is no one to be found. And, and the fact is, Casey want to try and find someone, want to try and even the scoreline before they get into this afterplant. They're going to play it super aggressive. Yeah, but this, this post plant's really uncomfy, though. Look at, look at how little space they have. They've kind of just traded positions, right? Okay, well, Casey, we're going to opt for a little bit of CT and, and site itself. We're not going to hold much beyond that. tomassi has got to be careful. Find balance. Almost reminds you of that first half. Again, they'll have the utility to delay them. That's the one major thing. It's going to be awkward, and the paranoia is missed. Oh, but that's sharp from Tomasi with a follow-up as well. Alpha. Starting to warm up here as well, but time ticking. He's got to get a move on. Not going to happen. Boasting out. There's no access to this site. There's no really time to play with the rate there. Just going to close it down. It is costly. But KC get their first in the second now. Yeah, and then the fact is that, that was a 5v4 retake from Fnatic. I actually just think KC adapted quite well. Like They had those aggressive yeah. positions. I think Tomazzi, it, he just went back to, as you said, his defense position. I'm going to put a snake bite down. Yep. But I think Boaster had a paranoia, and it just, I don't know if it missed him or if mm. that was from someone else, but it, I, it didn't connect at all. So when they go swinging, it's Tomazzi in a 1v1, and you're kind of going to rate him to win that. He's been fantastic thus far. Yeah. And the rate now, well, you mentioned it. He, he was all right in the first half. That was oh. a big 3k. Yeah, it was. And this time they're putting a little bit more... I guess attention towards dry, trying to deal with Durka's aggression, right? We've seen him testing this They're now time the and time strat. again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, literally their strat to spam through that and Durka gets caught by it. Yeah. So he's going to be suffering now. Down on eight, going to lose a lot of that confidence that he was coming into this round with. He's been giving them early chances as well. In these first couple of rounds, he has been pivotal in that. Now he has to sit back a little bit deeper, play off the back of potentially Boaster or someone else. Cautious and carefully, KC start going forward, and that might pick up the pace a little bit. Going to note the player on the site, but the Stalker going to still be there, so they can't quite springboard forward. Got to be careful, because Chronicle could connect. Not to be just yet. Paranoia's in there. This should be the green light for the site. Does Fnatic try and get ahead of this? I doubt it. I say that. Creeping closer. No, they've respected enough of the plant, but let's see how that pressure looks when they try and come back through. Oh, I thought that spray was going to be on him then. Durka still going to do damage, even down low. Good work from Leo. A couple more steps to be taken, though. Martin and Tomasi still going to be here. This crossfire can hit hold. Boaster going to crack it open. Tomasi goes down. It's on Martin. Too many players. Too many bodies in his way. A valiant attempt, but Fnatic get the defuse. Yeah, clearly, KC feeling quite confident in their 
after plant scenarios, just getting themselves into that A site quite easily. But again, I feel like the main reason you see that sort of boom bot go through early is just, okay, we want to clear below. That's one of the main danger positions. Yep. And then from then onwards, you had the late rotation coming through from Alpha. Solid work from Leo as always. And we're starting to see, I think, just some of those Fnatic players actually come back into the game. Because that, that's the thing. You look at that first half, there were a lot of those superstars completely missing. Durka wasn't really there. I think Leo and Alpha uncharacteristically gone for the yep. majority. And now that they're starting to play those retakes a little bit more, I think also they're not being surprised. Because when you're playing up against a retake, there's only so many places that your opponents can be. And for KC, it's timeout time. Going to pump the brakes themselves and have a check-in with the coach, as we can see. And he's got a whole lot to say here. So. Going to try and course correct a bit since starting off this second half. It has been the three rounds to Fnatic with the only one response from KC so far. And their money not going to be in a great place either. Now, KC will have that. I mean, the snowball round's not even that close by either. They haven't individually been doing enough damage to really be that rewarded from it yet. Fnatic are very close by to theirs, though. You're seeing one off for Durka. I think Leo one away. Um, I mean, Bose is going to have his, but it is that Omen TP. So not the most important or imperative, but still. Fnatic in touching distance of that, which is always a nice round to have in the pocket. What does KC do here? We know the pedigree of the coach, right? We know that he's got that capability, but what can you call in at this point? How do you deal with Fnatic in these scenarios? Because as we've said before, and we'll say it time and time again, it's a very short list of teams who've managed to best Fnatic, right? It is a very short list. KC add their name to it, or was it just a good half? Yeah, this map in particular. Mm. It's been nigh on unstoppable, and it looks like they're just going to go all in on this A site control. Doug, that's surprising considering what sort of round this is. You're going to know your opponent's economy is a little yeah. bit low. Maybe thought the Chronicle would be able to back him up, but what has gone from one Guardian now becomes a rifle for Tamazi as well. That's pretty nice. I don't like the aggression in these rounds, if I'm honest. Again, the, the fact that it's not necessarily untradeable, but incredibly hard to trade, and then once that rifle's gone, it's gone. So it looks like Fnatic oh. going to try and get proactive elsewhere at the same time. With Chronicle playing tree, it, unless he killed him through a wall, it, it, it was untradeable. Yeah. Like you, you needed quite a lot to really get anything from that. So a bit of a gamble that hasn't really paid off and has basically fast-tracked delivered a gun over to your opponents. The narrator's is trying to sell him on this C take. Bring them down. Now Alpha will stick around and see that this is just narrate here. It's only been that fade utility. So he's not going to probably fall too much for this. They're going the other way. Like uh, uh, You can see the rotation already coming through from Leo in the direction of his teammates. Yeah. So that fake didn't really sell anyone at all. Okay, but hold on. Yeah, it tees up the trade though. They'll put their bodies on the line Whoa! here. Oh, come on, Chronicle. Shin tries to make it away, and that's the rifle now still just in the hands of Tomasi here. He's got Magnum with him. Can they isolate? And oh my <laughs> good god, Chronicle has no idea how close he is and how close they are! He lost sight of it for a second, and now they've got a plant, a 2v2. 10 seconds, a tap on the spike. They didn't even commit to this. They're trying to draw him out, draw him in. A bolster. He's going to find Magnum. Oh, Tomasi! Time, three seconds. Oh, Tomasi, that's obscene! He just toyed with Bolster and won! Oh, He's in his head rent free after it. that. I can't believe it. That is filthy. You've just taken one of the <laughs> the best IGLs we have. <laughs> an 18-year-old kid, and he's just made him look a fool. There wasn't even enough time to plant. Bosa was going purely off the fact, okay, he has to he's stick this. To. It would be illogical to do anything else. Oh, that is... But that's what this team does. That's, that's how they play with them. Yeah, he knows what he's done. Look at him. Look at him. He knows it too. Oh, man, that, that's a confidence boost as well. That's a crushing round for Fnatic. That, that was one. Yeah. Rifle being lost at a very bad time. Lovely work in unison for Casey to isolate more fights there. They didn't fall for the fake, but they <laughs> fell for everything else. This is double digits for KC now. Fnatic have that snowball round near on in hand. Yeah, the lockdown's not quite there, but still they have everything Boys else. Purchase, not perfect either. Chronicle lacking Durka, not ideal. Yeah. So they're gonna try and make it work with those ults to bolster. What's lacking financially? And in the first half, that didn't work. A, a lot of their ults didn't really have the impact that Fnatic desired them to have. Looking like KC might be on that all-in. Bear in mind, a Viper's Pit might be enough for them to secure it. The utils, fantastic. I mean, that's still exceptional. They're standing. How is Chronicle and Alpha alive? That is beautiful from them to stem the bleeding. Oh. to Well, you ain't running away from that one. There's your answer, Fnatic. Having enough of the fun from KC. 
It's Magnum and Narate. I mean, One this would be a remaining. story and a half if Narate can do this. You've been good. Let's see how good 30 you are. 30 seconds left. 1v5. He's got a spike. 25 seconds. Mm. He's surrounded. They know exactly yeah. where That's he right. is. And that would be a flawless as well. That's your answer. Whew. This is going to be a game, isn't it? That's, that's a nice way to kind of correct some of the issues as well. Just an instant response. <laughs> just watching Martin just fly through the air. I think it's worth mentioning as well. Like, you, you have to bear in mind where some of these players come from. Tomasi, 20 and 11, was playing for Saw last year in the yeah. Portuguese league. Yeah. They managed to get to Ascension. They did all right. They did quite well for the team that they had. He's come in here. He switched roles from a duelist. And he's now top of the board on Viper. On this for a, I, was, I was getting nervous when I'm seeing Doki get a little too close again. Or is it Boasted? <laughs> Come on, boys. They've got they've got classics and ghosts. Let's, let's just chill a little bit. They don't need a rifle. It's interesting that Martin has both the rifle and his ult. Yeah. You almost feel like it might be a, a better idea to give it to Narate. Yeah. Let him try and... If it gets it's to a point enough. where that showstopper could work out. Oh. Oh, well, that's, that's a bit of magic from the man there, but that's a rifle. Now we've got two, Martin and Narate. Martin's gone down, that's good from Leo there. You'll take it when you get it. <laughs> the Phantom Warband. I know, it's right. just obscene, isn't it? No spike yet. I'm trying to go for that, that really rifle. Yet. They're just, uh, they're true. Oh. Oh, man, this guy's ready. clean. Okay. Still no spike here. They keep it on. Ooh, uh, Alpha, you're spike. lucky. You're a lucky boy. They've got the spike and they're running. Okay. He's, he's, he's given them a little bit of safety at B, right? He's warded off Alpha. They don't quite know where Leo is to an extent. Seconds and they've left. got to know where Boaster was. So they've put together a picture, but where do they go with this? They, they've got to get proactive, right? They've got to find one of these three players, otherwise they're screwed. Well, the question is, does Fnatic throw in a lockdown as well? Because they have the util to force them off the site, but it would be such a costly round for them. Oh my god. That's Shin. Oh! That's belting from Shin. This young gun, that's a lot to do, and two very unfavorable angles to work with. Not gonna happen against young man Alpha. Still got it, still clean with it. And the fuse gonna come in. Fnatic. Just creeping back into the game now. Nine to ten, very close by here. Yeah. You can see, though, in every single round, they're making them sweat. Oh, yeah. Like, it, even if Fnatic turned this around, I, I think you have to look at this from KC's perspective and One go, like, there were many, many rounds that they could have been able to steal away yep. just off some individual brilliance, off of Fnatic maybe looking a bit shaky in some of these and taking big risks. Like, Ducky gets two kills there, but again, it's still a scenario where they give a rifle over to the opponents in an eco round. Yeah, that, that, that was an eco round. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. It was an eco round with a hero rifle left in it. Now, we're speaking of snowball rounds, right? Roll your minds back. Remember, we're talking about, look at what's coming online for Carmine Core here. Yes, missing the rates, but everything else is looking pretty good. Martin going to take the early space again. This is that traditional back and forth, right? This We're going to see this so often. Now, we do have the lockdown for Alpha. Chronicle's got his, so some big ults still sitting in the pockets of Fnatic as well. Round changes. They can gamble a bit more, though, because Dirk has got that operator over on the seaside, so he can just play a passive angle, hold for the opener, and then that means that they can have two, three, maybe even more over on this A side. Uh oh. Stalled out here. I think got stuck on the door. Yeah, not not ideal. They do have the side control. Not perfect, but it's job done to an extent. It's still got them what they needed. And there's the follow up ult as well. So this is ult to get on site. Ult to secure plant. Can they then bolster around it? I'm seeing if Martin feels that timing. You should Does he feel the timing on this one? Yeah. We're going to see the lockdown coming into boot. This is everything. The kitchen sink. Yeah, Alpha has slipped down towards the side to pop off. Oh my god, he got caught. Shin's going to find Alpha. Magnum going to catch Chronicle. And now there's problems. Boaster can't get away with this. He's, he's, oh, he's, he's, he's been caught. No, the turret's going to get him. Oh, okay. Tomasi gave him a way out, if anything. A mercy killing at this point. Durka and Leo, what are you going to do here? What can you do about this one? There's nothing to be done. That snowball round is deadly for a reason. And Leo gonna have to do the unthinkable. It's not gonna happen. KC invests a lot, but they get the round with three standing. Yeah, and they've reacted really well because Alpha goes into the site to put that lockdown in because it's the only thing that can force yeah. Tomasi out of the pit. Because that yeah. pit is so far back that it actually was disgustingly good. 
The problem is then Boaster tries to run in and just gets caught. And that's the changing part of the round is they were just a little bit too late destroying the lockdown. He gets detained and the other two players have had to fall back in the meantime. Otherwise, they're going to lose the round completely. But KC, they fell back all the way out, kept the pit up. Tomazzi was willing to take that risk and it ends up working out for them. And that's the thing. He has been someone who we've seen gamble throughout rounds, but every single time in a way that is just successful for his team. And, and I like this timeout from KC. Now, th that round felt like, again, yes, it was a snowball one. It was off the back of a great deal of ults. They haven't been having that traditional success, obviously, that they had on the first half. Way scrappier. Yeah. Fnatic way better in form. So maybe just a touch base, try and give them that last communication to close out this game for themselves. Because again, Fnatic's buy isn't perfect, but they're, they're, they're still at the point of being very operational. It's not enough that you, you haven't broken them completely. So in my mind, you're looking at this, whatever this last command coming out from the coach of KC is, it better be a good one. Because they st still, those final rounds are some of the hardest, and Fnatic will fight you to the very end. There is not a moment where they go, ah, oh, I guess we lost. These guys are relentless. And they are good enough to claw it back from 12, let alone 11. So let's let's keep that in context here. This is only three yeah. rounds that KC have managed on this half. Fnatic have been far more in control now. This is going to be difficult now because you've got the Viper's Pit. That's going to sort of pad the difference between that Spectre and anything else. And that will force them back into Boaster, who has an Odin. You're not going to be expecting that when the Viper's Pit is on the other side because it's normally Chronicle using that Odin to spam through the walls. The question yeah. is, do they try and pressure through this? They do have Nightfall. That's the mm -hmm. one sort of counter that could cause issues for Chronicle. But again, it, it is Chronicle. He's still been having a great game. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I rarely doubt Chronicle. There's, there's a couple of players that you just think solid as a rock, and he is one of yeah. them. Absolute backbone of a team at times. In case he didn't like what they saw there. Gonna pop a little bit of utility down from uh, Magnum to keep check. At least he did for a second. There. Now they're exploring the other side of the map. Opting away on the Vibes Pit. Maybe looking to add a little pressure through B late, but we can see that Durka is keeping tabs on this too. KC not feeling too much resistance yet. They've gone pretty deep, so it does make you wonder what's going to be going on here. And that's what. Boaster, you got to do well here. This is a lot of pressure coming your way. Leo isn't quite connected until he dips back further. No, Tomasi outdoes him. And now that's that sight open. Leo sat towards CT, can't do much to dissuade this now. Yeah, the whole play was around Boaster getting planted. something. They don't have any ults even remotely close to being online. and. Uh, this this, this retake, yeah, it doesn't look like a great spot, but at the same time, look how far down they are in the score. They kind of have to do something. There we go. They're making a go of it. Martin could not care less. Gorgeous connection. I, I'm, I, I'm calling. I'm, I'm pulling the plug on this round. They're still testing the Woods here. Chronicle. Alpha. Oh, what? <laughs> this guy. Absolute animal. <laughs> I just don't know what to make of some of these players. KC up to 12. And look, we said it at the start, any given Sunday, there's something in the air. You know, we've already had one upset today, right? The, you know, you, you could call the first game an upset. Maybe that's 60-40%, You maybe even 70-30 if you're going really far. But for KC to beat Fnatic here... So they've gambled an ult, they spent everything they have, and it's an Andalusia flawless for, yeah. <laughs> for them to get to 12. Like, this is not a team scraping by. I think that's been the most exciting look thing. Look well, There you go. This means the world to them. This is, you know, it's not the ticket yet to Madrid, but it's getting you, you know, you can see the plane, you can see Spain not that far away. You're getting close. You're doing it against Fnatic. The audacity almost to do it. And again, they test, they tempt, but it's Alpha. Is this where it stops? It's Chronicle by his side. Big boys, they're having none of what KC are trying to sell today. Down to Tomasi and Shin. This is a brutal round to try and convert Alpha. Spike planted. Connects in the end. Even just Shin. Not looking likely, but a great shot to start. And Boaster's there. Safe pair of hands in the end. Fnatic answer back. It's 10. Not going down without a fight here. No, never. Like, that's, that's the thing that KC have to realize is they can have a pause. They can give a moment to their coach to talk them through, come up with a plan, come up with an idea. But the second this comes close, the second there's an opportunity, that's when Fnatic strike, and for now, not going to do too much damage to the economy. Like, that's the main thing. The worry, though, is that Casey are very far away from having the majority of ults. Okay, from the shadows, not a great deal. Showstopper a couple away. Everything else, probably not going to be coming up.
And on the other side of things, Showstopper's close. Again, Lost similarly, the alts aren't there. But that was where Fnatic were really thriving in a lot of these rounds. Oh, go again. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm watching this like, like I'm a viewer, but careful now. That spike's in hand, and look at Boxster's position. They haven't seen this yet, but Shin goes down near and without a fight. Leo isolates it, not letting that... Oh, they, they had no idea they crept up. Boxster hadn't called it back, so still, this is a messy round, and that's a problem. Tomasi keeps them with at least a touch of a player-to-player -player number that's in check. It's three to three on both sides. They've got the spike back. They've got a potential towards the A site. Leo, the backbone at times. The Iceman himself, fresh should, always gonna be good for one, but he needed a little more here. Two v2 here. Chronicle, still shoulder check to Massey, creeping closer! Perfect work in unison from KC and Alpha. The Wonder Kid himself. Any keep Fnatic in this map? Or is truly the unthinkable happening here on map one? One v2. Time. The backing track to Alpha's chance. Spike ticking away. He slipped ahead of that. Not going to be revealed. You can see the util though. Does he get a touch on this? He does. For the swing. The look. He takes down one. He dips away. This could be a masterclass. And it's not from Alpha. It's KC going against the odds on map one. Tom, I can't believe what we have just witnessed. No, Tomazi again. Like, he has been an unbelievable force. 26 and 13 in his first matchup ever versus Fnatic. His first map, as said, teams don't beat them here. They don't beat them on Lotus. They've just won Fnatic's map pick and now get to go into their own choice, which is split where they have one of the spiciest comps we've seen. And keep in mind, this is for Madrid. This is the game that matters. Don't go anywhere. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing goodbye. Chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes. I'm feeling good, feeling great now. A hater can't play with my day now. Get that negativity out of my face now. In my city, I'm the man of my state now. Yeah, I'm living life to the fullest. Baby girl, you're talking to the realest. Energy and joy, you can't steal it. Good vibes all around. Baby, tell me, can you feel it? I woke up, so I'm blessed. Just another chapter in the test. I know I'm doing better than the rest. Got a smile on my face, showing teeth for the crest. It's no sweat, I'm a vibe in my own right. Go time in the sun, yes, I'm gonna shine. So fine, got Betty on my phone line. Feeling good, feeling great, chasing these good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing
Chasing goodbyes, chasing goodbyes, chasing goodbyes, chasing goodbyes. Put my soul on that beat, I'm ready to feast. Margaritas with some divas, I'm pouring the drinks. I'm living life to the fullest, the blessings in me. Don't really care what you say, whatever you think. Nah, unequivocal miracles with the lyrical. With the homies trying to pop like the cereal. Lucky Charms, got a model on my arm. Go watch on my wrist, garlic parm. No alarm, fireworks, I can feel it in the sky. I got love in my eyes, but there's money on my mind. I see passion and pride, I despise all the lies. I've been around the world, so I'm down for the ride. Mm. Good drinks, good people, and good times. Fast cars, pretty women on FaceTime. More money, more fun in my life. I'm just chasing my shots with good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, too busy chasing the vibes. Too busy chasing the vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing the vibes. Chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes. Too busy chasing the vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing the vibes. For me, uh, personal, I really want to play against uh, Loud and Fnatic, mm. both teams. Uh, first, because I really respect Loud as a team and I have like a lot of respect for Sadak. Um, and yeah, Fnatic, because yeah, it's Fnatic. Uh, I really respect Bolster too. And yeah, it's like the kind of the kings of Europe. So yeah, I want to like, play against them. Oh, the Kings, they could be dethroned today if Tom Mazzi keeps up that performance from map one. Here he is in the AIM Labs warm up. And my God, the, those shots uh, were on target. I'm back here with Kakuka and Lothar. It's going to be a day of upsets. We could potentially see back to back upsets. Some, someone, some out, someone somewhere out there is manifesting this. Hear me out. If somebody had all of this in their predictions, like the week that we've had, and especially this playoffs, please send me a DM or uh, I don't know, buy some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe he was just doing random stuff, you know, and it's like, oh, I got it, you know? Oh, yeah, no, but but it, absolutely incredible performance from KC. Not only they lost two pistol rounds and didn't yes. get an, any anti-eco, so they lost essentially 0-4, the most important rounds of the of the map. They still won 13-10. Not only that, we have seen them how they well played together. Like, it's it, Tomashi dropped two 4Ks, 26 kills. We have seen um, Raze also pop off with one more 4K, so that's three 4Ks in three rounds. Yeah, we got to talk about those retakes because they built themselves up yeah. Such a nice lead uh, to go into the second half. And all of this was just on point beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Because we saw two faces of KC in the in the same time span of the round. Like at the beginning, even though they were defending, they would be more aggressive. They would try and push Fnatic to not be comfortable. And then at the same time, we would see retakes that were perfectly orchestrated, where everything was falling onto place. They were peaking at the right time all together. And honestly, putting Fnatic in a very, very complicated position. Look, from the last times I was playing, uh, so we watching KC, every time, they were doing retakes every time they were moving as a unit i was always just saying to myself nice you know it's just <laughs> enjoyable to watch because you see the spacing being correct you see how players are trading each other and you see that there's no there's just no sp spot where it's not looking nice and that's something that fnatic had been really struggling with when they when the opponents are moving as a unit they cannot really play the numbers advantage they are failing and and that is a big reason why KC was able to even perform in this entire tournament. And just look at this head-to-head -head that we're seeing right here, Martin versus Durka. Now, usually we see Durka having the upper hand being the duelist, probably the most consistent in the world before this. Consistent throughout demon. this 
Exactly. He's, he's just a, he was just a consistent demon. But what is going on? Maybe we haven't seen enough of him so far because this is just the third map. But definitely, he was very uncomfortable. He is being caught off guard in many situations. And I feel like, you know, not, not finding the kills with the ultimate, uh, as I said, being found in those positions, I think that it probably is affecting him mentally, you know, that he's not being able to perform. Yeah, but what a star for Martin as well. Yes. This guy, he was, uh, uh, he was doing well in tier two, but the fact that he could do this against Fnatic is basically showing showing us how, uh, these, why these teams are winning the region that we are. But moving on to the next map as we look at Agent uh, Select, Ooh. what are we expecting from Split? I mean, I was expecting maybe some kind of uh, change within Fnatic. We know that you can <laughs> still play this composition, obviously, but you know, I was expecting something more cheeky, maybe a little bit more away from that sky, maybe more uh, into the double controller or changing the duo list, maybe something in, along those lines. What do you think, Luther? Well, I feel like that's, that sky was actually costing a lot of teams in the previous um, matches the maps because mm -hmm. you're running out of the uh, utility so fast, you're losing the map control so fast. I'm really worried about uh, Leo's performance in the sky when it comes to the utility, not about the decision making or the shooting, but from the other side, we have the Carmen Corp a very unique composition with an absolute banger. Oh, I smell an upset coming. And what a great day it will be if we're sending Keiko and Heretics, uh, Pansy and Tom Biz of the teams to Masters Madrid, because that is what is at stakes here. <laughs> I, 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 there, there's something happening. It does feel unnerving being here. Um, KC picking up map one. Hey, that was fantastic. Doing that on, you know, Fnatic's map choice, it's, it's a rare accolade. It's, it's a very short list that just had another name added to it. But can you do it again? Yeah. Back to back. Can you walk into a map like Split and push Fnatic aside? Might be one of the greatest rebuilds in history. Yeah. From 10th place in the regular season to beating Fnatic to qualify to the first Masters. <laughs> Who predicted that? Who is in French? I think Steel did. I genuinely think Steel actually predicted KC to do well. No, he doesn't know worry. anything about you. No, that's true, that's true. That's true. Um, and oh god, oh god. Uh. Alpha, Alpha's dead. Al Alpha, Alpha was dead 30 seconds ago, but he just didn't know it yet. Plant's gonna come in. KC. Uh, this looks like the pistol might be theirs. I mean, okay, Chronicle's got some kit left. Doug's still got the paint shell. We've got a flash with Leo. Be fine, right? We don't have a late mid lurk coming out from Magnum that you got to worry about. Ah, he's buying loads of time as well. He's going to hear all these steps. He's heard them. He's seen them. And that's another one gone. This is... This is this is nerve wracking. I'm I'm getting nervous watching this. There's so many low players, though. That's the only that's thing in Fnatic's favor. Yep. I don't even know if they clear Martin, though. Like, at this point, who's still sat in that corner without swinging? That's, uh, that's, a, that's a Marlene that's position a right there. there. <laughs> yeah, you don't clear that. <laughs> Why would you? Like, literally, you, you're <laughs> fighting his teammate on the corner yeah. for a good yeah. five seconds, and Martin's like, oh, you got this, bro. No, I don't, you don't need my help. I'm um, nervous. In the, in the best possible way, but I'm nervous. But the thing that's interesting about this matchup is two different sides of the coin. Fnatic have come in with exactly the same composition they were running last year, yeah. and Casey have come in something I expect Angel to come up with. Like, it's, it's just some, or, or maybe Team Liquid last year. Sorry, Sliggy. Or maybe the, was it a year before I always that? No, blame Sliggy. Sliggy, Sliggy comps. Sliggy banned me from no, his I chat. Mean, no, I no, literally no, no. mean it is his comps, double smokes. Like, yeah. that, that's, that's a yeah. Sliggy thing to do. Well, Didn't I... work with Liquid, though. Well, <laughs> neither did Sliggy. <laughs> He's in the next room. <laughs> uh, he banned me from his chat. He deserves it. It's fine. Oh. Nasty boy. Um, let's see if they can keep it clean here. Fnatic going for, uh, you know, trying to do what they can. They, they've got classics, right? So you're just playing as a pack. Planted. Trying to achieve anything possible. Not not particularly easy. The Bulldogs are coming out. The Stingers are here. This is going to be, yeah, it's just free farm. If anything, you don't really want Tomasi's ult to be building up. You'd want someone no. else's, but you'll take what you can get at this point. You just want to kind of get the job done. He just wants it all himself, doesn't oh. he? And he's going to get it near on all himself. All right. And nab one away at the end, but still. Beautiful stuff here. KC, off to the perfect beginning. Yeah, and, and Andalusia flawless. And the only thing I, I disagree with about his ult, yeah, you don't want that. Yeah. But just how confident this kid oh. has been playing. Give him the frags. 100%. Let him do what he wants. Because he was the best player. Again, I, I know that people have been watching. Ah, you might be overstating. No, he was the best player in a server with Fnatic in the last map. On Lotus. 
like there's there's barely anyone who can sit there and go even if you beat them somehow yeah. you're not going oh, i was the best yeah, player yeah, in that yeah. game like normally alpha's there normally someone, someone is there but tom is the best of them all okay let, let's let's focus in on casey here because they've got a decent purchase in this one uh, i mean fanatic obviously gonna be coming in with the uh, first real touch of weaponry in chronicle let me be careful to not isolate <laughs> ah, what is going on Harry's gonna be grinning from that one that's a freebie no trade nothing yeah, that, that's, that's the thing with this composition. The double smokes just allow you to create chaos. Yeah. And that, that is exactly what KC want. They want to face you up close. They want this stinger to be able to bridge the gap. Boaster now under pressure. Yeah. Has support from Alpha at the back of the site, Big but KC will pick up the pace and then slow right back down. Yeah. Let you get in your own head. I'm also just looking at where Tomazzi still is. Yeah, Boaster, good paranoia there. Trying to buy a little bit of time. Shin's on the way, though. And Boaster's position is, is running short. He can't stick around yeah. here too long. He's going to have to call in Alpha, which he is doing. But Narrate, oh, Darker with the drive-by. That removes a little bit of the problem, right? So they can hit those rotations, but they aren't. They're still sticking where they are. There's just so much faith in Alpha and Boaster. This is a lot on the plate. There's, there's bodies everywhere. Boaster going to bail him out with another. That's brilliant. Oh, and again, lovely work from Boaster. That is precise work from Fnatic and a reminder of who they are. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised he was able to stay up there as long as he was, but yeah. it seemed like Casey may be a little bit more tentative in this round as to whether or not they force him off. I think they were also just giving time for Narrate because although he doesn't win that duel, yeah. it is still a little bit scary that he was able to get there in the first place. And it took somebody wide swinging a player down towards spawn to actually clear him out of position. Even still, I don't know if Fnatic can let them have that much space. Like you're talking about A Heaven, B push all the way into spawn. Like they get away with it this time, but I want to see a little bit more control. Okay, let's 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 keep an eye on that. I mean, Chronicle does look to be trying to maybe Here. support towards Boaster a little bit closer this time, hoping to not get caught out. <laughs> Here. The jiggle jump flash. My a favorite. classic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting not through. Really put off by this by any means. They're still progressing up towards middle. That does look like a triddle right there. It's Brazil. Chronicle. Oh! See ya. <laughs> he couldn't even get the flash out in time before Narrate's already taken his head this off. This feels like bullying. I'm about to call in the bully hunters at this point. This this feels unfair to Chronicle. He's just been manhandled every round. And it's going to be Boaster and again Alpha. Though those two were exceptional last time, but how many times can we ask them to do this? And, and it looks like KC have got the space this time again. But Boaster, again, trying to defend with his life. It's still Alpha here, so they've got so much more to do. 40 seconds, they're still eyeing up this B site. The cavalry's on the way. Leo's coming over. Dirk is coming over. And KC don't have the same amount of room. The only scary thing is if they can actually two-man push into Alpha. They've done just that. Leo with the trade. Great trade back, though, from Tomasi. Not letting it slip away from the 1v2 for Durka here. Not gonna happen. Shin prowling around, finding him. KC, they are individually, bit by bit, breaking apart Fnatic. Yeah, I, I think Fnatic kind of hoped that that smoke would fade. They'd have timing to play in a bit more of a crossfire, but they just don't allow it. And that's the thing. It wasn't even the swing coming out from Tomazi. It, it was just a raw fight taken by Narei. Yeah. He just feels confident in his ability and has a decent idea of where Alpha's going to be because it was exactly the same as the round before. And, and it, it just feels unthinkable that they've been able to do this time and time again. Alpha's one of the best on this. In, in, in any of these scenarios, Alpha is so good. And again, they've gone for a gamble play here, Fnatic. Maybe feeling that, oh, they're surely going to switch up and hit an A piece now. Surely with everything they've got, this would make sense. You know, they've got you know, X ult, they've got this going for them. No. They've done a very similar look here. Again, a little bit of an early look towards B, force the rotations back, almost back to this default for Fnatic. The adjustments boaster. That judge has got to deliver here. No look towards Chronicle, so they know that something's different. They know that something has changed. And you can see the response. Yeah. Yep, there it is, red alert. They can't walk into that lightly, and they don't. They force him away as far as possible. Narrate's looking for Alpha. That's what he wants. And he spot him out in time. Oh, Alpha, that's so audacious to try and go for that. But he knew his life was numbered. His time was dwindling. Boaster can't hit a barn door with it. <laughs> Desperate to try and find a connection. But still, look who's still lingering around. There's still players up here. Shin's still up here. Ooh. Gets cleared out by Durka. That's the difference. Finally, they have a step forward. Yes, 
still with a chance in this round. Absolutely. They've got the heals available if they need it, but right now everybody on Fnatic is healthy. Left. It's Narrate who's low. Trying to get that plant Spike down. Chronicle! Spike He's down. had enough Feet. of being pushed around this map. He wants in and he gets it. That is classic Chronicle there. Lovely work for the man who's not really found his footing until then. No, a lot of this has seemingly been a lot about those individual fights, though. As said, like, I think what is it, at least what it feels like is yeah. KC are using these smokes to make things scrappy, and then Fnatic are having to almost go down to their level. It's something we talk about with a lot of top teams. Sometimes they get dragged into positions where they have to almost box their way out. Looking like Fnatic might try and take a little bit more initiative in this round, though. And it's, the only thing is they always seem to do it when their opponents are low on cash. God, and there's the hero rifle again. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine this time. Right? Straight up through heaven again. They love this mid-pressure, KC. Durka. This angle can be quite deadly. Not going to get what he wants from it, though. Going to have to rescind away fall. And they forced him a little deeper. They're losing some of that control towards the middle. Again, keep your mind towards an array here. Everyone else is on classics. They're trying to cause a little bit of an issue. And actually, Dirk is in a lot of danger. They're trying to close down towards him. Closer on the bailout, though. They're going to keep him safe. Chronicle comes online, and now it's just down the shin. Only for a second. Well handled. Again, the tempo coming out from KC is very cold, and then suddenly it's blisteringly hot. The thing is, though, I think actually it's been Boaster a lot of the time who's been able to quell this yes. onto a, a flyer individually. Tomasi as well, like, I think it was 5-0, and zero, slowed down a little bit for some of those early rounds. And we're starting to see them go for the same sort of play again. A lot of it has been this sort of mid-crunch in towards the B-side. I think Fnatic are starting to do well. Okay, we'll take some B-main control because there's only been Tomasi there for the majority of rounds. And it does look like, even without some sort of pause, they've realized what their opponents are doing and adapting. And to be fair, if we're going to be talking very cle you know, clearly about this and not really you know, pulling punches, you expect that from someone like Fnatic. Yeah. They, they are a championship winning level team. They, they should be able to adjust on the fly. So we are starting to see that come yeah. into effect, which is hopefully going to bolster their scoreboard numbers. Is it 3-3 three to three still? Durka trying to make the most of the utility in mid by isolating one of the players, but they've already drifted ahead. Now, this camera has been the downfall of many. And, uh, yeah, you can see the response. Chronicle, uh -oh. ready. Camera goes, so they've got to be a bit more careful now, but they know there's presence here. Yeah, the aggression in B main, it, it's yeah. a little bit late, though. Like, the rest of the rotation will take a while. Boaster can use from the shadows to get in in time, but it looks like they may just try and do some damage and play retake. Yeah, they've got one on the site. Spike's not one of them on the site, though. Keep that in mind. They've forced Fnatic back towards CT. Spike's about to cross and go down. As it stands, they have a 5v3 on the Spike side, so they're being very, very careful to not fall prior to this. Magnum's position could work well with Tomasi. Chronicle trying to clear. And this is the retake starting from heaven. This is scary times. Martin trying to get all the attention, but it's oh. actually Tomasi to fall. Durka going to prime out of the position. Magnum now swings, and he takes down Chronicle. The timing on oh. this is not good at all, but shit on the train. Narate, Narate's gone undetected, still standing, takes down Durka, it's messy as hell, but it's still a problem. Shin and Martin, where are they in this? Leo trying to get closer, it's Shin on the site itself. Look at him tucked in the corner, Martin, it's all one! He's still doing damage, but look at the HP here, Boaster, surely, surely he's got enough for this one. Martin's creeping closer, the timing, I don't think he's got any more time! Martin goes down with the ship and gets KC another round. It was one HP for the majority of those fights. Just being able to, again, just cause issues by staying alive for a ridiculous amount of time. And I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody jump down from the top rope and use a nightfall at the same moment. Also, that one kill from Magnum, that takes away the Rolling Thunder. That's that true. removed the entire plan from Fnatic. It was one kill, Rolling Thunder going together, and he gets that kill, and okay, the nightfall was manic, <laughs> but... He'd already done enough for his team to basically ruin the setup of Fnatic. Okay. That's the first time we see them test that A side as well, because, again, if you roll your mind back to every time we've seen kind of Fnatic on this sort of map, that camera just gives them so you much more freedom. It. Divide going to go through. Let's see if they're up to anything here. Cover going out. Boaster. Gonna note this. Paranoia is perfect. He's got to fall away here. Try and send one back. Maybe tee up Durka instead. Set that second layer into. Oh my god, Narate. Oh, this guy's an animal. Gonna find a second. The site's theirs. And oh, they're so clean, Tom. They're so goddamn clean with it. 
It's Alpha in a 1v5. The spike's already down. He might as well just go back towards A. What are you meant to do? It's absolutely ridiculous. Give Eng three duelists, he'll win you a tournament. That's what it seems like at this point. He's done it with Gambit, and I, I don't know what miracles he's pulled off to get players like Thomasy ready for the smoke roll. Martina and the rate on this double duelist is just fearsome. What can Alpha even do here? Is there even any point? Ace. Ugh. <laughs> I, I think he's just trying to drift away. I mean, the money, maybe they could do a bit of damage to it, but... Even then, you're clutching at straws, really. Should be fine here. Oh, mine core. Now, start of the year, start of the season. I don't think I saw this one happening. I'd, I'd imagine the production would have got the UI wrong, if anything. But hey, <laughs> producer Kevin is absolutely perfect these days. We don't, we don't question old Kev. He's, he's on the money. Now, someone who's not on the money this time around is Fnatic. Their buy is uncomfy. They've got a couple of, well, they've still got Chronicles ult. That's still been sticking around, but they just haven't had opportunity to use it. It feels like Carmine yeah. Core have been almost... What is Narrate about to do? I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit nervous because I've just seen this, this whole look. But again, look at the other side as well. Dirk has just flown down middle. They know this is going to be an ABs. Like, there, there's no subtlety to this. He's just TP'd and he's just pushed away Alpha, essentially. I think he's trying to just give the info over to the showstopper. That's literally the goal. Yeah. Oh, and a nice attempt from Leo, but it's nothing. KC have just, just, they've just won the site. They've just won the site. Any sort of problems are, are done for. I, I'm, I'm, if I'm Fnatic, I'm calling a timeout after this one. They are being pushed around here. Carmine Core, yeah, it's a bit messier. It's not as clean, but they've absolutely got them dead to rights. Poster, yeah. Gonna get a little bit of a one on the way out, but Durka, 1v2. Uh, and look at these, look at these post plant positions. Really nice readjust. Not making it comfortable at all. No, no fair fight for Durka to have. Yes. Look at it, look at it. <laughs> he, he knows, knows where it. they're going to be. Yeah. But the fact is they're wrapping around from another angle as well while the time is being bought. He's screwed. There's a shoulder check. So I need to check on this. There it is. And there's the... Oh, oh Durka, you're still an animal on your aim, but it doesn't matter. The round is Carmine Cores. Again, they have answers for absolutely everything. We've seen them almost over hit that B site, right? They were bullish yeah. in their approach. They were like, we, we are hitting B, and Fnatic have hit the brakes because yeah. KC have been stringing together rounds now. They're getting into it. <laughs> the, he actually, the original plan is to showstopper him, and instead, Martin goes, you know what? I can have this one myself. I, do it. I think he actually gets hit by his own teammate showstopper because he killed the guy before he did it. It's just, I feel like these two players, especially Martin and Narei, they have a plan, and sometimes they're styling on their opponents so hard they don't even need the plan anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, it's, this just doesn't feel real yet. There's something about this that feels completely out of character. I mean, you're looking at that scoreboard, and, and it's not really about kills if you're, you no. know, if you're talking big game, but you want to see activation from, you know, Durka, Alpha, Chronicle, and Leo, if I'm honest. Boasters towards the top of the board, he's doing great. We saw that <laughs> hold towards B, he was desperately it's like doing Pronax, what he can. isn't it? <sighs> Pronax top of the board, that means they're not winning. <laughs> <laughs> I got in trouble last time I, I said these sort of things, all right? I had NA being really upset when I, you know, said Cutler shouldn't be the one top fragging, but here we are. <laughs> that's, that's a long time in the past, but three rounds consecutively for KC, right? See, kind of, we've seen this mid hit that they've got, nice, high tempo, big pressure towards it. They've been able to, a couple of times, outdo Alpha and Boaster on that nice little setup they have there. They've been bullying. Chronicle aside, he's been struggling to find his footing, which is rare, right? Chronicle is that rock normally. You don't see bad series often from him. He's just not had much play here. No. And it looks like they've explored that A site. Sure, they've kind of you know pressured that. They're coming back towards B. Back once again. Let's see if they can handle it this time. Massey creeping closer this time. He has to fall back. They've already spotted the setup, though. That's the thing. A lot of what Fnatic were doing just moments ago was taking yeah. that B main control. And Casey, yeah. I don't even know if they plan to go towards the B side. It doesn't look like it. Their whole plan is just to force Fnatic back, Gun remove their information, and pressure elsewhere. Bombay out. I'm looking at the positions. I'm looking at that spike. It was drifting up towards the vents, but they've opted Dropping against spike. it here. Minutes still to play with. No alts for Casey. On the other side, Alpha's got his and Chronicle, of course. Still with that, but they've they've kept the three players towards A, so maybe feeling like it is time to drift back through towards that B site. 
breaking off here is not easy. Look how far forward the Fnatic players are on A. I, I think they still firmly believe it's going to be on this side of the map. They are nowhere near a rotation. They're only just using the Tiger. Now they'll have the info, but it might be too little too late. Now let's see if they can weather the start. Oh, no, 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 oh, there's no gorgeous. way. Boaster is dead to rights. He can't play his way out of that one. And Alpha's on an island. Maybe Chronicles ult could seconds. help. Great work towards the first. Can't swing the second though. KC have bodies. And they've still got this lovely positioning in heaven. Shin's still here. He's holding this safe. Those Spike long planted. road rotations are not going to do enough here. Leo would have to clear out, try and find this player who's drifting in middle. He'd have to do so much, and he knows that's just not happening. It's time to save. No, they, they've had him almost out of the game. That, that's the, been the insane thing so far. Like You can see the way that Fnatic was setting up. They fully believed this was going to be an A-take. Absolutely. And, it, and the thing is, I think a lot of it comes down to Martin, because I, we saw a round ago, he started throwing in fakes onto the A-site mm. and would just TP to the other side of the map. He's with the team when they execute, yeah. and it just leaves that Fnatic are almost left in doubt of like, well, he could still be here, so we have to use utility. I have to stay here while you use the utility to cover you. And in the meantime, they're like, right, guys, execute. And there's, well, you saw what happened to Boaster. Blinded <laughs> completely. No and just a blast pack up. Like, yeah, you're screwed. Yeah, there's no getting away from that. It, I, and, and this, uh, and I don't even want to put it on Boaster, for example. Like, you can't escape that. That was no. targeted. Look at him. There's no way out. They, they, they'd seen that position. They've, they've been learning as they go. And they've absolutely executed. It's 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 just perfection. I'm waiting to see if we see even a back-to-back -back timeout from Fnatic potentially coming in at some point. I mean, I, they are struggling here. If they don't find a solution, they are watching Madrid slip through their fingertips. For a team that is meant to be championship level, grand finalists, you know, you're talking the heavy hitters. Missing Madrid is unforgivable. Same again. Costa wanting to try and challenge for control. And it's actually more imperative in this round because look at the buy. It, it's not pretty. Oh, great attempt on the Paranoia to slow this down. He is under so much scrutiny here. He's trying to get out of danger. Does he get to live? Does he get to keep his Ooh. life? He does off the back of Leo here. That's fantastic. The boys are playing together this time. Fnatic has 4-5 basically playing on this one. Leaving Alpha alone at A, just saying, just stack the bodies. Keep them all here. We need numbers. And it's worked for now. Magnum and Shin, though. Can they make this costly? Can they do any more damage to them? What can they do about this? Mostly they've been the backbone. All right, you'll look at these two players, especially yeah. Shin. I think he's like four on four or something right now because his only impact has really been in post plants. So using his utility well, doesn't need to get those kills, just staying alive. Now they are going to have an opening on that A side. Now, of course, the cam is here. Alpha's going to be able to spot this, but for Fnatic, you're not taking any gambles at this stage. You're down in the map by a considerable margin, and you're in a 5v2. You have no reason to try and play this individually, and he already has the info that they're on that side of the map. I, I think I might have preferred someone sitting a little seconds closer left. here just to keep space so you don't get someone trying to slip ahead. Because, again, if you're Carmine Core, you're looking for a pick, right? You're looking for anyone here. You know, you're trying to you know, make, get that. That's why I'd have liked maybe to have one player a bit closer near to this, but that's fine. They have got all the information, right? Look how much they're investing for this one. Shin, they've got to work in perfect unison. Magnum and Shin have to be a, a single player near on at this point. And Fnatic are being loud. Oh, oh the top. Oh my god, Shin. Oh my god, he almost caught Boaster. It's a 1v2 and it's it's very much doable, but look at the bullets. He's only got 14 left to play with. Already on the spike, Boaster gonna get it started. He takes what? damage! He takes down Boaster! Five bullets! That's all he's got! And he's got a 1v1 up against Alpha! Another tap! Oh. And Alpha goes back to it! It's close! But they've got it! Fnatic barely making it out of that! That was a 5v2? Yep. 5v2. Yep. <laughs> 5v2. Yeah. And it was down to Alpha. Well, I, I guess Shin was just really playing that passive role because the second he was given an opportunity, I, like, it, it took the goal of basically Alpha just sitting in a smoke and hoping that he peaked. Like, if he doesn't peak there, he's won the round off time alone. It, it, it's the right decision, but that's disgusting as well. When you have 14 bullets, you can't spam. So he had to get it bang on. That's not the sort of round you expect to see, but I guess for Fnatic at this stage, it, it, they're on the board. They're, they're getting something. This is nerve-wracking time now. 
They did this last time. It's, it's the same it. execute. They have that cosmic Look divide, the then they throw in the fake. The, everything, they did the exact same thing last time, and then he TPs Let's back to the other there. side of the map. Great Seekers, though. Really oh. nice. This should keep at least that's Leo nearby, but that's another individual. Narrate's already on the site. He's been caught by the Seeker, but he's drawing out the attention. They know Leo's on the site. It was a sacrificial play near on, but Darker and Leo, a reminder, a stark reminder of who they are. Because, do you know what, in the last couple of rounds, You'd be forgiven for forgetting because this has not been traditional Fnatic. This has been a shaky look from them. And KC have looked the better team on that half. Honestly, I think if it wasn't for Boaster and his ability to delay and actually yes. have some high impact frags, I think we're looking at a 9-3, 10-2 maybe. Like, he has had some big rounds in this. And, and that's the thing. They fell for that hook, line, and sinker. They were all running in the other direction and Boaster stuck around and just about did enough for the rotation to come in. Yeah, I, I liked the investment of the Seekers. I mean, it, it had to be there in any way, but it yeah. is nice to kind of add that just safety net of, right, but they are here. We can we can commit to this. But again, it did feel like Fnatic were never on the right side. They were never comfortable okay. in those positions. We go in on the second half. Carmine Core are leading. Seven to five. One map to the good. They face Fnatic. A bit of contact. Uh, oh, oh, dear. No. Don't try. That was... You, you did a little bit of chip damage, you got all ahead of yourself, you got all excited. Poster, Poster, are you chasing this? This is this is really dangerous. Fnatic had, uh, seized. What are they doing? Fnatic needs to be so careful here. Magnum didn't know the damage he's done, maybe just trying to keep his life, not, you know, overextend a little, but Fnatic were ferocious in that, just almost here. overly hunting them down. And the rate has to back off. Only middle control currently available for Fnatic. I was, I was gonna say at the beginning, this is kind of where you expect Durka to step up. This is where the utility is centered around him taking control. Well, he's dead within the early seconds. Again, somewhat to a mistake. Just reloading while peeking an angle. It's not something you expect to see. And Casey have been there to capitalize every single time. Look at the positions they're currently holding. You have two players within A. The rest basically in spawn. They're very happy to give up that B site. And again, similarly to the last map, they are willing to play the retake more often than not. 30 seconds left. Slowly and cautiously. They are down to 20 seconds here, and they got still a lot of sight to clear. A bit worrying. Uh, Shin, not really deterred yet. 15 seconds, spike on the way. Ooh. Now there's a problem because Shin's still on the back line and he hasn't been bred out of place. Luckily, left. Chronicle is nuts at this game, so he should be able to get him a plant. Leo gonna catch anyone trying to look towards heaven. They're pushing. He's close. Oh my god, Magnum is right on them! And that is not a plant! That's not a plant for Leo! He, he can't do anything! There's nothing to be done here! He just has to sit back and watch as the defuse comes in right under his nose! He's just had to sit there and watch KC pick up the first in the second half. This is what they do. Again, you, like, I feel like Fnatic sat there and went, okay, well, they're at least going to give us a little bit of respect. They're not just going to go sprinting straight through onto the site. The insta-kill from Magnum on the player who's actually try not planting, it's just ridiculous. And you see Boaster doesn't even have time to react. No. And because of that, Leo is so, so far away. It now means that KC, they get themselves the pistol under their belt again. I'm all for Fnatic. You kind of hope him one of those heroes sort of arises and gives them something here because KC are looking like the confident ones. Someone pull on the cape. Someone get going. It's not going to be Leo this round. You're not going to get much more than that. Nope, Martin trying to heat up here. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. I'll fall back now. He's like, I've done enough. <laughs> I need to. But again, even seeing them keeping composure at these points, not overheating too badly. Yeah. You know, again, you want them confident. You want them taking challenges, taking those fights like they are favored, but you don't want them going too far. You don't want to see a rifle fall to the other hands, right? Those rounds have to be clean. Oh my <laughs> God, it Set is squeaky me. clean from our team there. Wow. Ace and an Andalusia flawless. It doesn't get much better than that. And you have to look at this now as what were the team's expectations? I've spoken to Eng, Zaysh. They said, we just want to play as many matches as possible. Don't care what the results are. We want to learn. Fnatic in interviews have gone, our goal is to win all three internationals. You might not even get to one unless something changes rapidly. And right now, we're always going to talk about this. Like, okay, now Fnatic will come back. Now Fnatic will come back. 
I think it's to the point where we almost have to say KC have been by far the better team in this match so far. No, they have. I, I don't think that's, you know, look, e everyone does like saying that I am wildly biased to Fnatic, but every time I just cast Fnatic, they win. It's very hard to not just call it how it is. But this is so much credit to KC in my mind. Seeing them come into this, watching them throughout this season, as it's showing everything. They've played so many games. Yep, right there. So there's nothing hidden, right? Yeah, you can reinvent a little bit, but again, you're playing so close to those previous games. They're still coming back in with new looks. They're still operating at such a high level. For Fnatic to fall to it, it was almost unthinkable, unforgivable. And Fnatic not out yet. But that judge could be an issue. Yeah, Narei has to show his hand there. Couldn't have been handled by Magnum, so that kind of shuts the door a little on heaven for now. Even still, you look at the positioning on the other side of the map. Martin watching, the jiggle coming out from Tomasi as well. They are prepared for this sort of push. It's what Martin can get is the main thing. Oh. And if Narei can get there in time. Good flash, and Narei absolutely good, but he couldn't quite make it work. Martin still with the trade out, and they keep that vent pressure safe. It gives him time to look towards Ralph. This is an isolated fight. Fortunately for Fnatic, Alpha is wild. He deals with Martin and gives them a chance towards the side, but have they checked on Tomasi? No, now they know, but can he do any more? He's surrounded, he's got problems up top, but they've got 10 seconds. Fnatic are running short on time here. They've got to get a move on, and Magnum wants to stop him. Remaining. Eight seconds, where's the plan? It's fallen back into the hands of Chronicle. He has to get this down, and they're closing the gap, Chronicle. This has to be it. Oh. What a bailout! He needs another! Oh, oh, he's gonna get another! Chronicle reminding you why he is the backbone, the safe pair of hands, the rock of Fnatic. I don't even feel like Casey did anything wrong there. No. Like normally no. you talk about a double peek, but they put the, the pulse, the stun on top of his head. You go, okay, well, he's only got one chance to shoot me, but that's Chronicle. If you give him one chance, he takes it. A lifeline. That cape flowing behind Let's him, that's go, for sure. It's my haircut boy, bro. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't out of the woods just yet, though. They need more. They gotta, they gotta keep finding this. Martin's going hunting. He's after you, Alpha. Run, what? boy, run. The paranoia was that's from awesome. so far away. That was targeted. That was an assassination right there. If we don't have a cam of Alpha being absolutely fuming after this, I'll be very, very surprised. Like, that is a ridiculous set play. Like, you never expect him. That in, in their heads, that's probably, oh, that's an information play. They're looking to see if we're there. They're never expecting him to just come out of the dimensional drift. And boom, Alpha here. Oh. OK, uh, one away from Alpha Chronicle here. So if you could get that this round, could make up for the player, right? Maybe? I don't know. This is tense times. Fnatic looking to commit towards the safe side. Smoke just being committed as well. So eyes towards heaven. Do they win the fight? Already you can see the adjustment. All right, trying to thread the needle just right. Chronicle has the ult ready. Spamming towards CT, looking to isolate Narate on the site. This is going to be very difficult to hold on to for Narate. Same as we said for Tomasi. Off your feet. There it is. He knows this is coming his way. Can he do anything about it, though? No. Durka is quick to task. He knows his job, and he's got the follow-up. Fantastic from him. Plant should be in. Don't think that's going to be denied. No, and the lurk from post there. Just that late presence on ramp. Just the icing on the cake. No, these are the sort of rounds you sort of expect to see from yeah. Fnatic. Like, having Drilled. that set up into play for Durka, you give him all of that, he's going to hit the shot. He, he always does. And this time, like, I was maybe a little bit worried. Like, the nade timing from the rate was fantastic. Like, they definitely had an idea that this was coming. They maybe just needed Tomasi to spam and hope that he would get something. Yeah. But didn't work out for them this time. Fnatic breaking back with a relatively clean round. And yeah, this, this was such a cool little set play. And that, that is the thing. This is where you can see that this young squad, they put the work in. Like, it, it's not like this team has formed. They've been chilling. It doesn't matter. Oh, we don't care how we do. Like They've been learning as they go. And yeah. we've always said this when it comes to, especially Yoru comps. Sometimes, the first time, you catch someone off guard. The second time, well, for them, it went pretty horrifically. They lost 13-4 <laughs> to Team Heretics. Now, it looks like they've reimagined the same composition again. Yeah, this is uh, very impressive to witness. But again, we are now seeing two rounds back-to-back -back for Fnatic here. They're starting to find their footing, at least in this half. 
It did take a little bit more work there. You know, Chronicles Alt certainly setting that into motion. Is that the most they've got in a row? It, it, well, it is. It definitely yes. is. We can see it on the screen. But yeah. that, that's, that's actually that feels ridiculous to think silly, about. doesn't it? I keep it up, though. Can't just be a flash in the pan. There's, I, I kind of thought that was going to be it for KC. You know what I mean? Just that little you know, high tempo, little dangerous individuals. No, they are very much the real deal. But into this round, you're looking at Nari, you're looking at Martin. The rifles, right? That's, that's the <laughs> punchline of this joke. Look how far yeah. back Fnatic are. Like, genuinely look at where the players outside of that B site are. They are still sat so far back, just waiting for KC to do something, because that's what they have been doing. And, and the fact is, Martin did make a move. Yeah, I kind of like that they almost tried to bait that it was narrate there, but there was still going to be Martin close. I, oh my god, oh my god. Look at the damage, look at look at Durka. That boombot yeah, saved his life. Yeah, literally, <laughs> literally saved his life. Fortunately for him, he can get a heal. Leo's going to invest that, but again, this is, look at this, look at this hunting squad. They're sending out after Alpha. He's going to be feeling so uncomfortable. He, he felt the timing dance. just right though. Credit to Alpha for that internal clock, right? Feeling out that there was something going on here. Didn't like it. And the response from Fnatic is his slow creep towards B. Trying to avoid those rifles, trying to keep them as far away as possible. There. Maybe the right choice here, but is the right timing. Left. So Massey's going to check this. It is, but Dirk is on the money. But they know now, the plan's been seen. The players are nearby. Carmine Core looking to get dangerous. The raid's going to find Durka. Here we go. How much more? Martin comes online. Magnum gets a rifle. Boaster and Leo, 13 seconds. Spike is going to go down. But Boaster needs to go big here. So does Leo. KC closing the gap! It's gonna be on Leo, a 1v3, this is just unthinkable again! Shin finds it, and Carmine Core are absolutely the real deal. That's double digits, this is map two, and Fnatic are watching round by round Madrid get further away. It truly is enjoyable just watching this pack mentality. They, they swing together, trade together, push together, and all around the map, it, it's almost like they're herding sheep. Like, Fnatic are forced where they want them to go. They play such good core Valorant, right? I know that sounds so silly at this level, but the fact that it works against Fnatic is great, right? But let's roll our minds back. When we say that, you know, thinking man's Valorant, I'm not talking about the influencer. I'm talking about Gambit back in the day, right? It was that they play beautiful Valorant, always well spaced, great trades. They play as a pack, no round is lost. They try something every single time. We're seeing it. There's echoes of that kind of Gambit-esque style shining on KC. In all of these little rounds, these little moments where they play just good Valorant, and it's enough that Fnatic have gone, we need to, we need to touch base here. Because yeah. the coaches look a little lean back. I would be worried. I'd be, I'd be nervous. Yeah, I know. Especially for Elmer Buddy, like you have to bear in mind, he is the one change. And that's a terrifying place to be if you're a yes. coach. Like I'm not gonna sit here and say like, oh, if they lose, it's entirely his fault because that no, is of ridiculous. Not. Of course not. Don't know if the community will be the same though. <laughs> People aren't quite as nice. Yeah, nice or not, they've got to come up with uh, something here, right? This, this has been... <laughs> this isn't a game that Fnatic should be trailing in like this, right? Like, they have been pushed out of the server. Casey have come in looking better prepared. They're playing better together. They've got better concepts, better comps. They've got uh, individually. That sounds... That feels obscene to yeah. say. It feels wrong to say. Martin, what Nari have been fun? nuts. Shin's been hitting as well this time. This has been uh, genuinely an unfathomable game so far. But you get to witness history very few times, and this might be one of them. Let's see, though. We're not there yet. The line has not been drawn. Madrid is still on the cards if Fnatic can close. Martin going to feel that first pressure and falls away. Yeah, the thing is, that, that was a rotate to the other side of the map. That was where they gambled initially. Way. And now you're going to see that showstopper popped early. They're, they're looking for an early fight, but there's no one. They're, they're all the way in the spawn at the moment. It, it does just seem like KC is reading the auto queue of the other side. They know where the script is going. They're so close by to this. So many eyes and ears listening and watching what Fnatic are doing here. Yeah, they'll get the plot, but it's going to be a 5v5 five 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 possible retake, and that is... I mean, maybe Echoes of Lotus a little bit here. Divide going to come in. Is there something up the sleeve? Paranoia sent. And narrate the first one in. Feeling brave. He's going to spot them out, but Doug is going to send Magno away. Martin, great work from Chronicle on the back lines, but he's down a shin now. 1v3, that's a lot to ask. And a lot of utility now put exactly towards him. And Chronicle, he's just going to be the bodyguard. If he has to stand there himself and stop him at the door, he will do. 
Yeah, he's done. Shin's off. They've done it. Fnatic again string together another off the back of the timeout. They had a plan. They executed it well. Yeah, I, I think it's one of the first times they haven't run into some sort of trap. Like there has been, yes. there was no one on the B site. They managed to isolate it. They managed to take the space with that showstopper as well. Like we talk about like Rosa Roltz, all the memes of not getting a kill, but ultimately that was the goal. Get into the site, get into yeah. the after plant. And yeah. Casey definitely seemed like they had an idea, but to give Fnatic, yeah, these sort of opportunities, eventually we're going to see them step up. I mean, I, I, again, how many times have we seen Chronicle Enemy doing, spotted. you know, again, he's, he's on what, like 12 to 12? It's not exactly like yeah. that highlight scoreline, but the value he is providing in some of these is is exceptional. So you've got to really give credit where it's due there. Now, money's still standing for both sides. You know, it's starting to wane a little for KC. You're going to see that judge coming out. I mean, maybe not the end of the world here, but Boaster. Okay. It's a massive shot onto Massey. Again, Boaster's been a bit of an unsung hero for this side in, in certain moments, but it's not just one side of aggression, and I think Fnatic have noticed that. Yeah, but they got all the info off the horn, and... Tomazi trying to make a play off the back of it, this time shutting it down. And yep. there was a push initially from Martin, but I just think he was too far behind. He would have had to run, sprint through mid, and knowing that there's five players on the other side, the value not really there. This is going to be huge, because this will actually ping that there's only one player on the B side. Fnatic instantly, okay, let's take this on. Oh, he's going to invest the, oh, he's trying it. Magnum, how much can one man do here? Yeah, look at this. Look at him trying to just dip, dodge and dive around all the bits of utility. Oh, well. It's great. Magnum, oh my god, he's threading the needle so I perfectly. Finding Boaster, catching Chronicle. Darko, can you bail him out from heaven? No! Martin's there. And oh, Leo oh, oh, oh. obliterated Carmine Core. Holding it together. Um, you thought Magnum was meant to be this kind of teed up success story. He lived the entire round. He completed a total wipeout course and then still got two kills at the end. Like, I've never seen anyone have to, like, jump over a nade. I think Look there was, this. like, just different utility flying all around him. Dodges a flash in the middle of it as well. I don't know how he manages to survive this round. I mean, call him Harry Potter. That man is the boy who lived. I don't know how he is standing. Genuinely, I don't get it. I don't get it. Did it without a scar as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah, time out. Time out. It's getting tense here. I love it. Even the crowd's getting so tense. You can feel the atmosphere shifting, right? It's when you, you see 10, you think, oh, that's, that's not great. We're against double digits. Don't love that. 11's even worse. Is this a it KC just... pause again? They learn them sweat. I, I, I don't. Uh, yeah, that's what it seems like. But I actually do think that a lot of the time, these are proactive pauses coming yes. out from Carmine Corp. It's like, okay, we won that round. We cheesed it a little bit. There was some heroics. Yeah, we'll take that. And I think also Eng just realizes, okay, if my squad gets that hype, I'll calm them back down. Yeah. Get them back into the mindset. Because the thing is, they, they haven't been doing this off momentum or off of like, just pure, oh, we're so hyped up. Yeah. We're going to win these crazy individual fights. They have been methodical in a lot of the way they played this round. They've been clever in how they actually set up different little pieces thrown in all the way through. And okay, sure, there's some heroes in there as well. Sure. I mean, I only have one question really remaining. What color is it? At this point, 11 to eight, Carmine Core leading Fnatic in map two after they claimed map one. We go again. How much in the tank for Fnatic here? They depend upon any of these greats, these absolute heroes of who they are. Can one of them be the difference out. maker now? Boaster. Taking the trip to back site. Gonna commit. But Carmine Core, they're not playing on site. Oh, it's this retake again. Now, the success of it last time wasn't particularly great. They're going early, though. Yeah, and this time it's working exceptionally well. Martin Nure gonna find a bit of success each. Boaster still breathing is gonna keep things maybe Lovely tilting shadows. Fnatic's way. They have a touch of safety on the site. The smoke up, they're gonna get the plant planted. down. Now time's on their side. Tomasi, Shin, Martin, up against Alpha, Leo, and Boaster. Those names are so weighted towards one side. But what can these young guns do? Tomasi on a little look, trying to set these guys up. Here. Allow them to work Here. forward. Time being taken, they swing and they find. Yeah. Boast has gone yeah. down, but there's still another towards the backside. That's going to be Leo. The problem is he can't take that isolated fight, and he's going he's to have to just face this. He has to try and get in there. Shin's not no. stopping. Shin is not stopping, and neither are Carmine Core. It's 11 
for them. They are one round away from booking their ticket to Madrid to deny Fnatic a chance at the first international of the year. I, I thought for sure the bait would be enough. You thought? I, I thought just leaving Leo in a corner at the backside, Boaster sacrificing himself, but they, they make it almost too easy to just clear him out. Martin with another triple, 21 and 10. We've spoken about these youngsters. Like, just win out this round. Just went out this round. round Easier round. said than done. Round Easier said. That's all you can focus on at this point, because they know it. You can feel it in the air. Something is wrong. And Martin, he's taken down Durka. Frag by frag. They are taking away the chances here. Booking themselves into the unthinkable. Everyone doubting at the start of the season. They still have to finish. They still have to get across the line. Four more kills. One minute and 14. Can they live through it? Can they defend that long? Yeah. Martin thinks so. He yeah. wants in. He's teeing him up. It's, 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 this, is, this is so much information. He sees everything. And look at Tomasi. Look at them closing in towards this. He's rejoined on the other side. It does leave space towards eight. But now he waits. Does Fnatic go for this? It's E Chronicle curious. Alpha having a look. Well, and they, they're, they're playing for retakes if they have to yeah, every single time. Terrible. They're sitting so deep. The thing is, at this point, Magnum's pushed B main, so he knows they're not going through that angle. So now everybody actually starts rotating back over to the A site. It might be Shin firmly within it, but the rest of the players are not far away. Does Shin get a freebie here? Do, do Fnatic still think there's someone on the site? Do they think they've completely evacuated the site? What, what do Fnatic read into this? They're hesitating. 25 seconds of the spike is not here. It's on the way, but Shin has not been checked on yet. He's still here. Under the cover of darkness, he gets to survive for another couple of seconds. Couldn't deal with Alpha. Site now starting to wave the Fnatic flag. The spike is down. Time's on their side. 4v4. Can they deal with this, though? Leo trying to keep track on that lovely little smoke there towards CT. You're going to make it very difficult. I think Carmine Core is going to be questioning how do they approach this heaven. The next opportunity, Tomasi's giving him at least Boaster on a plate, but there's still three more. Leo, Alpha, and Chronicle to clear, and they will not make it easy. Leo will hold this line as best he can. Narei going to try and skip forward, try and skip ahead. Time ticking. He's got one down. Oh, he's got a second. It's all on Leo. Oh, he cannot do enough. Where were you when the unthinkable truly happened? Carmine Core! Going to Madrid. I'm sure there was a day far in the future, a dream, where Magnum thought, you know what? One day I'll match up to Fnatic. I'll match up to the team that kicked me to the curb, kicked me back to the tier two, and I'll get to show them what I've got. Little did he know that dream was a little bit closer than he thought. This is unlike any of our expectations starting the day. Fnatic came in, looked all right. Carmine Core looked untouchable. This is legendary stuff you've witnessed today. From literal zero to hero, Carmine Core, that previous roster didn't work out. This new collection, these young guns, these talents, full faith in the system. And my God, have they done bloody well. You cannot say they don't deserve this. Last wow. year, EMEA were a one-team region. This year, that team doesn't even make it to the first event. I, I think we've got some new hot shots down on the stage who have just proven that anybody can bleed, anybody can fall. Na'Vi earlier in the day to Heretics. Now, Carmine Corp have done it as well. Welcome to the new era, folks. This is a whole new look to EMEA. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush.
Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Taking risks, yeah, I always go all in Swear to God that I'm deaf to the talking I can't hear it, see the finish line I know that I'm near it, yeah Cut the check and I'ma clear it Ain't nobody out here that I'm fearing Ay. Easy to see things all run away up Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm trying to get my weight up That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way Hey, you ain't real, it's like you got a few disguises. Walk in the room, I know I'ma be the flyest She like me, yeah, it's hard for her to hide it One on one, ain't nobody like this Got this far by doing me, I'm everything I knew I'd be I don't care what we used to be, no, yeah They try and get close to me, you can't get what you want from me I got this vision you can't see, no Easy to see things all run away up Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm tryna get my weight up That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes That's just the way it goes, the way it goes That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes That's just the way it goes, the way it goes That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes That's just the way it goes, the way it goes That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes Welcome back, everybody, to the post plan segment of the day. We don't have, we have not one, not two, but three guests coming to you guys today. We're in for a treat. Uh, first of all, Martine, and congratulations. Thank you for joining me. And Sliggy as well. What did you make of uh, that game? Really good game. Yeah, really, really good. I mean, I, I never get to win anything anymore, so this is the close I get to winning. So <laughs> I was like, please, can I can I come on? Can I kind of enjoy the moment with them? So yeah, but this was such a nice game to watch. Oh, yeah, Just was everything great. was It was perfect incredible. Valorant, I feel like. Yeah. Um, how are you two feeling? I'll start with you, Martine. Um, you know, not even, what, like two months ago before this, you weren't even in VCTA and EMEA, you come here and now you're going to Madrid. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels amazing because I at start I couldn't literally like find my form on stage and 
progressed today. I found it and it feels amazing to win against Fnatic. Oh god, it, it looked amazing as well what you uh, managed to do. And N, welcome home. We missed you. Uh, you were qualifying for lots of tournaments when you were uh, coaching Gambit M3C before. So how does it, uh, what does this one mean to you, being able to qualify here on, on LAN as well? Because we, we never really got to see you play LAN in EMEA. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I have, I know I, most of the time I'm just calm, you know, even right now we are winning, but I don't know. I, I don't feel, no, I will feel something. I feel like maybe in two, three hours when I will realize, oh, so yeah, we actually won some really, really great teams. And yeah, but right now, I don't know. You're used it's, to it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not wanna like, I'm him. Like, I'm, I'm just really, uh, I'm all the, all the time calm. Uh, yeah. Trying to be, at least. I, I can see it from the coach's camp because you just kind of give Zayshik yeah. a cheeky little yeah. high five. Uh, you've been in this position before, Sliggy. Team Liquid versus yeah. Gambit qualifying. <laughs> it's a very exciting icebox. Similar thing as well, where we did like a heavy comeback and then we the players did a pause at like 12, 11, and I was like, don't give this guy a chance to talk. And then it gives them a chance to talk and then they win the whole game. This is the thing, it's, he's, he's deadly. The anti-strat is, uh, is outrageous. Even just the stuff with the team, I definitely want to ask you about that. Like, um, I'm seeing, even in these situations where it's maybe not like set plans from the get-go, um, but I saw like, a, so it was a 3v2. I think it was like relatively, relatively late. It might have been 11, eight. Um, and they're going into the B site, they stun back site, they kill one close, and then it's like a it's like a split crossfire. Mm -hmm. And just like the calmness of the team to smoke over and just diffuse to create the pressure to then like break the crossfire. Have you like been training a lot with yes, the... We trained train uh, kind of this moments. So we call it internal training. <laughs> yeah. Literally, we play against each other, like 3v3, 3v2, these mm. situations, and we just call, you know, we're just trying to simulate a lot of situations. But yeah, we did it like before we came like uh, here uh, in Berlin. And so kind of we just, I don't know, just understand what to do, kind of. I will say, yeah, we just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and for you, uh, Martin, as well, being, you know, you know the protocol, you know what you're supposed to do, but to actually execute it against so many good teams in this region, it's easier said than done, right? You, you, everybody knows what to do, but to actually do it is very impressive. So um, how much pressure did you feel today? Or maybe you didn't feel any pressure. And uh, at what point were you kind of like, oh my God, we could do this and to try and stay calm and make sure you do win it? So me personally, I barely felt any pressure. The only exactly. pressure I felt was against Heretics. And after that, I just kind of changed my mindset. And uh, Yeah, and how did you stay calm towards the end there? Because it was getting quite tense. I feel like it's like the energy in the team. Because I feel really comfortable with everyone, like we're friends. And uh, it's just great to play with them. I feel no pressure. The vibes are good. Yes. Yeah, the vibes. But also, he's just calm guy, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very he's calm guy. Um, if you if you want to take a look behind you, um, your stats against uh, a two-time world champ Damn. winning duelist, by the way. Like How do you feel about this? Well, uh, I'm just better. <laughs> <laughs> And what did you think, Sliggy, watching this as well, I've, between the, these two, this I've, I've been enjoying it. This, I mean, this, it didn't feel like Durka kind of didn't really step up to the levels that I'm thinking, but I, I do, I love watching you play, especially the amount of shorty kills you're getting. Not many people are using a shorty. You're always like double, double satchel in shorty kills. So yeah, I'm okay. impressed, you're kind of fearless. Wanna sit here and hear it closer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you're always good for two. It feels like it doesn't just stop at one, right? You're, you're watching these jewelers, they, they go in, they get one, but you're always getting two, sometimes three as well. Um, is there anybody that you're kind of, uh, now you've taken down Dirk, anyone else on your list, like Jewelers you want to play against? You want to check that off? I want to play against Demon 1 and uh, Aspas. Ooh, wow. Well, There's well. a chance. Not, not a chance for Aspas just yet because mm. of what happened ah. with Leviathan. Yes. But um, what, what do you make of the Demon 1 versus Martin, Sliggy? What do you think? Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess hopefully we get to see it, is what I'm Say thinking. Through, just yeah. 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 Sliggy, give I'm it, man, it. give yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I've, I've been we're in, I've been, we're I've been here. I just want to say, it. calm down, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and trying to keep you in check. Actually, yeah. I'm glad you brought up that attack pause when you played against uh, Gambit because 11-8, you guys win a really big round and you call attack pause. So, uh, and why? I uh, so today. I yeah, yeah, just I now on split. Oh, ah, ah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, because. Uh, I don't want to reveal like what my thinking process, but let's say I just heard the call and I thought it's the wrong call. So I just, yeah, and I immediately pause it and say it, what we need to do like two next rounds and it's kind of work it because of, we kind of, we said, so Magnus said what they are doing and it was a great read, but then he said like what we need, like, I don't know, the worst play kind, not worst, the worst play, but let's say not the best play. Mm. And I like, okay, so no, <laughs> like I need to pause and like say like what to do because it was 100% uh, he 
he knew what to do, but just under pressure, sometimes you can say, let's say, wrong, like, wrong call. That's also, it. new IGL, right? Not yes, 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 yes. It's, it's fine, yeah. Yeah, 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 for that long. Yeah. I, I was going to ask, actually, how is he, like, how is he growing as, like, an IGL? Because, again, he has, a, he has a lot to learn. Um, are, you, are you feeling like you, you need to step in and kind of, like, or are you kind of like trusting on, on a lot of his calls at the moment? So first of all, I trust uh, like, uh, I don't know, just everybody on team. I believe in them and yeah, it's just, that's why they are here. About Magnum, we had a plan. So we step by step, uh, let's say, I don't remember everything exactly, but the first thing that I said to him, you just working on attack as you want, do whatever, I don't mind. I'm like fully on defense, so I will show you like, how to play defense, blah, blah, blah. And then we step by step, I just also kind of, let's say, I don't know, just not, I don't want to say teach, but I help him a lot also on attack, how to play, how to see the game. And right now I would say, I. I don't know, he's just doing everything by himself and he's kind of understand what to do. It's the gambit way, it's the yeah. gambit <laughs> way. Yeah, yeah. You know, the pracs, the protocols, uh, the, the IGLing and everything. And Martin, you know, we had uh, Nare and Tomazi here before and they were telling us about their trial process and, you know, they also trialed as duelist and I know, Enda, you told Tomazi, like, you got to play more flex. Uh, so what was that like for you? What was your trial process? What was your uh, reason for joining, Casey? Uh, so... I was trialed for the list, and then uh, after the first day, they told me that. Oh, you for trialed as flex also once or two days? Yeah, once yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at first, as mocks, yeah. first day I was trialed as the list, and Eng told me to get ready to post my high school, <laughs> which was kind of funny for me. <laughs> yeah, I said. <see> it. <laughs> <laughs> <I see> it. <laughs> <laughs> and then after the after the first day of trials, uh, Eng kind of told me that like I passed the trials already, but he wants to see me on smokes and uh, flex as well, and I trialed on them. What was the reason that you wanted to join Casey? Did you, I mean, you made that decision at the end? Well, I had two offers, but the uh, KC offer and Ang being as a coach just... Uh... It's end. It's end. Sigi, when are you going to come out of retirement? He won, he won the full salary. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. Uh... I, I'm looking at the competition and I'm, I'm fine where I am. No, the you don't want to come and challenge Ang for a it. bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, let him, I'm, I'll let him do his bit for a bit. I'm enjoying watching. Dude, the anti on Lotus today. Mm. You know, yeah, that was, that's nice. Like the wall as well that you're yes. doing when they push up their wall. It was Magnum actually. Idea. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah like like this, yeah. I, I do want to talk about that because um, if you guys didn't know, um, before today, you guys have played around 600 minutes uh, of Valorant, uh, like on, on LAN, and Fnatic played 100. So you've played six more times than them. So on paper, people are kind of talking about, in terms of anti-strat, you don't have the edge. So uh, how did you come in to prep for this? And uh, is, is that from scrims as well? Because Bosa said that you guys scrim each other too. Uh... So first of all, uh, they played this kind of the same Lotus that they played before, and uh, most of the, I don't want to say a lot of, uh, like, let's say it, it, we just had a plan, uh, and we uh, wanted to see if it's working, we keep doing this. If not, like, we just, I don't know, we'll improvise and do something mm. else. But uh, yeah, just, uh, our anti-strat kind of worked. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's re really, it worked. <laughs> is that what you think went wrong as well for you, Martin? What, what, what do you think, uh, why do you think Fnatic weren't able to kind of uh, turn up today? Was it just like you guys were better? Is there anything that they played differently that you didn't expect? They were scared of the big Tomasi. I mean, the Odin, the Odin was doing uh, doing his round. And, and what do you think? Why do you think they didn't? It was one of the part of anti-strat, like playing Odin, because we barely played Odin before. But to be honest, we changed a lot of things. Like if you compare our games, like game by game, even Split, Lotus, we changed a lot of things. Like the rotations, the positions, uh, uh, Guns also, Thomas today, he played like much more Odin than before. I feel like we didn't play, I don't know. Oh, no, we played a few times on screams, but yeah. Are you all... changing things to for teams specifically, yeah, are you yeah, changing yeah. things because you are playing Fnatic? So we can, we have our defaults, and then in these defaults, we play we changing some things like so how they should uh, act around the map, around uh, some zones, and like blah blah. blah. Or sometimes we have specific round, like specific uh, round how to anti strat enemy, but most of the time it's only one or two rounds. How are you supposed to win against this? <laughs> That's what I mean. How are you it's, supposed to it's win? It's so impressive. <laughs> I, I love it though, because I've, I've been the, the Fnatic comp. I've kind of been a little bit like on my on my stream being like, I think this has weaknesses. Mm. And I'm just loving the, like when they wall up to take back, you just have an Odin spray him down, just chip damage. 
another wall is there as well to just deny info and yeah and this is a lot of just it's like heavy a eh? and your retakes oh my goodness the retakes on c chef's kiss I, i'm not gonna lie that that was a uh, random <laughs> our retakes because of today it was like so, oh, really? so yeah you know we it's kind of from the viewer perspective it looked like oh oh like yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, but in our comps sometimes it was like I don't hectic know, it's like not hey it was like madness it like was <laughs> <laughs> sometimes uh, really like yeah. yeah how do you remember this martin like you gotta you gotta do this and then you gotta do this for this team you gotta change this do you have like a notebook is it all in the brain like how do you guys actually execute end's vision well uh i just listen and do it <laughs> it's that easy it's that easy just that's listen and do it why simple. is nobody else doing that uh do, do you find any difficulties in that anything challenging for you no but uh Eng's, like a uh, very different coach from how i was like coached previously and uh, i respect him a lot in, in, what sense? in what sense is he different like what is it about him that's different? in the way he coaches and explains stuff I feel like I want to play for Keiko. You guys looking just for? Just imagine I'm explaining with my English. Of course. No, your like English is great. Your English <laughs> is absolutely explain. great. I will say though, tomorrow, revenge, grand finals. You know, you got a team that you've already played against, Team Heretics, and also uh, the winner, of course, gets three points. In the past, we the, the grand finals didn't seem like it was as worth playing for, but those three points are going to be massive, uh, especially going to next split. So, uh, Martin, for you, anything that you feel about this rematch? Something that you you feel like maybe you, you got to do differently? And how do you how do you beat them tomorrow? Well, I'll just swing more because it's online. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I love these answers. I, 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 yeah, you, 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 you picked up some good ones. And, and what about you? How do you, how do you feel about this rematch? I, I don't know. We just want to play. To be honest. We already. I'm not. You know. It's. I don't want to uh, go into this game with the mindset. Oh, I want to revenge. I want to win them. I want to. We still young team, and we want to play with learning mindset. I'm always the time saying them. Just play with learning mindset, guys. You need to. Right now we have momentum and keep doing uh, like your like stuff that's it i mean you're gonna you're not gonna leak anything but sleeky you've watched enough of their games and enough of heretics's games how do you think it's gonna go and what do you think n is gonna do like what are we gonna see tomorrow i, I think it should be pretty cool that because honestly these are like the two teams that i would say have have anti like the most and probably come up with the most new stuff as well so it's actually someone that is like a nerd on the minimap just loving it like i'm i'm nerding out big time so in terms of how it's gonna yeah. go i don't know I, I i'm impressed with how much they changed up like your play style but they got it's, enough time you think from now it, until yeah, tomorrow I to think, change again I, I think i mean i think they did so so much in such a short time anyway i think so it's harder it's a best of five as well so it might go a little bit but i, I think heretics also need to change up some of their stuff so we'll see yeah i feel like everybody's going to be uh, looking forward to this matchup uh, we got a, just a couple more questions first of all um, i know you have numbers on your jerseys i know you don't wear a jersey and but um what can you show us what number you have and what it means because we spoke to tomazi and Naray and they explained a little bit about uh, you know what the number means so if you you can stand up we can we can turn around and have a look right now I have we've number got 24. yeah make sure you guys if you're buying a kc jersey 24 martin right in there uh yeah what does it mean why, why do you rock the 24? Oh, it's my girlfriend's birthday Oh, that's so cute. Did you not know that? No. Oh, that's so cute. How come you don't have a jersey end? You don't. You don't want to rock one out there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you, you look very suave in your getup. Uh, regardless, um, basically every guest we've had on the show has asked the next guest uh, a set of questions, a question even. We had C Ned and Mr. Farland from uh, Foot. Uh, you guys played against them. Um, they have a question for you guys. Uh, and their question uh, from C Ned was, what team do you fear to face the most in EMEA and you can't say Fnatic? <laughs> That's what C Ned said, not, not me. Um, I'm gonna change the question just cause you guys, you know, beat them already. So what team are you fearing the most maybe outside of our region? Uh, well, you can't say Fnatic. No. I I would like to play against Energy. Yeah. It's the Demon One thing. You got you want Demon One. Just overall, I feel like they're not only it's not only Demon One. They're just a great team. Like re really a great team. That's it. Mm. What about you, Martin? Yeah, me too. Energy, Energy. again. Uh, is there a question that you would like to leave for the next? Uh, I'm gonna force you to it ask. Could, it could question. be them. Yeah, yeah, it might even it be might, you yeah, tomorrow. Might be you might be uh, answer, asking a question to Magnum or something, uh, whoever we have tomorrow. So you want to leave a question? Sliggy, you can feel free to pitch in if you want as well. You're technically a guest here uh, on the couch. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling everybody to stir the pot, by the way. So I've just oh, been really? like, stir. Um, if it helps, Tom Mazzi and Narrate, when okay. they were here, they I, I, asked... Uh, I go on. Oh, go on. 
So it'd be like, a, who do you want to play in Madrid? Like, who do you think is going to be your easiest game in Madrid? Oh, like easiest oh. win. Easiest win. You guys like that question? You don't have to answer. You don't just have, have to. Don't answer it now. Whoever is going to be on the oh. show tomorrow will answer it. Yeah, you, you down yep. for that question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. super. Oh, nice. Okay, uh, Sliggy's uh, gotten in there. Um, now we m will see <laughs> <You're> you. <right. laughs> hey, you get your, you get your, you get your questions in. Why not? <laughs> anything else? Anything else? No, I, uh, think, I think they're good. Yeah. No, as, as in, you got anything else to? Oh, me, to, to that, ask? dude. I'm a one and done. That was it. No, to ask them. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in your chat is wilding right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Wilding. Um, no, not really. I kind of got the, I got most of the anti stuff out that I wanted to know as well. So. Yeah, uh, I mean, my one of my last questions for you, uh, as uh, at least, N, is um, you've been in these positions before. Um, 2021 Iceland, you had to play against Fnatic. Um, they beat you to go to Iceland. 2022 Iceland, once again, I think it was that split over time. It just kind of felt like they had something over you every time you had to qualify for Iceland specifically. Um, how does it feel to get over that uh, today? I, I, I'm not sure if you remember. Uh, um, you know, I even didn't think about it like at all. I, all the time playing with like clear mindset. So I, I, all the time I'm saying, damn guys, play like it's 0-0, zero, zero, don't think about anything. So just, yeah, just focus, be present. And today I also was present. I'm, yeah, because it's just, uh, I don't know, extra thoughts. I don't want to think about that. Yeah, you're it's in a great energy. spot. Very great spot. Um, but, and also, you've also had to go up against a few of your boys as well. You know, Redgar, Shados, yeah, uh, Chronicle yeah. now as well. So you've dodged Nats, I think. That's the only one. Um, what, what do you make of uh, those boys, how they are doing? See, I, I mean, playing against I them. I think now. they're still great players and even better with, uh, like, I don't know. I, I just wish them the best and they know it. We kind of still, like, I don't know. I just, you know, I love them, <laughs> kind of, yeah, really. Uh, so uh, I would like to play maybe someday against with them. So who knows? We've got to get Defo back. That's our, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, our awesome. we have to get him back. Uh, and Martin, for you, uh, lastly, uh, the Keiko fans really believed in you guys today. I think they were a full force on Twitter supporting you. I don't think a single person doubted that you weren't going to qualify today. So if it, is there anything you want to say to the KC fans? Yeah, thank you guys very much for the support. I honestly helped us a lot seeing your, your guys uh, support on Twitter. Uh, keep doing it and uh, maybe we will see each other in the Grand Finals of Masters Madrid. Oh, you bring back a trophy? Maybe. Yeah, so yeah, I know he's here, but just, yeah, we're going to bring back a trophy. I have to yeah. be realistic. <laughs> 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 thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you uh, very much, Sliggy, for joining me. Thank you, Anne, for man. joining me. Thank you, Martin, as well. Thank you. Massive congratulations. We'll see you here uh, tomorrow again for the Grand Finals. That's right. We have just one best of five to go. It is going to be Casey versus Team Heretics. Have a lovely evening, you guys at home, and join us tomorrow, and we'll see you then. into the unthinkable. Everyone doubting at the start of the season. Head, time ticking. He's got one down. Oh, he's got a second. It's all on Leo. Oh, he cannot do enough. What the hell? Yeah.
I got big dreams, I'ma do big things. Hey, you see me on the big screen, looking so clean. I don't move slow, I move fast right past. Anybody taking life for granted, yeah, that's too bad. I'd be grateful for everything that I have. You only got this life, you don't get it back. Make the most of it, become the best that I can. Everybody look at me, I got a plan. You gotta work hard, play hard, do it from the start. Cause how you do anything is everything is hard. Stay consistent and do it every day. Don't let fatigue get in your way. Cause 10% of something is better than nothing You better do something if you wanna be something I can feel my stomach rumbling, I'm hungry Big things coming, I ain't bluffing, yeah No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight every day and train, yeah It'll all be worth it One day it'll all be worth it so I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah I've had enough